going. I think she's allowed to allowed to hike it out a little bit. Hands on knees. It's a bit steep here. So that's that's a completely rational place to be power hiking it out. So Hillary Allen moving her way towards that aid station. She's doing a great job. She'll be there, I think, in just a little bit. We'll see if we can pull that route back up. See what you've got. So just interesting as well, just uh, on our side, as we look at this 100-miler route, just a shout-out to our team behind the scenes, a reminder that Fotis will be coming to the uh, asphalt, which leads to Dead Man's Tree, and that will probably be in the next two kilometers. So we don't want to miss that section. We know we're probably going to have e-bikes there to track him and bring him back into view. So he's literally looking at it now, probably a kilometer a kilometer away. We know that we is some load shedding going on as well. Load shedding between 12 and 2.30 here this afternoon in South Africa, uh, in Cape Town. So not making things too easy for us, but we are trying to do the best we can to get you that footage. So nice to see Hillary there. As you say, that was a dark, dark uh, a section. It's a long section all the way, and uh, she's nearly there. She's going to be so stoked about that. She's going to get the necessary fluids on board and take some time to relax and recoup. She's not pressed for time in any way or form, and uh, from here, it becomes uh, the, the vision of the finish. Yeah, it at, just at becomes Nordhook, better, right? where we have the most recent splits from the women that are behind her, it does sound like from the field, from the photography that I'm seeing um, out on course, that Nicola and Naomi uh, brand are going back and forth. I'm not sure what the official order there is, second and third, but at the last timing checkpoint, we had Hillary Allen running in fourth overall, Naomi Brand running in fifth overall, Nicola running in sixth overall. Those two women virtually together with Hillary Allen roughly 65 minutes ahead of them in first. So a sizable a sizable lead there. But right now what is going on is we're trying to get a split from Hillary at that aid station. We're there having, we there go. we go. Ha, got it. Getting well, these images has definitely been, you know, it's it's the Wild West out there. <laughs> it's definitely hard to gather this stuff for you all. You might think that the camera's looking at one thing and it's not. But here we go. She's making her way down this hill. She looks to be moving down this hill better than I think she was moving down some of that rockier absolutely. hill yeah. earlier. The good news for her is that she doesn't have, t I don't feel like she has too much more. Really, there's some rocky section off, obviously after Dead Man's Tree. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of the downhill between here and there that she'll run isn't quite as bad as what she's been on thus far. Yeah, there's a little section coming down into uh, the university. Yes. It's kind of a little, like, big steps, and yep. that might be a little That'll tough. That'll be a little bit tough. A couple of things on the, like, contour parts before that, crossing some rocky sections, but, yeah, nothing crazy, as crazy as she's been through. Some big steps coming down through Newlands Forest. But hopefully she's good on that. That stuff is pretty clear. No, like, roots and stuff. Just big steps down. Yeah. And you can see just how steep this downhill is. You can see that she's literally leaning back into it, dropping those elbows. A very, very steep section as she makes her way towards this neck checkpoint. Um, looking at the tracking for Fotis, uh, Zisimopoulos, uh, our leader in the men's race in the 100 miler. He is possibly um, three or four minutes from getting on to that asphalt contour road leading to Dead Man's Tree. Yeah, let's see what the official tracker is there a little bit. I mean, I think, so Fotis' tracker is showing at 161.1 kilometers. He should have a little bit more. Oh, we do officially have trackers on our women. They weren't showing up there for a good hot second. So Fotis should be, let's call it, you know, four or so kilometers, four or five kilometers away. He's getting to where what is basically going to be a downhill at that point in time, which will be, I don't yeah. know if that's nice or not. I don't think anyone's decided if it's a nice way to finish a 100-mile race. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. I prefer an uphill at that point because downhills hurt really, really badly. But right now on your screen, we are following the race leader in the women's UTCT inaugural 100-mile event, Hillary Allen from the U.S. representing Brooks Running. She's making her way to the Constantina Glen aid station where she will be looking to resupply supply she's been without aid for a while now i'm sure it's been dry and hot likely likely looking for fluids when she gets there i'm assuming that she's been carrying plenty of fuel with her but fluids are going to be a priority um, when she gets in there hopefully she takes a moment to drink some load her bottles and then get out of there not feeling too rushed but right now that is who that is who our camera is on right now is the on the lower half of our race leader hillary 
Hillary Allen as she makes her way to the 140-kilometer aid station of her 166-kilometer <laughs> race. Brutal, absolutely brutal. And uh, lots of stuff going on in the background. We're hearing a lot of talk going on. Where are the leaders? What do they look like? How's that going? Good news for us is that at Heart Bay, we managed to get trackers into the top men and the top women, which means now we have a opportunity to see the 100 kilometer athletes as they make it through to the last 40 kilometers of yeah. their race today. But we're having some issues because Mimi says that she's at zero kilometers <laughs> and Kelly Wolf and Kemi Brujas have the exact same kilometer readout right now. So we'll wait to see how that out. how that updates, how that, how that sorts out. The men's trackers are looking a little bit better. If they are accurate, um, technically it looks like Hans's might not be reading very well. Dimitri is ahead of him, I believe, um, or just behind him, actually, maybe. Hans might be taking the charge, followed by Dimitri. And it looks like Drew Holman might be bridging up a little bit to yeah. Dima, if that is accurate. One, two, three, pretty close together. Jared Hazen, you know, not that far, maybe 0.1 kilometer behind Drew Holman. So really that group is very, very tight. And then about a kilometer or so behind them is going to be Daniel Clausen. So that's a good, tight, actually, top four men right there. So that's going to be pretty exciting racing heading into the back 70K. All right. I've just picked up a tracker for photos and it tells me here that he is at Dead Man's Tree. So that's what I've got at the moment. And we like and to say that what the Dead Man's Tree is 3K three three from three the finish line. Go. So we believe your race leader, Fotis, is three kilometers from the finish line having made that right hand turn at Dead Man's Tree. Yeah. That's what the tracker is telling us, and if that's the case, we know that that 3Ks is going to be around 11 to 12 minutes. We're guessing maybe a little bit longer. It is downhill, uh, but it is quick. Yeah, it's quick, and yeah, hopefully you get, get some eyes on that finish line and see him come in and finish his big journey. Yeah, a shout out to everyone in the area and, and everyone that can get to the finish line. It's going to be around a um, just before two o'clock finish for him and uh, certainly uh, an, a, an epic day, a, a history, uh, a day of history uh, put into the history books. The very first, the inaugural 100 miler here at the Rand Major Bank Alta Trail Cape Town. So uh, he's been incredible. He's been sublime. And so based on I'm, I'm just I've got my eyes glued to this tracker situation. and I think they're all updating at different rates. And so all of a sudden, Dimitri jumped so, you know, a ways ahead of of, ha of Hannes there, and it's like I think, and Mimi's went from zero kilometers to 60.3 kilometers. So I think they're they're updating at slightly different rates. So while while it is nice for us to have some generalization of what might be happening in that field, I'm going to be very very cautious of making any big proclamations there because they do seem to be updating at slightly different rates. Like I think a bunch of them just updated again, but not in uniformity. So it's we're going to be. I'm going to be a little bit careful there, I guess, is what, what, I, what, what I'm going with say. before we make some <laughs> huge announcement that might not be in reality. But I do think it is very close at the men's, at the front of the men's race, and we should be getting another split for them at Constantina Glen, which is where Hillary Allen is moving her way to. She will be overtaken by the front of that race at some point, point in time, um, and that's always interesting. Uh, to have these races that all start in different spots or run a completely different loop and end in the same spot at Madeira. Yeah. Kelly Wolf came flying by me. I was in the 117K. She was in the 85K. I'd been running since midnight. She did a nice, lovely morning start. She came <laughs> flying by me like I was standing still. It's like, oh, that's running. <laughs> what I'm doing is not that. But I was like, I've already run 85K at that point. So, right. you know, it, it'll be hopefully give, give these athletes some energy because they yeah. haven't seen anyone. No. in a very, no. very long time. So actually having some of that overlap with the front of the men's field.
been out for almost 21 hours now. Yeah, keep going. And there is 78, 30k left, 31k. How you doing? No, I'm not telling you. Don't listen to me. You keep going. But uh, anything you want to say? I'm really sick of seeing sand and rocks. Yeah, it's, it's really sandy and rocky out there. But I don't think there's any more sand. You just got some rocks left. Nice, nice trails in here. Nice trails back here. But uh, go get it. You're doing great. You're way ahead. Congratulations. You know how far back the women are? You don't need to worry about that. It's far. Way to go, Hillary. And that is the first woman in the 100 miler, Hillary Allen. Cool, we're on an e bike. It took them so long, they were on her shot the whole time. So I told them to walk around so that they can see us. It's so annoying. Why aren't they looking at the feet? Can I catch? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, cool. We got that. Happy now. Oh, that was good. At least yeah. we were alive for that. Yeah. So getting some info there from uh, Cody and uh, really good to see Hillary in a good place now, you know, getting through to that aid station. How important is it to see and realize and touch and feel that aid station after such a hectic section? Yeah, kind of exciting. And I know um, our front male to Fotis will be really excited for his beer at the finish line and having that <laughs> aid station feel and being back in civilization. So within 2K now, um, we're hoping we can get some eyes on that finish line, see his finish, celebrate him coming home. Awesome. We know we have eyes on there and everyone's paying attention. So that's exciting. We don't want to miss it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, 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 say, to say caution to the people watching, remember, these are humans out there that are getting this footage for you, right? It's people on bikes, it's people running, people are literally driving around everywhere to try to make this happen for you. So they are working on picking up photos on his way into that aid station, mm -hmm. but it's not its not quite that simple. It's not on demand. So Absolutely we will right. have photos when we have him. We've got eyes on the finish line. We're trying to get him ahead of the finish line, but we will have him at the finish at the very least. Our cameras are literally jumping all over the place, driving all over the place. It's not we don't have infinite cameras. And to top that all off, we've still got another 45 minutes of load shedding. So difficult yeah. to get those <laughs> signals right and difficult to get everything talking to each other when you so far dispersed across the peninsula and uh, different people trying to feed different things to you and, and also different segments of the peninsula in load shedding as well. So doing our very best here, we promise. Uh, those of you tuning in, we've also just had to switch on to the uh, YouTube uh, uh, live stream again. What's yeah, been happening I think, there? I think it worked pretty smoothly for everyone. All of a sudden, my chat stopped working and yeah. it kind of you could see where the next place you had to go was so if your chat stopped working hopefully you've refound us but that is what we are working with at eight hours essentially there's a 12 hour recording limit so we bumped at eight people are working on moving their way over here but we will have coverage of photos on his way into the finish line we're working on picking him up right now so photos can't be more than i'm guessing seven seven six seven minutes now we yeah. from making he's his so way down. fast he's hard to catch yeah <laughs> he's doing so good today and i yes. mean he's been he's been a weapon he's been a weapon all of the last uh, 20 point uh, 20 hours and 45 minutes he really really has went out fast from the get-go out of garden state rugby club he mm -hmm. was the first one on to signal he's been the first at every single checkpoint and uh, he really has had an incredible race so well done to photosismopolis of greece we're expecting him to be our first winner at the inaugural rand richard bank ultra trail cape town 100 miler here in 2022. Awesome. We also just got an update that Dima and Hannes are running together currently, still leading our 100K um, on that side. Yeah, so our tracker said that they're 0.3 kilometers apart, but we know that they're running shoulder so to shoulder yeah. based on <laughs> eyes on course. So yes. Fantastic. caution with trackers, trust. folks. Caution with trackers. Trust. That's why you watch the live stream, right? Correct. <laughs> Correct. That's where we get all the hot information. <laughs> yeah. All right. So photos now. What I'm seeing, I'm guessing four minutes maximum into the finish line. So we're going to get something coming at you guys shortly. Get ready for that. Stand by. Stand by, everybody. From what I'm seeing, we're expecting him to come off that boardwalk uh, down towards God and stick right up. He'll take that lift yeah, and then he'll get back onto the field. Hopefully our cameras will just go to the finish line. That's what they don't need for. to see us. I'd rather watch yeah. a, an empty finish line than us in studio, if possible, to get signal from the start finish line over at Gardens Rugby Center. We'll see what we can do to make that happen for you. All right.
watch. Let's go, Fotis. He's I'm at pre-finish, so day. we need to be at the finish line right now. If Fotis is at the pre-finish, we need to be at the finish line right now. All right, straight to the finish line, guys. Let's have a look. So that's there we it. are. Yeah, that's what we want. We Stay right there. That's exactly where it's going to be. Branding looks amazing. Yeah, but he's at the pre-finish line. He's literally minutes yeah, away from the finish. The so bottom. I'd rather watch this right now yeah. than anything else. Yeah. So that's the next shot. And then here we go. Yeah, here, here we, we go. go. He's got his flag. All right. I love it. Emily, bring him home. Let's go. Let's go, Fotis. Uh, he has had the most epic day. He started off last night, uh, led out from the start. I don't think he's seen another runner in 20 hours and 48 minutes, 12 seconds. This is his finish line dash. He's got his Greek flag. He's super proud. 20 hours, 47 minutes, 43 seconds. Not that far off the prediction, you guys. Race. <laughs> <laughs> this man today. Unbelievable scenes here on the finish line. Photos show absolute that weapon. We this couldn't be more proud of you. And uh, what a day! A phenomenal I mean, he really athlete. Has been a 2022 Spartathlon win and a win here. Wow. One of the guy knows no bounds. He is so talented. And a loved one Aww. coming in for that kiss and a hug. So well deserved. So proud. What an incredible we can get that moment finish line. Yeah, the finish line. So that I is Tatum coming through from the finish line. I was going to say, I would love to hear line. more of that, that, that finish line vibe, if that at all possible, from, the, from that down there. The inaugural winner of the R&B UCTT. <laughs> and absolutely basking in the glory now. Nice. His family here to greet him or his loved ones. Yes. He's got his flag. He's representing his country proudly. Stopping the clock under 21 hours. You can see how tough it was out there. A lot of that running was done solo. He was being hunted down by Alexi. And there he is. What a star. Thank you for joining us here and giving him the accolades he deserves. Well done, Fotos. What a legend. The first ever 100 mile winner. Nick and Stu, race organizers, stoked to see their dream come true. Thanks to Fotos. We watched him on the amazing live broadcast all the way. Number one, zero, zero, zero. The writing was on the wall. He is first, he is number one. And he gives you thanks. Are you doing an interview? Yes. Are you doing an interview? I think it is. How far is the second best start? And, uh, I can't find the right tracker. Can we the You're going for that live interview? interview? With your wife, with your wife. A hundred for six starters. Easy focus, eh? Come down. Very good. So here we are, we're gonna do the uh, live broadcast interview. We'll do it with a translation with his wife. Well done, Fotos, fantastic performance. Just take it Good. Yeah. <laughs> You've been out there for under 21 hours. What was your expected time that you would finish in? It's a fantastic course, fantastic course. Uh, the organization is uh, the best. Uh, Best. You, you couldn't lose. So he says it was amazing organization. He loved the views. And he loved the atmosphere. He said it was a fantastic atmosphere going through the aid stations. There we go. He wasn't thinking about the target time. Was just trying to run as fast as he can. Did you know where your competitors were? Did you know where Alexi was? Where Ilov were? Eh, όχι δεν τους ξέρω τους αντιπάλους μου. Τρέχω πάντα. Τρέχω αυτό που μπορώ εγώ. Δεν με νοιάζει ποιος τρέχει. Δίπλα μου θα τρέξω θα τα δώσω όλα και ότι βγει. Έτσι λέω πάντα. No, I never take my 
Uh, attention. Atten yes, uh, I always look myself and run as fast as I can. I, I don't care who, who are the others uh, <laughs> running. It's my race. And how does it feel to be the first ever winner of the RMB UTCT 100 miles? I am happy. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well done to you. Uh, this race has nothing to compete with UTMB. It's uh, the same. Fantastic. That is great uh, feedback and we appreciate you coming all the way. Well done to you once again. So we have photo confirmation of Cami being in first here. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Incredible, incredible scenes on the finish line. Well done to photos Zizimopoulos of Greece. A winning time of 2047.45. Corrine pretty much predicted that. Uh, she knew it would be longer than we thought, but he's come in under the 21 hours, which is impressive considering, you know, we saw those those splits uh, early on. But back to the main race, back to our leading lady. What do you see? Yeah, back to Hillary Allen. She's made her way through Constantia Glenn. She's wor working towards Alfin Trail here. I think she's actually going to really enjoy these four miles. She said she was sick of, of sand and rocks. Oh, well, is <laughs> this is a little bit different, right? Yeah. A little bit more eucalyptus feeling, a little bit more, you know, softness under foot so hopefully this feels slightly better than what she's been on but I totally understand that sentiment I have definitely cried in 100k over sand and rocks before so Absolutely. Hillary is doing great Hilly you're doing great I hope Max is listening <laughs> you're amazing um, hopefully he sang some Lizzo for you <laughs> for us to you rather but right now on our all eyes are on Hillary Allen as she makes her way towards Alfin Trail during the inaugural edition of the 100 mile race here in the women's field we will also be bringing you updates from the 100k field we were, were you know we're, we're following the trackers with bated breath right we're a little bit nervous about some of the trackers because they keep updating erratically but we do a photo confirmation of something and yep. what is the the latest update on the women's field for the 100k for the ut 100 this weekend the 100k we have a visual com com Information that Cami has um, overtaken Mimi. They were racing head to head. Um, we do have Cami in the lead. She, both these ladies have been together and um, know what's ahead from now on. We now have Elop coming into uh, Cape Town University in third place in a 100 mile race. Uh, so exciting to have him here. I know he's excited for this finish. He knows these last 10K. He's had a big day too. Super exciting to see our men's podium through uh, Cape Town University and on their way to the finish. Yeah, I think the, the podium for the men is, is pretty well solidified yeah. right now. Um, Elof has continued to lose time to to Alexi and to Fotis. Fotis with that with that brilliant victory just moments mm -hmm. ago. Alexi about 23 minutes behind, so we will be waiting for him hopefully in the next 15, yeah. 16 minutes or so down at the finish line as well. Elof now 113 back at the University of Cape Town timing checkpoint. That puts him 50 minutes now behind um, behind Alexi. So I think that that's a pretty safe split. All right, we're going to try and find Cody. We've got Cody Reed and uh, hoping to get something from Cody. Let's have a look and see what he's going Hello to tell everyone. us. I'm at. All right, I'm at Constantia Glen. The leaders for the 100K just came in. We've got Dimitri, 
and Hannes, neck and neck. They came into the aid station together. They're both refilling water, having, having the aid station volunteers refill their water and sodas. They're probably gonna dump some on themselves, get some ice, and be out quick. We're at 69K, and these guys are literally running with each other. There's been huge place changes throughout the whole day, and to have it come down to the wire like this is very exciting. Now let's just uh, stand back and see what they get. Not going to be able to talk to them. Oh, just get some cold water, taking a breather, kind of looking at each other, squaring each other up, getting ready for the next leg of the race. After here, well, hold on. You guys are killing it. You guys are killing it. There goes the ice in the pack. Bottles are full and they're both off together. These guys are great. These guys are working together. It's gonna to be a fast finish. Traffic is getting blocked. They're crossing the road and they're dropping down into the green belt. So from here, they're gonna take a right and the there's some steps on that trail. There's some climbing, but uh, Overall, a pretty fast section of course. And uh, we'll see him next at Alphen Trail. So yeah, we have Olaf at UCT, 11 kilometers to go. Just on, what did we say, 26 k's to go now for the guys in the 100? I think it's no. pretty close. Wait, no, 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 100 miles. No, no, 100, 11, I'm talking 100 <laughs> kilometer, the ones we've just seen in well, the, the, the session. Just, okay, yeah, yeah. So 26 so k's to go there, 11 <laughs> k's to go here. Yeah. here on yeah. screen, 11 yeah. k's to go. The men yeah. we just saw, 26 k to go. Correct, And what was interesting there is that we saw them we saw we joked that they were having a drinking competition, but yeah. we saw them leave together. together. They kind of waited for each other. Sure. She was like, one was like, I need one more bit of water. You need one more bit of water. Yeah. <laughs> okay, like they did. They came in together. They left together. We had gotten word yeah. from course that they were running through Castencia Neck together. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, this it is a pa I, when an alliance. Like for when sure. is some? Yeah, is this yeah. an alliance? Yeah. Who's yeah. gonna attack? Is someone gonna attack? Like right. I am so interested to see what pans out over the next 26k. It might be you know someone has a moment of weakness or someone yeah. starts to feel bad. And one pulls ahead right but if they both continue to feel good and they're not necessarily like fl like throwing like blows at each other as far as like trying to kind of break the other person like what does that look like right sure. like, like really cool yeah yeah and they've just so come off cool. that long that together. long 15.1 kilometer section so they would have formed a bond on that section for but they sure. both look fresh and too right good. like they're they looked warm good. hans at one point chugged a bunch of sparkling water and then kind of put his head up in the air yeah. like yeah. <laughs> like basking in the the shade for a moment i think more than anything like yeah. they're they're warm for sure but they both otherwise look like they're in really good condition yeah and ilof spending a long time here at UCT. He's been here a while. He's in no rush. He's obviously aware of who's behind him. He wants to secure that podium. He doesn't want to take any risks now. Uh, he knows this section. He's run it before back in 2018. You can check him putting that little ice uh, around his neck now, fastening that to him, trying to get that body temperature, that core body temperature down as much as he can. And uh, he's looking for that third place. Getting up the UCT steps here through the Red Bull Arch now. And uh, these are the Kobe Reed UCT steps, by the way. Uh, this is where Cody had his, his big fall back in the day but uh, Ilof he's had a good race you know he's a he's a class act and and he knows what it's all about but you can see that the temperature today has really taken its toll on the athletes and he's got to get up to block us now yeah someone made a comment earlier when they saw Drew putting ice on ice on early getting a lot of ice into his pack Ilof put ice on early that was great <laughs> Ilof in good spirits took his time there though for sure but yeah so you're not necessarily cooling your core body temperature you can't really effectively do that by just putting ice sure. on your neck but the goal is, is that one you're using evaporative cooling as it runs down you two you're lowering, lowering RPE just kind of feels good eye. and three generally speaking is that you're trying to uh, it's it's called kind of basically just like you're trying to wet down your your skin surfaces because you're creating a a temperature gradient from your core to your skin the heat has to go somewhere but if your skin surface is too hot you can't actually push heat from your core out into your skin surface and then out into the atmosphere via sweat very well so yep. you just want to kind of like I mean the goal at Western States we joke is get wet stay wet 
Yeah. Same can go for, I think, a race out here in South Africa and in, in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, early bits of summer. 100%. So he's in good spirits now, 11 kilometers to go. We know Alexi is, is probably, he's probably two and a half kilometers from Dead Man's Tree. So Alexi moving through nicely at the moment, just following the dots with him. And uh, he's going to make his way to Dead Man's Tree. So I'm guessing Alexi's probably got another 25 minutes of running to our first lady there she is on the trails here and uh, shuffling along you see she's got the poles out now and uh, she's moving towards that next point so hillary looking good at the moment let's have a look and see what we can get on hillary for you and uh, we know that she's gone through constantia glenn which means now she's making her way to Alphen trail it's a 4.4 kilometer section those leading men in the 100 kilometer are mm. going to now catch her yeah, that's time. true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, the, ma the men will come by here, here and give her a cheer. But it does sound like we've got a third male back yeah. at Castentia as well. There he there is. There we go. Drew Holman. Well done. I think we might have audio from Cody here. What do you need? More ice? Oh. All right, he's good. In and out, real quick. That was a lot faster than the lead men took. So he just made up some time on them. If, uh, if anything happens to those first two guys, I think he might be able to, uh, to catch up to him. He was, he was, I just did. He was really quick through here. All right, here we go. So Hillary looking good. You can see effectively using those poles. She's got a good shuffle going on right now, yeah? Yeah, 100%. Well, let's just quickly talk about what we just saw at Castencia Glen, right? We just saw Drew Holman. He has, he has moved into a third place position, and he's not that far behind. The right. trackers kind of made it seem like he was moving up. Right. Drew knew. We told him. We warned him. Marzell warned him. Hey, you know, this race is going to go out really, really fast. Yep. Be careful. He was. He was. Yeah. And, and it's he's showing. And it's showing. And he's yeah. moved himself into a solid podium position. Yeah. Kind of wondering, you know, where is Jared Hazen? Where is Seb? Right. Right? Who yeah. was, you know, yeah. I mean, Drew was 11 and a half minutes back from those two leading guys. He was 10 minutes back from Seb. We haven't seen Seb yet. No. And Drew is minutes back. We should probably actually have an official split for you all there at that aid station. He's five and a half minutes back. So he's cut wow. that lead in half. And he didn't spend time in the aid station. No, no he, he was, was really out. fast. There was He's some urgency. Good. Yep. Like the, other, the guys ahead are working together, working strong. They look good, but, but do Drew they know Drew's there? Right. Do they know Drew's no, closing? Well, that's the point. Exactly. Absolutely. It could right. become a race yeah. if yeah. they're not careful. <laughs> and this next right. section is very short. It's only 4.4K, so we're going to know pretty quickly. Nice. Uh, one, whether he's catching, and two, whether they do or don't know Yeah, or how there. much he's catching right. by, right? Because the, the, the numbers game now plays out. Yes. Drew, if he was more cautious early on, Okay, lower risk, but you sometimes miss out on the reward, then yeah. you literally run out of time. Yeah. Drew's right. a really solid 100-mile runner, while, I mean, the men in front of him are also very solid 100-mile runners. It's, um, you can you can do that more in 100 oftentimes than you can in some of these aggressive 100Ks. And so I just wonder as well, like, will he run out of time? This next 4K section, I think, will be telling in the sense that we'll start to understand how much time he's gaining per kilometer, because it's less than 5K between that timing checkpoint and the Alpha and Trail timing t checkpoint. Right. Yeah. So waiting to see what's happening with Seb, what's happening with Jared, where's Daniel Clarson, Matthew Healy, uh, and then where are the ladies? How are they doing? Where's Mimi? Where is Cami? How's Kelly doing? So all of these answers will come your way in the next couple of minutes, I'm guessing, but things certainly starting to heat up quite quickly, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we do have splits, more splits from Hot Bay there, from Hot Bay we've got. Um, we saw Ekaterina there, the kind of the next movement in that field, though. So Ekaterina was 31 minutes back coming into that aid station. Marilyn, the French athlete who we'd been talking about earlier, who we said knows this course well, kind of comes back strong over the second half of the race. She's moved up to the sixth. She's 54 minutes back. The young Olivia Amber out of the U.S. running for the North Face is back in seventh now. She was an hour back, an hour three back at that aid station. So wondering about that downhill, wondering about that heat section right. for her, how that kind of all planned out. But hopefully, you know, they're all, you know, we're all, they're all going to suffer a little bit. Ultra running is definitely type two fun, but that is the current okay. split at that uh, last aid station for women. It's going to be a little bit before we see them at Constantia Glen, but we should be having men four, five, and six there through, I would imagine, in the next five, six minutes. Yeah, close. Unless they've opened up some insane gap on that last section. Exactly. Which is possible. Possible, possible. too, yeah. 
All right, let's not forget the men's 100 miler, Alexei Tolstenko is uh, making his way down onto the Tafelberg Road, which is what leads into Dead Man's Tree, and uh, that means that he's probably on about four kilometers to go now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not yet at Dead Man's. No. Um, we, we should get a timing checkpoint there from him. Um, 20.35, I mean, so... Fotis ran a really solid, you know, last. I mean, I think he, I think his section of the blockhouse is probably one of the better blockhouses we've seen this weekend. Even yeah. he moved really, really well up that section. Second win, enjoying the terrain, whatever it might be. <laughs> Fotis moved really well for that section because uh, at at the University of Cape Town, Alexi was only 23 minutes back, but at this point in time, you know, 32 minutes have elapsed yeah. since Fotis went through Dead Man's. So curious to know what that actual split is alexi is getting close to that but he has lost time yep. to two photos during that blockhouse section of the course 100 percent right. right and looking at the updates here last updated on his uh, on his track was two minutes ago so we should be getting a track uh, coming through from him pretty shortly that'll give us an idea of exactly where he is so that is the second place man in the uctc 100 miler it's the first year of this event welcome to those of you tuning in from around the world we're very grateful for you being here please share the love give us any questions mm -hmm. that you may have and tune into the action because things are certainly starting to heat up we're waiting for second place in the men's 100 miler we know that Ilof is quite some time away we're going to cut across to Cody Reed let's see what Cody's got to say all right awesome yeah buddy all right Jared Hazen has just come in fourth place into Constantia Glen aid station we're at 69 K here He's only only a few minutes behind the leaders and Drew. There he goes, getting some water in his head. Yeah, about a few minutes. Oh, really fast through the aid station. Oh, he's catching up now. Keep the pressure on, Jared. Yes, Jared is running strong. That is nice to see. Uh, he just took off a lot of time on his gap between the leaders and Drew. Uh, that was a quick, quick stop. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, he's at all. He's got a lot of love in his heart yeah. for Jared Hazen. I think As he's he just had some marks against his South African passport because I think they're going to check his loyalty now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit, right? Uh, maybe too much love from Jared, for Jared Hazen from Cody out there, of course. But Jared Hazen now, he's he's um, seven minutes back from Drew, maybe six and a half minutes back from Drew, 12 minutes back from the lead. So he's lost to maintained kind of that gap from the lead back um, while Drew has moved forward. So that, that the, the Drew Holman, Jared, Jared Hazen alliance broke up there somewhere and, and Drew moved really, really well on that last section. And to be fair, I think that last section honestly probably mimics a lot of what Drew ch trains on yeah. in and around the Boulder, Colorado area. And so I think he probably felt, re hopefully felt really, really comfortable on it and ran a smart early section of the race. He started cooling early in the race. As soon as he could see his crew, he took the yeah. time to get ice in there. And I think that's playing out right now. Yeah, and seeing, you know, Jared moved as quick. Very fast. With, as Drew through that aid yep. station, too. So that both of them are on the hunt. They're moving well. Yeah. They look like they're feeling good. <laughs> Definitely on the hunt. And that's the thing, right? Like, right. we we might accidentally have a race on our hands all of a sudden because <laughs> the guys that are chasing for that those podium spots, chasing for that win, might all of a sudden start to creep up on Dima and Hannes. Right. All right, feedback here. Alexei Tolstenko threw Dead Man's Tree two minutes ago. So he's going to be about 10 minutes from the finish line. So just a heads up to our crews on the field. We've got about 10 minutes until second place man comes across the finish line in the 100 miler. Yeah, we're trying to pick up right now. We're trying. There he is. Nice. Dead Man's Tree. Ba boom. There we go. Take that right hand turn. There you go, Alexei. All right, well done, Alexi. So this is where we, we did not, we missed, we missed photos coming through here. We tried to get the e-bike up there in time and didn't quite nail it. But here we have it where the e-bike should be able to follow um, Alexi down a lot of this descent. It's, it is three kilometers from here to the finish line. He is, you know, at this point in time, he can kind of let gravity take over. Easier said than done at kilometer 163. Crazy. But he is going to be, at this point in time, doesn't have very far to go and that is very very exciting yeah absolutely <laughs> so back to our leading lady Hillary Allen 
and uh, she has been clinical. Obviously behind Ragnar going through the Kloof corner, uh, making her way up that uh, big, big Platterkloof section. And then we know early hours of the morning, Ragnar unfortunately pulling out the Dutch woman, um, deciding that this was not her race, this was not her year. And that put Hillary straight into the lead and she hasn't looked back at all. She's sitting in fourth overall. Yeah, and I think every time uh, that, that signal is strong enough, we're gonna show you Alexi on his way to the finish line, but if it freezes, if it backs up, if we have another clear image of another runner on course, we're gonna fill that in for you all, okay? The goal is to have it as much live footage on your screen as possible. So if this one freezes, we're gonna go to Hillary, we're gonna go to the 100K men, we're gonna go to the 100K women, if and when we can find them. They sh we should actually have 100K women coming into Castenia Glen in not all that long. Cody Reed will be waiting there, I believe, to watch those women come through um, that aid station as they head into the back 26K of their race. But right now on your screen is the second place male athlete in the inaugural edition of the 100 mile race here at UTCT. Alexi representing Adidas Terex on his way. Less than 3K to go. He can smell the barn, so to speak. Absolutely. Look at those poles tucked neatly into his back there. And uh, he really has got uh, a good system going. But uh, quite efficient. Looking good, actually. He must be sniffing the finish line, Ems. Yeah, I mean, we've been saying it all day. Alexi is very uh, calculated in how he races. Very consistent. He just keeps plugging forward one foot in front of the other. We know he um, went back and forth with Elof for a while and has solidly taken his place into second been chasing first um, this back half of the race and he's looking so strong I'm sure he'll be so stoked it'll be so fun to welcome him back to the gardens and let him celebrate his whole journey around the mountain super excited to see those stripes running down excited for him to be here absolutely 100% and uh, Gardner's Tech Rugby Club getting ready to welcome home the athletes in all their glory after this incredible journey and uh, circumnavigation, should we say, of the beautiful Cape Peninsula. Starting at 5 o'clock last night, the athletes getting out onto the trails, getting into the evening, got a bit chilly overnight, lots of wind. Kareem, you got something for us? Yeah, n latest update from course, just as Kemi has overtaken Mimi, I'm not sure how big those splits are, but that's kind of the running order right now. It looks like... Um, Vivara has also overtaken Kelly Wolf. So it looks like right now in the women's race as they head towards in this really hard section of the race, yeah. mind you, lots of climbing, lots of descending, very, very rocky. It's going to be right now Kemi, Mimi, Vivara, Kelly. Yep. One, two, three, four. And we'll see what that looks like when they get to Constantia Glen. Uh, my guess is they're going to look hot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, very it, hot. It is warm. It is very warm hot. out there. And they all looked warm coming into Hope Bay as well. Time will tell, but Absolutely. that is our current order in the women's race. I don't have splits. These are from our photographers out on course that we're getting images of. So quite technical, this uh, section as well. Ems, you've run it before, and yep. uh, it is quite slippery underfoot, isn't it? Yeah, just a, there's a lot more rocks than are showing right now on this section. It switched back a lot, so you can see the finish, hear the finish, but you've got a little further than you think you do. Um, it's so beautiful though right now we can see lion's head we can see signal peak uh alexi's seen this all before going into the night last night he's looking up at platter clip right now can see where he climbed up um yeah he's got less he's probably got about 2k to go down he is moving so smoothly it doesn't look like he's run 100 miles <laughs> 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 like super impressive we watched him from the start we've managed to have a lot of live um, coverage of his racing it doesn't look like he's you know short in his stride or anything he looks very comfortable I'm sure he'll tell us at the end that he's exhausted and that was super hard but <laughs> he's crushing it it's really cool to watch him run down so strong our second man Alexi super stoked for him to be coming into that finish line and it looks like right now as well we're waiting for official updates on this but i believe that daniel clausen has moved up into fifth he's not yet at constenia glen he is almost there he is very very close to being there as well as um i believe matt healy is might might also overtake sebastian spieler on his way there so i'm wondering what's going on with sebastian at this point but right now on your screen left hand side hillary Al allen leading the women's race and on your right hand side Alexi Tolskino, second place in the men's 100-mile here inaugural event. 
running well through this last bit of rockiness. Yeah. Just yeah, a little just bit more rockiness to more. go, I promise. All right, so Alexki really making short work of this uh, final session. He's under two kilometers to go. Cody, Way to what's go, happening? Daniel. Fifth place, baby. Okay, yeah. All right. Daniel Klassen has just came into the Constantia yeah. Bay Aid Station, Constantia Neck Aid Station, and is getting some water and Coke. Daniel, how are you feeling? Oh, man, I just want to be a... I hope the guys in the studio are eating some cook sisters. Yeah. That's the that's my safe word for today. <laughs> Daniel, you're in fifth place. You got fifth place here last year, didn't you? Go get them. You got guys in front of you to catch. All right, another really fast aid station stop. He is catching up to the people in front of him uh, based on how long the leaders and crew <laughs> stayed there. He was in, in, in much shorter than them. But, uh, he seems to be feeling good. The safe word? So. Yep. <laughs> the race is still on. <laughs> <laughs> we had a safe word for Daniel Klaas in there coming into uh, Constantia Glen, and it was Cook Sisters, and he said it for us. <laughs> Big Thank shout you, out. Daniel. <laughs> Love you, Danny boy. Come on, South Africa, get behind Daniel Klaas. And that means he's thinking, that means he's compass oh. mentis. Oh, no, yeah. sense, he's of, good sense to of humor. Go. Sense of humor is still <laughs> intact and honest. Honestly, that's a critical measure of how things are going, generally speaking. Yeah, he's crushing it. He looks strong, moving just as far fast as all the guys ahead of him, Drew and Jared um, and Daniel, in and out of that aid station. All right, so nice split here again. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Alexki on the right-hand side now, and uh, he's literally got about 1.7 kilometers to go. On the left-hand side, it looks like we have a female in to Alphen Trail. The male? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, oh, okay, this is Hillary into Alphen Trail. Okay, I was like, where are yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen this aid station before. Yeah. It's because I don't think we have. Okay, so right. this is Hillary Allen with her crew. So she hasn't seen her crew For in a while. A while. Yeah. So stoked. Getting, getting all hands on deck here, cooling her down, helping her out. This is Alphen Trail in the aid station with Hillary Allen. Mm -hmm. It has to feel good after that long 15K yeah. stretch to only have four or five kilometers between those two aid stations because sure. that's a manageable distance at this point. Yeah. As the aid, aid stations get further apart, it's like the end of Western States, right. sure. where it's like the aid stations get shorter and shorter and shorter. They get closer together. Yeah. And you're you feel really good for about a mile. Yeah. And then like two miles later, you're like, where is this aid station? That's the brain space right now. So having that aid oh, station sure. really close, I think, is super, super helpful. All right. Yeah. Well, hopefully we, can, hopefully we can keep our cameras here because the leading men in the 100 are going to be right yeah. on her heels. That is so very true. So suggestion is to keep the camera there until we hear from Alexi going towards the finish line on the 100 miler. But if you keep the camera here, you're probably going to get the first men in the 100K coming to this exact point very shortly. I think this is our bike, though. Our bike is the person who is yeah, on. Yeah, I think it yeah. is all on bike. So we'd have to yeah. keep our bike here. Yeah. <laughs> Biker. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so right now we've got, we've got cameras at the finish waiting. We've got a camera that is on Alexi as he makes his way down, but that image is frozen. So we might not get another photo of Alexi until it, there he goes. He is so, so close to the finish line yeah. right now. We saw Jeshurun come through here in the 55K, yeah. bobbing and weaving his way up into the stadium. So let's stay with him if we can and uh, pick up what we need to. Good idea to stay with him now as he makes his way down the boardwalk. And you can see him tap dancing over the wood there and uh, getting through now. You'll see there's a, a couple of few obstacles. He's going to have a little left-hander over the water soon. But uh, he looks like he's in a good space right now. And I'm guessing looking at what I'm looking at, less than 1.5, 1 probably 1.3 kilometers to go. Yeah, getting very, very close to that A station. I feel like Jeshurun was here and then was at the finish line, so we should be able to follow him all the way in. Yep. And it looks like, I mean, 
He so looks really yeah, fresh. Yeah, he just <laughs> dash I, I know. across on the start to the finish. Like, I, I know I that he, I know that he lost like time to Fotis, but he's making right. this look really, really easy right so now. So smooth. I'm like, did you just take footage from yesterday when he started and put him on the boardwalk yeah. right now? Did he, like just, the did he just hang step. out on top of Blockhouse for a while <laughs> yeah. maybe to take in the view? Because right. he looks... He looks really, really fresh here. We might have to jump to our finish line camera here in a second because this camera might be frozen on its way in. So nice. here we go back oh, to Alpen. Yeah. So uh, looking to see what we've got here. There is Janos, who will be running tomorrow, I think, in the 35K, a winner here in 2018. Yeah, he'll, uh, be, he'll be there to cheer on yeah. Dima. He'll Dima, be there to yep. cheer on um, Hannes. He'll be there to cheer on Ekaterina, more than likely. Yeah, they're doing a ton of work on her feet. Her whole crew is right there. All right. Here we go. All right, here we go. Those steps. Now you're going to see it down to the bridge. Now he's going to turn left shortly. Yep. There's a little bridge over. And as you can see now, less than a kilometer to go. We need to stay on him and pick him up as he comes through. He'll come through that timing mat shortly as well. So let's go and see when he does come through that mat to give you some sort of idea. Yeah, so and our lead men have also come into Alphen Trail. So our lead men in the 100K race, right, 100 mile on your screen 100k going on as well currently in the same footage that in the same shot that hillary allen is in right. our lead men in the 100k are there as well um dima and hannes are there together again two seconds apart so they're running they're running they ran together into that aid station one just got scanned and then the, then the next one so lexky has gone through the pre-finish which means the commentators are aware that he's coming that means he's got a kilometer to go until the finish or less and uh, he's moving really quickly so he's going to sort of come down this asphalt now he'll take a a, a a turn he'll go over the intersection which will be coming his way shortly once he gets over that intersection it's probably about two to three hundred meters before he turns left up the short path onto the field. Just chatting away <laughs> with the camera guy. We love it. We watched all these finishes. <laughs> Chat to the cameraman. Yeah, so again, we had Hillary Allen on the left-hand side there, the leading lady in the women's 100-mile race. Now, full screen, Alexi making his way to the finish line. I wonder if he's got a teammate or a friend just at a screen there. It almost looked like he was chatting to someone behind the camera person. So Hillary kidding. Allen yeah. leaving. Alphen Trail. There we go. All right, we're going to get Corrine to bring Alexia, her teammate for Team Adidas Terex. Let's hand over to Corrine Malcolm now as she brings him across the yeah, line. Yeah, we've got gobs and gobs to talk about. I mean, I think getting <laughs> to watch the men's 100-mile race play out for 21 and a half hours at this point, I think Alexia has looked mostly cool as a cucumber this entire time. We've seen him go back and forth with El Elof Olsen. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, he moved into second and was able to create some space between him and Elof Olsen, who will finish in third place. But right now, he's going to take a left-hand turn up and around into that big finishing stadium, right? So he's going to bop up the hill here. I mean, to be fair, it's kind of mean. Yep, keep going. There you go, Alexi. Come on. <laughs> He's like, yeah. I've got to go up there. Are you I've kidding go. me? Are you kidding me? Is this the finish line? Yeah. Where am I going? So he is on his way. He's going to crest the hill here. He kind of has to make a loop through the finishing yeah, venue. That's right. And then under that big UTCT finishing arch, Alexi will be finishing second in the inaugural 100-mile yeah, here. He's got to feel pretty darn good about that. Our <laughs> yeah. Adidas Terex silent assassin making his way to a second place finish here in right. Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, high five. Oh, <laughs> oh it's Jeshrin. Oh, yeah, Jeshrin. Yeah, we knew that some of his teammate would have to, teammates would have to stay out on, uh, out on course to crew his coach and good friend Dima and Ekaterina, but the rest of them rushed back to the finish line to make sure that he had teammates there waiting for him. Jeshrin Small, second place in the 55K, just gave him a big hug. Alexi, congratulations. What a brilliant run. And here he comes. 21, 25. <laughs> it's probably going to be 21, 26 on the place. clock. Nice work. <laughs> Hopefully we'll pick up some of that finish line noise from the MC there. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can pick Thank up the voice crowd. off the uh, f commentators on the field. I wonder if we'll be able to bleed that through for you. But, Alexi, 
Incredible result for him. Adidas Terex athlete. He goes 21 hours, 25 minutes, 22 seconds, and uh, he can be very proud of that attempt. Yeah, what a great run. Looks like he's got something in the bag. <laughs> his teammates here to. No. Oh, oh, there's his oh, team. Go there's team. Kimmy at the Epic Macy, second place yesterday. Macy, Jeshurun, who finished fourth. Jeshrin, who finished second. Jasmine, who I think is running the 35K tomorrow, but somehow our ageless wonder just keeps race. helping everyone out all weekend yeah. <laughs> long. Letting them know exactly how the race unfolded. That's okay, amazing. On the mic as well for an interview. <laughs> he looks absolutely fun. <laughs> we were wondering if Ekaterina or Dima would finish close enough to him to help with a Russian translation yeah. interview. Really, really happy to see his team there to, to give him a big old hug across the finish line. Yeah, absolutely. He looks fresh, too. He, does. he doesn't need to sit down. Yeah. doesn't need a shower. He's good. Yeah, he Roll him to the after party tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a little team photo there. Well done, guys. Oh. Congratulations. <laughs> Incredible <laughs> effort. Your second place man today in the 100-mile event here at UTCT. Congratulations, Lexi. You've got lots and lots of fans in yeah. the YouTube chat. Oh, my goodness. The Greek fans <laughs> went crazy. <laughs> Russian fans as well going crazy in the live chat. Be interesting to see as soon as we can try and get back to Elfin Trail. But I know we don't have a camera there. Am I right? Because I think the our camera's camera gone left with Hillary, with Hillary right? Yeah. So our yeah. official split at the finish line, 37.50 was the gap between Fotis and Alexi there. Yeah. So third place will be Ilof. And uh, Ilof, we guessing, is going to be, I'm guessing he's going to be at least 30 to 40 minutes back. Yeah, based on what yeah. we were seeing, yeah, I think, at the last aid station also. Well. It was really, it was really a cute. He tried to give his beard to his teammate Macy, and then the guy handed them another beer. So they both have beer They're now, so every, everyone's happy. We're going to try and get him inside for an interview. Maybe we can pick we that might interview have up. A, oh, I think it looks like we have someone who can help translate. That's Brilliant. great. Brilliant. So Flo there, the athlete manager here at Ultra Trail Cape Town. You can see the medal stand there as well with all the medals on it. They brought that out of the wind, obviously, because the wind must be making a racket on those medals. But, uh, yeah, lots of uh, appreciation and, uh, and uh, certainly very grateful uh, coming across the line. 21 hours, 25 minutes, 22 seconds, 14 Adidas Terex, and uh, he'll be stoked about that. I'm sure he's going to try and get across as well and uh, have a chat uh, to his, uh, his, the well, not his, but the only person that beat him, Fotis Zimopoulos of Greece, uh, 20.48.17 for him, both of them across the line, and uh, hopefully our team on the ground will be able to take him across and uh, get an interview with him. Here we go. So 100, 100 kilometer, meter, 100 men. kilometer, 100 yeah. kilometer <laughs> men at it now. The men in black or the dark colors at least. And uh, not yeah. sure the athlete in the front. Dima. That's Dima. Is it Dima? It is yeah, Dima, yeah, right? That's, that's, He's that's Dima. Good, man. That's Dima followed by um, Hannes there in one and two. And official split, Drew Holman pulled another minute back on them. Stop four it. and a half Stop minutes it. back at Alfin Trail. Sasha, if you're listening to this, make Drew run faster. <laughs> faster, faster, faster. Faster, faster, Drew Holman, four and a half minutes back. So one, two, three at Alfin Trail. На самом деле, в середине гонки меня накрыло как бы очень сильно, что даже были мысли о том, чтобы сходить с дистанции, но где-то, да, но где-то на, ну, в принципе, вся команда болеет, все друзья как Somewhere in the middle of the distance, um, he almost wanted to give up, wow. but the support of the team encouraged him a lot. So the support of the team, the support of the Adidas Terex team kept uh, Lexi going, was thinking about giving up uh, halfway through. Um, what were the conditions? What was it that made you want to give up? Was it what was so tough out there? Oh, <laughs> было очень холодно. At night it was very cold. Утром стало жарко, и организм, видимо, не приспособился к таким... И утром, понятно, in the morning it was very hot, and it's so the, the body couldn't adapt fast enough. And uh, this is towards the end of the year, your season is finished. Are you happy to end the season in this way? У тебя сезон закончился, гонок 
Да, это была заключительная гонка. It's a finish race in year. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Well done. Appreciate your time. Скажу еще большое. Thank you very much, organization. It's a very uh, hard race. Uh, it's a beautiful country, beautiful uh, people. I love uh, people. Very uh, crazy. Поддержка как будет? А, support. Very crazy support. Uh, um, Thank you very much, my... All right, so exciting times here. Our two leaders in the 100 kilometer have just gone past Hillary, who is on the 100 miler. So now, for the first time, these two fields come together. Speaking of, remember how we were so stoked on Jared Hazen, said that he was uh, about to get ready to race? He was 12 and a half minutes back, 12.06 back. Uh, at Constantia Glen, he's only now 9.45 back. Yo. So Drew's taken a minute back from, from Dima and Hannes, and Jared has taken just over 2.15 back, 2.20 back from them. So they're, the guys are chasing hard. Yeah, yeah. And this is, I mean, this is it. This is the half to be chasing. This is such an exciting who's race. Who's got quads left, right? right? Who's got quads? Who's who, got bl climbing who blew legs? him on that first down, on that <laughs> yep. big downhill coming off a of table mountain, right? right? You need to be able to run on this section. It yep. is runnable over the whole course. Probably the most runnable section here yeah, down until to, you get to Blockhouse. the university. Yep. And then a big climb up to the Blockhouse, and then you got to run again. Um, so we'll see. These guys will really show up, <laughs> and we'll see what they did at the beginning of the race too yep. to help themselves right now. Um, yep. So exciting, and yes, both races come together right now, which is cool. Uh, Hillary must have been excited to see the guys pass her, to have people some around cheers. her. Sure. Yep, some sure. cheers. Um, yeah, it's warm out there. We know that. Um, so they're working hard right now to stay cool, to stay efficient. Yeah, we've got a race. We've yeah. got two races. We've got, we've got <laughs> there are races. There are races going on right now. Really, really cool to see. Um, Drew and Jared making up some time. I don't think Daniel uh, Clausen has yet to come through Alphen Trail. I yep. imagine that he is still probably another seven or ten minutes, uh, probably seven minutes yep. um, from coming through there. Alphen Trail, he looked very chilled, so I'm not sure if he's too fussed to go catch Jared or not. We'll <laughs> see what happens. But, you know, that is what we're going to be keeping our eye on. Yet to have our women come through Castenia Glen, but we believe it will be Cami Brujas leading Mimi, uh, Mimi Cook, uh, Cook. Kotka. Kotka. I was. I end up putting an extra K in there <laughs> half the time. I'm trying not to, um, but that is what that looks like right now. I wonder if we have an updated split in our women's hundred me mile. I keep. I'm gonna say meter here in a second. Well, have a look at that for us. I got to tell you, I think Hillary is going to feel a bit of energy from Drew and Jared coming past her. The two USA athletes uh, will catch up to. Her. I'm sure they'll give her a, a good. Oh, uh, they're going to give her you a doing? good. How you doing? Let's go, girl. A good cheer. And yeah. uh, maybe we can get that on camera as well. So let's keep a lookout for that because not too long until Drew and Derrick will go past uh, Hillary uh, on that uh, on that route as well. So chasing hard to catch uh, the leaders here in the 100K, Dimitri and Hannes literally on fire here and uh, they are closing down the mileage very, very quickly. Yeah, my guess is that we won't have, we're back to Hillary, the bike making their way through these routes. 2041. Our second and third place females, Naomi and Nicolette, will probably be to Castania Glen in the next 10 minutes or so, 10 to 15 minutes. So yeah, this has been a big graphics. section for them. Um, so it'll be key for us to see them coming into Constantia Glen. Um, we know they don't have crew there, but they can get water and food um, and then continue on to their crew at Alphen Trail, um, which is obviously a big, enticing <laughs> feeling right now. They've been running for a long time, 21 hours, 36 minutes. They're doing great out there. We're excited to get an update. We know that we don't have very much live feed on them right now. I do think that Tony is back here, though, somewhere, Sweet. and we might be able to catch a little bit of footage and audio from them through here, through Celia Forest. Let's see what's going on down there. Yeah, if we had on them or on the 100K woman, that would be great to see some more. All right, let's go and have a look. There it is. 
So what we have here is the 100 kilometer tracking. So what happens here is that we don't track the 100 kilometer athletes on the race. We use the aid stations to get their timing splits. But what we do do is when they get to um, Hart Bay, we drop timing chips in the top 10 men and the ladies as well. So mm -hmm. it's important to do that because what that allows us to do is then pick up the tracking and that also helps us a lot with our logistics. The women having an incredible race and these trackers are really going to help us isolate where they are, what they're doing and how, what that looks like, but also similarly in the men's race. And because we now have these trackers on the uh, athletes, which you can see right there, having a look at it, you can see Dimitri, Hannes, Jared, Drew, Daniel, Sebastian, Matthew Healy, uh, Cammy's got one, Mimi's got one, Vivara's got one, Ruloff's got one Kelly Wolf, Katarina, Roman and Johan. So all of them with trackers at the moment and that's really going to help us bring them across the line and uh, create a vibe around that a little bit later today. So great to see, look at the track, you can see up at the front there, um, both uh, Dimitri and Hannes. Uh, to the right, you can see Jared Hazen chasing Drew Holman just behind him. And uh, you can see Daniel, Daniel's working his way towards that next aid station now. Looking for some visuals, we're hoping to get them from you shortly. Um, but uh, there it is, visuals again. Just, um, yeah, really, as you said earlier, Emily, a really good running section, this section, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot, there's still quite a bit of climbing. I know, like, right now it looks flat and down, but actually it is climbing a little bit. There's a slight gradient. I know we keep seeing Hillary stop and walk a few steps. That's totally understandable. She's been running for a long time. Yep, you see, um, <laughs> it's a good balance between, you know, moving, hiking, <laughs> And just, yeah, keeping on going. The finish line is getting closer step by step. Um, so cool to see. Yeah, oftentimes you start to play games with yourself. You say, okay, Hilly, just run to that tree. Yeah. And you run to that tree, and then it's okay. You're going to walk to that tree. And then you just keep doing that with yourself. You kind of play that right. game as opposed to looking at your watch and going yeah. minutes to minutes or something. It's easy just to pick a, pick a dot on the horizon, run to that thing, and then start running again. Particularly when you're on terrain where it's like, you could you could run it, but it's just like you're so yeah. freaking tired uh, that it's yeah. hard yeah. to do so. It's like there's no rhyme or reason. It's just like run as far as you can. Okay, now I'm going to walk. Okay, now I can run again. It's, it's those little mind games you kind of have to play with yourself in order to keep moving down the trail. Some more doggos on trail, but they're right there with their guy being walked. Not a big deal. So we have some updates from Constantia Glynn. We have Carrie Ann Marshall, Alf lady that was in fourth place she's currently moved into second wow we uh -huh. thought that might happen Go South Africa. <laughs> she's about 55 minutes behind hillary um and naomi uh is two minutes behind carrie ann um so yeah, yeah our powerful south africans are moving up we kind of called that <laughs> yeah, so the big question is is that we've had some, we had an issue at Nicolette's bib reading earlier, yeah. and we just don't like that as something to keep an eye on there, too. Because right. um, at one point, it looked like from the photos I got from the course that Nicolette had actually moved ahead of Naomi. Okay. So curious to know what that looks like when her bib does read there, um, because she was one of those athletes whose bib did not pick up at one of the earlier aid stations, where, like, where Hillary's bib didn't yeah. pick up, for example. So potentially we have all three South Africans within pretty close to each other. Maybe within minutes of each other. Yeah, 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 that's pretty sweet. Well, just what does it look like here? Yeah, it's less than a minute and 25 seconds between Kerry Ann and Naomi at the moment. Right. So let's have a look and see where she is. Where is Nicola Krivion? How is she doing? And uh, yeah, I mean, race on. Let's go. <laughs> this is definitely Kerry Ann's strength. We called it from the beginning. I knew <laughs> she'd play it smart. She, this is her first 100 miler. Um, she's very methodical in how she races, and she will chase to the finish uh, no matter who's no matter ahead of what. her. Um, so, yeah, super cool to see that actually playing out. This Consensia Glen section is, is becoming quite a an iconic section. There's a lot of game changing going on there. We know in the 100 kilometer that it's only 15.6 kilometers uh, as they come out of Heart Bay, join up and go. But the 100 miler comes the other way and that is a 19.4 kilometer distance. So this is a brutal section. It's probably the dark section of the day for a lot of the athletes. Well, you're also, you're, you're so far in, but you still have a ways to go at that yeah. point. I feel like once you get to that aid station, you can kind of like, once you, you can kind of exhale a little bit and you know you're kind of on the downward slope right. so to speak but that section going into it it's you've been out there for such a long time but you're that's a that's a hard almost 20 kilometer section yeah. of racing yeah. 
So here she goes. She continues to just tick boxes one foot in front of the other. That's what it's all about when it comes to ultra distance running. And uh, she has been very, very impressive indeed. Making her way towards that next checkpoint. Um, not long now, I'm sure that Drew and Jared will not be far behind her right now. Uh, we haven't seen them go past her yet. We would have heard something from our team, but they're going to be really close to catching her now, I'm sure. Yeah, they, I would imagine if, if, if they've, they've only been about four and a half to, I think it was nine minutes back, that, that they should be coming. Drew and then, or Drew, yeah, and then likely Jared Hazen passing her, probably separately, um, unless Jared really closes quite quickly. But I think the... We should see Drew come by Hillary. I do not think that that pass has been made yet, but we would be able to catch that on this bike as that happens. In case you missed this, this is obviously your winner of the 100 miler, the very first 100 miler here at the Ultra Trail Cape Town. And hasn't he been incredible? Uh, so good to see, so proud of him. He literally nailed it every bit of the way and uh, he can be very, very happy from Greece. And uh, Vita's just, just nailing it all the way, going out of this venue, five o'clock last night, and he never ever looked back. You can see the celebrations here on the finish line. And uh, Fidus Zimopoulos of Greece, your very first winner of the Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town 100 miler. And then in second place, racing for Adidas Terex, Alexei, really good. He was having a battle all day long with Ilof. He sort of got ahead of him, coming into UCT, never looked back, and uh, you can see just super stoked to come across the finish line in second place, and uh, 21 hours, 25 minutes, and 42 seconds. Saluting the crowd, giving them recognition, and uh, this is an experience that's gonna stay with him for a very, very long time. You can see his teammates come to him, lots of loves and hugs. Who's over there with him, Ems? Uh Jeshurun, who got second place yesterday. Jasmine, who's going to run tomorrow. Macy, who got fourth yesterday in the 55K. Um, I missed who else was there. <laughs> wow. Kimmy. Kimmy, Kimmy, who put on that excellent performance. <laughs> yes. Duking it out with the uh, with uh, Landy Grayling to finish to finish second ultimately. Oh, that is that's 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 Jared Hazen. So Drew must have made the path at some point in time before we could get eyes on him. So right now, who we just saw go pa past Hillary Allen is in the red shorts. Is is Jared Hazen? So cool. potentially, there's been uh, it's it's possible that Jared Hazen has passed Drew Holman and has moved his way up. But I think it is very likely that no, it looks like Drew is still ahead of Jared Hazen. We just missed the pass there. I'm looking at the wrong order. I was backwards on our little blue dots that we're tracking. So it looks like it looks like we're trying to slow this down to catch the pass. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Hillary heard heard him come up on her shoulder, heard the bike kind of move over. That was Jared Hazen of the U.S. Re re racing for Solomon, moving past Hillary Allen, who is leading the 100-mile race. We know that Drew Holman has also gone by Hillary, hoping, hoping giving her really, really big, big cheers as she makes her way along the course here as your race leader in the 100-mile race at the inaugural 100-mile race at UTCT. The bike needs to dismount here so it doesn't completely <laughs> fall into the large, the large kind of irrig not irrigation ditch, but ditch on the side there. So Hillary Aaron currently sitting in fourth place overall, your first lady in the 100 miler. Uh, Corinne, what do you got there? Oh my <laughs> goodness. I am maybe more nervous than they are out there <laughs> racing right now. I'm feeling a little bit 
flummoxed. But we just saw Jared Hazen go by Hillary Allen, who is leading the women's race in the 100 mile race. She's currently fourth overall still in that 100 mile race. I don't think Brett has closed down on her but we were trying to get that bike to go around that gate to continue to follow along with our runners there i don't think we were picking up a runner with the camera at that point so we're going to try to get that that camera back on our runners drew holman also went by hillary we did not see that we will get a split for our 100 mi or our 100 kilometer athletes shortly i think at nurse uh, at nursery ravine that will be the 80.73 kilometer mark also interesting here, still no news of Nicola Trifion, so she still has not come through Consentia Glen. As far as we, we know. As far as we yeah. know. As far as, as, far as, as we as can see. Exactly. Her blue We're dot might still be moving, it. but it's, it's her right. bib has not been yeah. read at that yeah. aid station yet, That's which right. her bib did not read at an earlier aid station. Right. So yeah, possible. we'll wait we'll to wait continue to see <laughs> what's going on there. But um, We did have Daniel Claassen come through Alphen aid station. Uh, he is yeah. 11 minutes back from Jared. Hazen, 21 minutes back from the lead, I yep. think. So he's lost a little bit of time to the front guys, but right. holding holding pretty steady there in that fifth place position. And I think yep. he was fifth last year yep. as well, exactly. right? Top South African, fifth. That's right. He was trying to That's better there. that this yep. year. <laughs> That's still in the cards, but yep. that is what, what Don was out there to do today. Honestly, a pair of fifths would not be a bad performance either. No, he's had a rough year, actually. He hasn't been able a to go to lots of races. He's got, yeah. had a bunch of injuries. So to have him stepping up and being fifth in the deep field of athletes, yeah. deep field of international athletes, super cool to see Daniel really coming up into his own, um, you know, solidifying his stand here in South Africa on his home trails. Um, super excited for him out there today. So the hot news, <laughs> Kerry Ann Marshall, Unbelievable. <laughs> she is literally an assassin, a pocket rocket. She knows this trail well. She continues to perform every single year at yes. Ultra Trail Cape Town. <laughs> she is ahead of Naomi Brand of South Africa in second place at the moment as they went through Constantia Glen. Henry Allen through Alphen Trail. She's really had a fantastic run today. Put very few feet wrong and uh, she really has, just like our leader Fidus from Greece, put together a professional and consummate race. Yes, definitely. We're excited to see what is happening with those 100 mile ladies. Um, we really can't wait for them to get to Alphen Trail, uh, get a confirmation on everyone's position, uh, Carrie Ann, Naomi, and Nicolette. Um, the race is on with those girls. We've been watching them work together and chase each other uh, since yesterday at five o'clock. And now we're getting into that crunch time where we get to kind of measure that out and see how they can race these final few miles. Um, we know Carrie Ann, it's her first 100 miler. Uh, it'll be <laughs> she'll be feeling the 100 mile distance, but she's so smart. She's done things methodically and super excited to see that. Yeah, and, and Nicolette's tracker is still up on it and it awesome. shows her back a little ways so that that could very well be the case and we'll just we'll know like her tracker will come through Castentia Glen and then we'll get that confirmation Perfect. at, at Alphen Trail but her so her tracker is still live um, on on the course it hasn't updated recently it updated three I guess three minutes ago so it does look like she's at 135.3 making her way down towards that aid station wow cool so let's uh, have a quick look here, just uh, take a bit of perspective of just this uh, incredible playground that we get to call the Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town. The athletes getting to traverse this amazing part of the Western Cape. Here's a look at the prize money for the 100 kilometer, 40,000 Rand for first, 20 for second and 10,000 for third. That's across both the men and the ladies, which means a prize purse of 140,000 Rand, which is uh, nothing to be shy about and certainly something the athletes I'm sure appreciate. Look at the prize money here for the 100 miler. This of course the flagship event here at the Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town. The first time that it has been run. The first time a 100 miler has been run uh, in Cape Town and look at that. 60,000 Rand for first 30 for second, 20 for third. That's 220,000 Rand in prize purse for the top three men and women. Well done to RMB Ultra Trail Cape Town guys. I'm sure the athletes do really appreciate that and uh, it certainly is uh, uh, something that is uh, 
Yeah, well earned and uh, looking at what we've seen today and uh, yeah. what these athletes have been through the tenacity the grit just the focus just what they put their bodies through that is a very well earned prize purse for sure for sure yeah so now hearing in our ears we're trying to get back to some of the guys on that 100 kilometers they make their way through to the next aid station and that next aid station for them will be the a nursery ravine is what I think they're moving towards now. So let's get a look at and see where they are. Um, I see Dimitri uh, on my tracking not far away from there now. Uh, just going to go and have a look and see when last he was checked. So a minute ago, I'm guessing Dimitri is, is not more than probably three to five minutes from nursery ravine. So our e-bike now trying to scoot back and find our next athlete and uh, this is exactly why these e-bikes are just so good. You know they're able to move across terrain very very quickly and uh, move between the athletes very quickly. So you can see our rider here on the e-bike just going at breakneck speed to try and pick up that next athlete for us. Yeah well we had two, we had two injuries in our in our camera camera folks last <laughs> night. We had a, a rolled ankle trying to trace Ragnar de Botts down a, a steep rocky incline. I think we had an, in, an encounter with a port Porcupine by another by another um, runner with the camera last night. Truly athletes chasing athletes. We had last minute volunteers step up. They got the call in this morning to be out there on course. So really all hands on deck right now. Our our cyclist is currently calling and texting Skills and biking days. and filming at the same time here trying to find um, our our next <laughs> athletes, which is a little bit intimidating. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, but I'm glad that they are <laughs> making their way, hopefully, to get some more athletes on our screens. 100 percent, and the more the merrier. So can't wait to get those uh, pictures back. Just listening to our team in the background. I wonder what Cody and Tony are up to. Where are they? <laughs> what are they doing? Maybe we can get some pictures of of the fans at the finish line. Maybe let's get across. Let's get across to the finish line at uh, at Gardens Tech Rugby Club and see what the fans are doing. Maybe we can just see who's there, what it looks like, and get a feel for the atmosphere, which might be quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> it is nice that everyone is coming out to that finish line. We have a lot of finishes to look forward to. We've already had two big finishes today. And so getting that energy there, it makes it so special for every athlete that finishes um, to have that support, that Cape Town support. Starting the party early, why not? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, 270 runners in the Ultra Trail 100, uh, 156 in the 100 miler. Tomorrow morning we've got 500, a sold out field in the brand new, uh, in the 35 kilometer, which starts early tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. And then don't forget, probably the unofficial world championships of kids trail running. Kids trail running the is shred. going down yes. shred is <laughs> tomorrow. coming in hot and that'll be for the under three, under seven Aww. and under 11 runners. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will say I think the other the other piece of that puzzle, right, is uh, we they started at 5 p.m. last night. We have athletes that are going to be out there for 45 hours. Wow. They have until yeah. 2 p.m. on Sunday to finish two full nights. Absolutely Very terrifying cool. proposition. Just another scene setter for you guys and girls, those of you checking in from wherever you are in the world right now. This is what the map looks like for the Rand Merchant Bank UTCT 100 miler. And uh, right now the athletes all over the place. If you go and do the dot watching off the website, you'll see that they spread out all over the place. Remember, a lot of the focus of the race has been on the top runners. What's going on? What does it look like? But there's a full field of athletes that still have to tick these boxes, go through all these aid stations and make their way through to the finish line. So for me, I think what the beauty of this is and, and what brings together full circle Circle, the dream of what Ultra Trail Cape Town was all about is was that we wanted to be able to showcase to the world just how beautiful Cape Town is and the Cape Peninsula is and to get the agreement and the buy-in from Sand Parks from the city of Cape Town that makes just it worthwhile and, and, and it's this dream come true which is magnificent. So something that we aren't quite seeing on this screen that I have on my end is that uh, Matthew Healy has also come through uh, Castania Glen. I think the next person to come through there is going to be Seb Speller, who is one of the early leaders, one of the early top three, charging maybe too hard at the front of that race, maybe overheating, um, wondering if he's going to get to Castania Glen or Alfin Trail and withdraw from the race. He's been now overtaken by both Daniel Clausen, well, both Drew Holman, Jared Hazen, Daniel Clausen, and Matthew Healy, South Africa now repping number five and number six. 
in, in a strong international men's field here today. I know we've got a lot of Matt Healy fans <laughs> in the YouTube chat, so um, shout out who you're watching for. That What is on your screen right now, again, is, is the 100K race that is currently underway. Both the 100K and the 100-mile race are underway. The 100K started this morning at 6 a.m., and we are, I don't know what our... We expect the, the things to be a little bit slower than last year, 30 or 40 minutes slower, but they're making quick work of the course thus far. 100% light. So we're at the finish line now. Here we are at Gardens Tech Rugby Club inside the tent, and uh, there'll be a vibe going on there now, Ems. You know, a lot of people coming through to the finish line, waiting for the athletes to come through, and um, just such a great race village, isn't it? Yeah, great race village. Jack Black is there with their beer. Um, the community's all there. I know this year they've done a really good job with the, um, what do you call it, where <laughs> all the all the brands are there with their little booths and stuff. Little uh, expo? Expo, that's expo. the word. Sorry, guys, we've been <laughs> broadcasting for about 25 hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we should be, Extensia Glen should have our third, our, our first and second place um, 100K women coming through there any minute now. It looks like Cami is almost to that aid station, and Mimi should be just behind her, so I'm wondering if there's any way that we've got cameras going back that way all right so let's wait and see what happens and, and we'll be able to collect and, and and get some of that data what we're going to do now though is quickly go to a short ad break very short and ad we'll break. be back with yep. you shortly <laughs> cheers Slate. so this is the story of the most durable shoe that salomon have ever created so we wanted to create the perfect shoe for long adventures on s'est rendu compte que des deux côtés, tant des athlètes que des consommateurs, aujourd'hui nous disaient qu'il manquait une chaussure dans la gamme. Et on s'est dit, ouais, il y a peut-être quelque chose à aller chercher, en tout cas dans l'identitaire, de se dire, bah, repartons un peu aux origines du trail, remettons un peu ce qui fait nos origines à nous, Salomon. So for me, life is an adventure, and it's all about gaining experiences. So when I push myself to the limits, I want to have the best for my feet. New Sunto 9 Peak Pro. Extremely elegant extremely tough. Sunto, adventure starts here.
Asunto. Adventure starts here. And, uh, welcome back to the studio. News from the course. We have an official new leader in the women's 100 kilometer. Yeah, we had gotten reports from course via the photographers, via the race photographers who are sliding into WhatsApp. It's great um, that Kemi Brujas had moved into that top posi p position, and we do have official confirmation. Kami Brujas has made it to Castencia Glen. She has made it to that 71.57 kilometer mark. She's running seventh overall in the field. She's only, let's call it, five minutes back from Matt Healy right now. So super, super solid performance. And we expect Mimi, uh, Mimi Kotka to not be that far behind her. We'll next be looking for uh, Vavara and Kelly Wolfs be in those third and fourth positions at this aid station. So, and honestly, not that far back is what we've been hold from course. Absolutely. This uh, women's race is really coming to form and it's really going to be a showcase for us. We're excited about that. We've chatted to Cami already. We had a chat with Mimi earlier. What we're going to do now is introduce you to Kelly Wolf out of the United States of America. We chatted to her this week before the race. Let's meet her and see what she thinks about her race coming up. My name is Kelly Wolf. I'm a runner for La Sportiva and I'm coming from Colorado, USA. I got into trail running the last year of college, and prior to that, the years before, I was really into rock climbing, and that's what really developed my love for the mountains. On my own, I would just run up the local mountains around the valley in Arizona for a workout, because it sounded more fun than just going for a flat hour run. And then I discovered this ultra trail running group in Phoenix. Early on just blew my mind that people could run that far and was super intrigued by it. So I had to give it a go myself and then did my first race and went from there. To explore so many places around the world, to get to explore a landscape on your own two feet in such an intimate way is so fascinating but also just really fulfilling just to see what your body can do and how far it can go and how it feels it's pretty mind-blowing and so and then ultra running also just teaches you so many lessons that transfers over to real life here for the race in 2018 and since doing that race i've always wanted to come back i've always known that i could have a better go at it and I really loved the race uh, because it was so challenging. It's a very difficult race. It's very technical trails, a lot of vertical gain. And because of the technicality, it's a lot of slow miles. So you're out there for a while and need to keep picking up your feet. In my training, I definitely made sure to practice technical trails and not even just physically but mentally when I was out on these technical trails just to not be impatient with them because they're slower but to really just em embrace them and embrace the style of running that they are and so I think just having done the course before and running some of the newer parts of the course this year just knowing what to expect then I can wrap my mind around the race a little better, pace myself a little better, and know exactly where I want to be feeling good and be able to push to the finish. All right, so there you have it, hearing from Kelly, seeing what her thought process was leading into the week. She's right up there at the moment. She's definitely a contender. Speaking of contenders, Hannes Namberger of Germany, right up at the sharp end of the race. Mm -hmm. Let's cut to an interview with him quickly. I'm Hannes Namberger. I'm uh, 33 years old and I'm from Germany. I'm a trail runner uh, since seven years and now uh, it's my first time here in Cape Town. I'm very excited to, uh, to do this race. I was really surprised about the technical skills. What do you need for this race? Sometimes the descent is really technical. You need your whole concentration, you need hands. You don't have to make mistakes and yeah, it was very surprising because at home it's very runnable. Uh, the ops are sometimes easier. Yeah, but I like the technical parts and yeah, it's really cool. My, my strategy is always to start slowly and if the race is gone, 
or if the race is after 40k started for me, then uh, I try to push a little bit more. Our 100k is a, it's a, I would say a magical border, and this um, distance fits perfect for me because on 40k I'm really slow, but on 100k, yeah, it fits perfect to my skills, to my body, to my strategy, and that's what I like. I love what I do. I'm here in a new country. I can explore this. I'm healthy. Um, I'm in the perfect age to do this, and I'm very thankful for this. And yeah, and then you should push until the end, because the whole family, the whole team, the sponsors, everybody's helping you the whole season. And then you should you should get what you or what? Why are you training for this? And yeah, I'm looking forward to this. And I think that's not my last time here. And I really want to enjoy this race. And, yeah. And we see us at the finish line, the party. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fun. Seems like the party at UTCT is becoming quite popular. <laughs> oh, I think so. Yeah, I think, I think it's why most of us are here, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's speak about that for you. Obviously, coming your way, Tomorrow between 12 and 1 o'clock is our prize giving. Between 1 and 2 o'clock is the golden hour, which is the final hour, that 44 to 45 hours on the Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town 100 miler. And then from 2.30, one of the best live bands you'll ever see, me and Mr. Green, are going to be at Gardens Tech Rugby Club. Jack Black is going to be there. It's going to be a celebration of what has been an epic week of trail running. And right. uh, don't miss it. Come and join us and join in the party. We're very, very excited for that. But let's talk about what we do know right now from the 100K field. And then we're going to go try to find Elav Olsen, who should be the third place male athlete in the inaugural 100-mile event. He's not yet come to Dead Man's Tree, which is that 3K to go marker. So we're keeping our eyes on it, though, and you should too. But Kemi Brujas is leading. We did say that. We know she's leading. She's in seventh overall. But Mimi, uh, Mimi Kota has officially come through that next aid station as well. But... Kami opened up a seven-minute lead over second place. So we went wow. from a very, very tight race to things starting to break apart on that last section, that really hard section of this race. It looked like little shade, limited aid, a long time without crew. Um, it seems to be that this might be what we could consider the cruxy section. Obviously, the first part of this race is very, very hard. Souther Peak is very, very hard. But this section seems to be where a lot of things are changing. A lot of things are happening. Um, you've you've run this race. You've won this race. I'm wondering what you think of this section that really seems to be kind of telling right now. Well, super interesting. But what the aid station was before this big change, it wasn't. Was it called Constantin Nick? I think it was Constantin 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 Nick. Glenn. Yeah, but it was Constantin Nick. We went through there again. Changes, yeah. Yeah, so um, that was the aid station. Me and Mimi hooked up and started racing for the next into Alfin, um, Alfin Trail. So again, Mimi's been caught here, kind of at this point. Um, Camille. Uh, Cami has t has overtaken her and put a gap on her, and it'll be interesting to see um, if Mimi can come back. Hopefully, she can hold on to that second place and not be caught again by the third place um, as she did in 2018. She's a strong athlete. She knows this trail. She obviously knows exactly what's ahead of her. So does Cami, <laughs> and these girls get to race it into the finish. Yeah, absolutely right. Just confirmation there of that leaderboard for you in the women's and the men's as well. But uh, in the women's, Kerry Ann Marshall currently sitting in one, Naomi Brand in two, Nicola Trifion in three. That is what the ladies' field looks like as they come through towards the latter stages of the race. Can you believe we're actually talking about the latter stages <laughs> of the race already in the elite women's field? In the men's race, Fotis Zimopoulos of Greece taking the win, 20 hours, 48 minutes and 17 seconds. Alexki Tolstenko coming in second at 21, 26. We're waiting for Ilof Olsen out of Sweden. He is currently making his way down down towards Dead Man's Tree. He's not too far away. Uh, Justin Olofsson looks like a contender now as he makes his way into the top five in the men. Julian Zimmer is there. Gabriel Creel is there. Brett Natras is there as well. So lots going on. What have you got? Carrie Ann Marshall just came into Alfin Trail. What's the split back from Hillary there? At 52. 
52? 52 minutes. 52 okay. minutes. She was yeah. at 55 Sorry. minutes of the last one. Well, yeah. the, what, what we're tracking right now, there's Elav Olsen on your on our screen. We're yeah. getting some unofficial footage out from on course, <laughs> yeah. essentially. So we've got, I think we might have two bikes on him. Uh, but uh, obviously the ratio a little bit out at the moment, but we've got footage and that's what counts. You can see right in the background Lion's Head and uh, he's making his way down. He's on that tar section now. I think it's called the Tafelberg Road. Um, yep. And he's got picked up now by the uh, e-bike and the runner and he's now going to zigzag his way down to Dead Man's Tree. From Dead Man's Tree, he's got three kilometers to go. Yeah, I think this might be, this is a runner, I think, that's on the far side of the road right it's now. It's, yep. it's fairly bouncy, but I think... The runner is going to have to be who takes Elov into the finish right now. We'll get a split at Dead Man's here in a second, but looking back at the Alfin Trail, um, Kostenshi Glenn, I'm yeah. looking back at the women's, the women's splits there because I think Carrie Ann is is slowly making moves. I don't think there's necessarily enough enough time potentially right. at this point, but she's running really really solidly. But I mean, so well, like like here we go. At Nordhoek, she was 71 minutes back from Hill. Yep. At um, Cassandra Glen, 55-49 back from Hillary. Mm -hmm. At Alphen Trail, 51-58 back from Hillary. <laughs> so she's slowly clawing her way yeah. forward. Really, really cool to say. You said it was her. her this is her first 100 miler. Yep. Yeah. So learn like learning a ton, yep. putting together a super solid result, running really, really smart. Super cool to see. Carrie Ann uh, Marshall currently your second place lady at Alphen Trail. Curious now to see kind of that Naomi split, that Naomi Brand split, as well as waiting still for. Um, Nicolette to come through that Castentia Glen aid station as well. Yes. And uh, just to put it out there, girls, Drew Holman is in a rush. He's in a hurry. He's in a hurry. I, I think he needs to do some shopping or he's getting ready for the party <laughs> tomorrow. But he is catching up to Dimitri. He's catching up to Hannes. And uh, yeah, uh, this is going to make for very, very exciting race. Make no doubt about it. They're on about the 82 kilometer mark at the moment, which means just on about 14 k's to go. But um, that means they're making their way down towards uh, UCT. And uh, I've got to tell you that Jared is in, uh, Drew is, uh, is in a hurry, and Jared is not too far away either. So both of them looking really good at the moment. Yeah, uh, the university is going to be a really exciting point. So we have a big crew there, um, ready to welcome those guys in there, and then welcome them, or send them out on their way home. So hopefully we can get some eyes in there. Uh, we had someone in there right earlier. Yeah, the question is, is we're starting to wonder if we're not going to get a split from Nursery Ravine. Yeah. Um, right now, not it's not it's up. not looking like it. This happened earlier, too. The Rocket Road splits were really, really delayed. And that might be right. what happens here, where it's just the signal is bad or non-existent, and it might take a second for us to get a split. So it does look like we actually have, oh, no, my, just a huge update. Stop All the four front door. I think Look us complaining that. about it Commentators really, curse. Were, <laughs> really yeah. did it. But we do now have a split. Dimitri, um, Mityev, and Hannes Namberger are still side by side, one second scan difference. But it looks like right now Drew Holman is running 447 behind, so he's lost a handful of seconds. Yep. Jared Hazen, though, now 8.20 back from Dimitri and Hannes. But that means that he has gained another minute back on Drew. So Jared Hazen is in the hunt right now. And the question is, you know, what's going to pan out for the podium? Are, uh, like, I, I imagine at this point that Dimitri and, and, ha and Hannes are being told, hey, guys, they're you coming. can keep working <laughs> together, but you got to work together a little bit gotta faster. Speed it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, you work together, but you know, just kick it up another notch. You're yeah. currently at a 11. We need you at a 12. So, I imagine that is what's kind of going on out there. But right now, Jared Hazen continuing to pull back time on the entire field, getting closer to Drew Holman. My only, you know, my only hope is that if if Jared can it can or is closing that to Drew, that Drew is able to latch onto him and take that momentum forward. Right, that it doesn't doesn't go right. just right by in the you know, the elastic breaks. If you can keep that elastic intact, you can really just get pulled along for a while. Yeah. Yeah, and these guys have obviously been running on their own, whereas the front two have been running together. So if they do join up, it does, you know, add a little extra motivation to keep running. Yeah, it helps, right? Yeah. It lowers yeah. that RPE. Having yeah. that person on your shoulder, 
Um, it means you're, it's not necessarily working together, but it's this idea, right? The reason pacers work in, in marathons for world records is not because they're, you know, breaking the wind in right. front of that runner. They're not, they're not creating that air barrier. What they're actually doing is just, it, it's lessening the, the emotional, psychological burden. Absolutely. So, so Olaf Olsen now on track as we go down to Cody. Cody Reed down at the finish right. line. What's Hi going everybody. on? Hi everybody, I'm at the Alphen trail aid station naomi has just come in in the hundred miler she's in third place right now seven minutes behind second place well. naomi how's it been going out there you are absolutely crushing it i'm so proud of you thanks thanks Cody. Nice. it's hot and windy <laughs> yes. you are almost finished so get on out of here <laughs> all right we're gonna let her crew take care of her she's getting some ice getting some drinks and sunscreen anti-chafe all the good stuff she is on life support it looks like again it's been it's behind second place who just came through the alfin trail aid station there goes the ice bandana You're doing great, Naomi. So back with Naomi Brand. Our third All right, here she goes. 100 miler as she gets ready to come out of that aid station, chasing down Kirian. It's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Oh, you know the hometown crowd is happy that we got a little bit of that. While she's been living in New Zealand, she's got a lot of fans in the South African audience. She's a stellar athlete. She's a stud athlete. She is on her way out of the 143.6 kilometer to aid station. Mountain. There's not so heading much. Across and then down to UCT yeah. where we'll, we'll be excited to see her at yeah, the yeah. Um, the University of Cape Town. Will kind of be one of those next big spots that we are able to there check in with those athletes. But right now, she is about six minutes down. Five and a half minutes down on her fellow South African, Carrie Ann Marshall. So right now, Hillary Allen in the lead of the 100-mile race. 52 minutes later, Carrie Ann Marshall in her debut 100-mile race. And then Naomi Brand, the South African star, back there in 57-27 behind Hillary Allen. So it looks like we've got Makanda and Sweeney now, just one of the 100-kilometer runners, uh, one of the e-bikes managing to pick him up Running on the 16. section. Running 16th position at the moment. Yep. So now nice to be able to track back to some of the midfield runners, if we can call it that. I mean, yep. he's at the sharp end, slit 16, isn't he? Yeah. But um, <laughs> nice to see him running so nicely up through the vineyards now, and uh, just good to get some good graphics on him. Yeah, Ekaterina is likely in proximity of him as well. Kelly Wolf is ahead. Ekaterina is behind this athlete. Olivia Amber is behind this athlete. That's kind of the next, the next individuals that we're going to be keeping our eyes out for at this aid station and as we move towards the finish line. So you can see the running time there on the clocks, the red clock, 22 hours, 19 minutes, and 51 seconds. And of course, the 100 kilometer clock, 9 hours, 19 minutes, and 49 seconds. Ilof Olsen, third place in your elite men's race in the 100 miler. He has got 160 four kilometers behind him <laughs> just over two kilometers to go for him now following that route marker you can see that route marker just on the right hand side blown over a little bit but he knows the way home now you can see the wind is blowing quite considerably there is a bit of work going on there you can see on the left hand side but uh, he's working nicely towards the finish line now we're going to expect him home within the next six or seven minutes yeah he's not moving as smoothly as the two guys ahead of him on this section we know that it's it's not an easy section as much as um, the guys ahead of him made it look like they hadn't run 100 miles. Um, Elof is showing us that he did run 100 miles and it's sore to come down that <laughs> road. <laughs> and I only emphasize this because I know that feeling. Um, he's rocking it. 
Not sure where we're jumping to now. It's definitely one of the aid stations, just cutting between the yeah. live view units, trying to pick up the footage that we need to bring across into the broadcast for you. But oh, uh, This is University, University of yeah. Cape Town. That is, that is UCTC, UCT, University of Cape Town aid station. So you can see the Red Bull arch there as they come out of the aid station. So uh, just uh, checking visuals perhaps, not quite sure what's going happening uh, the right there. Crew's getting set up. Crew's to getting ready. You know, because yeah. that, that is the next place where the 100K crews are going to see right. their runners. The, the Hannes' crew is going to be there. Demos' crew is going to be there. Drew and uh, Jared's crews are going to be there. They're going to be waiting for their runners, and they're going to give them so much love and energy mm -hmm. before they send them on their final 11K odyssey up Blockhouse and then down to the finish line at the Garden Rugby Center. Just snap, snap, quick, quick, 11K is no problem. Yeah. <laughs> we have Daniel Claassen 17 minutes behind now through Nursery Ravine uh, behind Jared Hazen. Okay. Just a little. 13 minutes. 17 minutes. 17 minutes. minutes. <laughs> so Daniel battling a little bit, obviously. But um, Ilof now just ticking boxes, keeping the metronome going one foot in front of the other and uh, getting his way through to the finish line. He'll get down onto that boardwalk shortly. It's nice to see this section. Actually, we haven't seen it today. Everything's nice and grown. There's a little uh, step to the right here. Um, I don't think we got to see much of this section yesterday either, actually. No. Yeah. So it's quite nice to get to yeah virtual virtual reality run the entire course this weekend. Yeah, yeah. The year we ran, it was so hot. When Elof last ran too, um, super hot. We came, we were coming down here. <laughs> I just dove into the side and drank some water. It's like you're right in Cape Town. <laughs> 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 my camera guy's like, it was Kane Riley. He was like, uh, you shouldn't be. I'm like, I don't care. You're like, I'll, I'll get sick tomorrow. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> it's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have a split officially at Nursery Ravine for Hillary Allen. So she is kind of, it's actually kind of maintaining that gap between Fotis and her at this place. She's three and a half hours back from Fotis at that aid station. Um, she's still running in fourth overall. I was looking to see if Brett was catching her, but I actually think the women are all ahead of Brett at this point. So I think we're, we've got women that are four, five, and six in the overall in the inaugural 100 mile edition right now. But he nice. is cur she, she is currently sitting in fourth place position at Nursery Ravine, the 48.29 kilometer mark. We will see her next at the University of Cape Town at 155. All right, let's have a look and see what's going on here. Our runner and our bike now with the athlete, just mm -hmm. to make sure we've got both images mm -hmm. as we bring Elof through to the finish. And uh, Vivara looking good. I mean, 20 minutes behind uh, Kemi uh, in the 100. Mimi sitting seven minutes off the lead. But Vivara sitting solid in third place at the moment. Vivara sitting really solidly in there. Okay, so there's been a huge gap though, yeah. right? We got that seven minutes to Kemi, and then we've got 13 minutes from Mimi back to Vivara. So really kind of I, what i'm curious to know it, it looks on the live tracker once again i'm not 100 percent checking the trusting the live tra tracker but it looks like kelly wolf might be moving backwards in the field with ekaterina moving up yeah. um as well so that's kind of what we're going to keep our eyes on ekaterina and olivia amber would be looking to move up in the field yeah. you know hopeful that that my guess is that kelly it's really warm out there that's a brutal section as, as we've mentioned we'll, we'll get an official split as those women make it into Constanta glenn here in just a little bit What's quite cool is that you can see on the tracking devices when last they were updated. So, you know, we're looking at Hannes Namberger, we're looking at his tracking device. He's like, whoa, why is he not with Dimitri? But his tracking device hasn't updated in the last 19 yeah. minutes. So mm -hmm. they're probably right in it at the moment. You can see there when it was last updated. And uh, he's way behind on our tracking device, but the racing is the sharp But I don't think that's end. accurate, no, right? Like that's I don't want to trust update. that yet. It yep. hasn't updated no, in forever. Exactly. 19 <laughs> minutes until that last update. So we wait anxiously as we continue to scroll roll our keyboards and uh, watch them like a hawk to give you the best that we possibly can with regards to um, good information on what is happening out there on the course. Those of you just tuning in, a very good afternoon and welcome to the RMB UTCT live broadcast here this afternoon. It is Saturday the 26th of November. It is the eighth year of the Ultra Trail Cape Town and in this year we have three new races. The 23 kilometer, the 55 kilometer and of course this flagship event which is the 100 miler. For the first 
first time athletes get to run the length and breadth and every trail <laughs> in between of the Cape Peninsula. Yeah. So, so people are saying, where's our 100K runners? Well, okay, they're in between cameras. Yeah. We can only it's give you the videos and the visuals when we have service and they are at a camera location. Um, it's not infinite. It's not that's not how this works, but we do know that we do expect Dima and Hannes to be at the University of Cape Town where we do have Tony and ready. Frank in yeah. the field ready to get those images for us where we should have service. We should have lots of service, actually. Um, they should be there in about 10 to 15 minutes. So expect to get your eyes on those uh, 100K runners, the men at the front of that race in about 10 to 15 minutes. And Ilof right on the finish line. He's got to be as close as you can be to the finish. So there he goes now, getting these visuals on him, making his way through, and uh, we're going to get ready and excited to bring him across that finish line. He's gone through what we call the pre-finish now, and uh, that pre-finish um, is is less than one point. I think it's one point two k's from the finish line. If I'm if I'm correct, he's going to go through the gates now. Go over that road crossing. It's a quick two hundred and fifty to three hundred meters, and then he takes the left up onto the field. So cameras ready, teams ready. It's uh, going to be an opportunity to celebrate an incredible third place here today for Ilof Olsen out of Sweden in the elite men's one hundred miler. The first time that the Ultra Trail Cape Town has hosted and put on this one hundred miler, and it certainly has turned out to be an incredible event. I feel like Elop can kind of default to like 100k road worlds yeah. identity and zone, right? This is like this is the terrain that this guy can run all day long. Well, it turns out he can run South African terrain all day long mm -hmm. too, but you know, it's kind of nice when you can just like check out and check into what your body defaults to and I feel like that is some of this terrain for Elop Olsen, but he will be third today in the inaugural edition of the UTCT 100 mile race. He's adding to his finishes here. He finished second in the 100K race in 2018. Uh, I'm sure he's super excited to get that second finish across the line under he's his belt. He's going to have to come back again, though, if he wants that win is what it's coming <laughs> down to. Right. But, but we do also have Kami Bruas through Alphen Trail. She's officially 9.24 on the clock. 63 minutes back from Dima and Hannes. She's opening the up. The next question is, how? Yeah, she's only lost two minutes to the boys over that 4K, 5K mm -hmm. section. And then the question is, how far back is Mimi? And then how far back is Vivara? What does that gap look like? But if Cami pulls off a, another a win here, a win at Templier, yep, a month ago, Brilliant. and then a win here this weekend, that is one fall showing. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. She's look at this. Here we go. He has the left hand turn up past the Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town branding and uh, she'll he'll turn up onto the field now this little pathway the final Achilles heel before <laughs> you get onto the dance floor at the uh, Tech Gardens Rugby Club here in uh, Cape Town and what a great venue it is we're hoping to get a bit of audio for you and Elof Olsen now he's done this before he's been on the podium here before on the smaller event this time he said I'm doing the very first Ultra Trail Cape Town 1 100 miler onto the field now you'll hear the applause hopefully of the fans there they are applause. gathering uh, just outside the jack black tent now he's got less than 200 meters to go there he's go. flying <laughs> literally <laughs> flying to the finish line Ilof, an incredible race from you a ding dong battle between yourself and he's alexi right and uh, really good he's to see you colors. get that podium he's spot it is very very well deserved and man. congratulations he's going to be very very, very excited about that he's had nothing but good experiences coming to race here in south africa at That's the Rand Mitchell Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town. He's never been off the yes. podium oh and he goodness. is flying to the finish. <laughs> He's well got done, spring Ilof. in his step after <laughs> all of that. 22, 29, 36 on the clock. Unfazed, Elav Olsen, third place today. Nothing wrong with that. You see the founder of Ultra Trail Cape Town, Nick uh, Bornman, there to welcome him home. We're going to get a photograph of him in that finishing straight. Hopefully, you can go and celebrate with the fans in the finishing straight. It's an amazing feeling, isn't it, Em? Yeah, it is, and uh, him rounding out the podium well, here, know, it'll just be an today? extra highlight for him. Um, what a good a couple days. A long night as well. What was it like on Table Mountain last that? night? <laughs> uh, that was pretty special. <laughs> uh, it was rough, but uh, I take it, took it easy, so it was no big deal, uh, really. But uh, the night was uh, awesome. I had... Uh, a wonderful night. Uh, I was never sleepy and uh, I was like super focused all night until Simonstown and it was incredible. 
I also saw uh, what is it called? The caracal? Yeah. Yeah. I saw one of those uh, up uh, Sutter Peak. It was cool. <laughs> That's super cool. And we saw you running through Komiki. You were looking super smooth. Then you had a long beach section, and that's where you seem to move from second to third. But you look super fresh now. How did the tactics unfold? Uh, the tactic was to run, uh, find a steady rhythm, and uh, don't push it too hard too early. Uh, but I, I think I kind of did it uh, from Simon's time down to Kumiki anyway, even though it didn't really feel like it. But uh, uh, up uh, Chapman's peak and uh, the technical part destroyed me. Uh, I was after that was I was never the same. Right. Well, you're a podium finish at third place. We're super proud of you, and uh, thank you for coming to run our race. We look forward to seeing you in the future as well. Yeah, thank you. Well done. Last hand for third place finisher Ila Olsen. All right. Hey everyone, I'm here at Alphen Trail and Mimi Koka has just come through the aid station in second place. There's been a Mick, there's been a, uh, a pass. Camille is now leading. She's a few minutes ahead. She was just in here. Cam and, uh, and Mimi is chugging the Pedialyte. Mimi is taking on salt and soda. It looks like she's really struggling out there. Um, she has been in the lead so far, and it's just been passed by Camille, uh, who came through here just a few minutes ago, looking really strong. There she goes. It was a quick stop at Alfin, and she's off again. Now she's going to head up to the contour path on Table Mountain and drop down into UCT. Ah, take a take a look. She is running really stiff. Third men's in the 100k race. They went up this morning at five o'clock, and they'll be finishing in approximately just over another hour. But you can watch them online as well, track them, and then come back down here to the finish. We'll momentarily... So, Emily, scenes from the finish line, obviously um, something you felt before being on the podium, coming across the finish line. There's something quite special about getting onto that field down at Gardens. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in any race, getting to the finish line is just magnifying. You feel so excited. You don't really believe what you've just done. You see people that you love and... Um, that you support and people who have been out there for you, the trail on, the, been out on the trail for you, um, and just this community. Um, we can see Elof there holding a Jack Black beer. We know that they were all excited for that. <laughs> He's been telling us that in his interviews and <laughs> and more. Um, yeah, I think he has had a good day. And it's been calculated. He's had to work through some things. Uh, he was smart. He. He had someone out there, I don't know if it was a coach or just his crew, but who was talking to him, like making sure he knew what was ahead. This is his finish. I mean, he came in strong. He's so happy to go down that finish shoot. Cape Town is happy that he's there. A big jump over the finish line. Um, that's, uh, that's the way you want to finish a 100 miler. And the first time here in Cape Town, the inaugural 100 miler for Alts Trail Cape Town 2022. Yeah, great scenes here on the finish line and, and, and lots of stoke. He, um, he's such a character and a uh, very capable athlete. We, uh, we knew he was going to be one of the favorites from the get-go. Uh, things not going probably the way that he wanted them to, I guess. But um, nice to see the competition between second and third throughout the day. Yeah, he put himself in a good place. Um, he had to battle um, with Alexi. Alexi, as we said, is very methodical in how he races. Um, so cool to see 
both those guys work together and obviously things they did early on in the race play up at the end. We have the three um, athletes together at the end, first, second, and third. <laughs> An international podium right here. Absolutely. It'll be nice to get a, a photograph of that <laughs> and... Uh, you know, try and line that up for the media. I'm sure lots yep. of media present this year. Really good to see that. We saw that in the question and answer early on uh, Thursday evening. And uh, really nice to see the media cottoning on to this event. It is obviously the showcase event of trail running, probably <laughs> not only in Africa, but uh, obviously South Africa, but Africa as well. And certainly put its name out there and its hand up for international. You know, it really is getting a lot of attention in that space. We like the way that it's actually paving um, the path for other races to be added here in Africa. We know that there was just a hundred mile added in South Africa, I mean in Zimbabwe. I just had the, the race organizers follow me on Instagram through this media. Um, so it'll be fun to find out what that race is about. And now we're back with our podium winners. Yeah, very cool guys. Well done and congratulations. I think uh, they can be very, very proud of what they've achieved here today. Fotos Azimopoulos from Greece in one, Alexei Tostenko in two and Ilof Olsen in three. Congratulations guys. Incredible racing and uh, well done on being uh, and making history. Our first <laughs> three, uh, uh, top three, and our first three names on the podium here for the Rand Major Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town 100 miler. So amazing. Great day out there for them all and standing together, super fun. International field. Super international, super yep. international podium. <laughs> um, much more to come. We've got some updates out there from the women's field Let's in the, in the 100K and then we're gonna kind of build into updates from the men's 100K. We're waiting for the men to come through the University of Cape Town campus where we should have footage of them. But we do know that back from Constantia Glenn that um, Vavara did come through there. She was 20 minutes behind the lead, 13 minutes back on Mimi uh, Kotka, who's in second. So one again, once again, Kemi Bruas, Mimi, Vavara, and then Ekaterina has come through there. She's 13 minutes behind Vavara, 33 minutes um, off of first place. We do have updated splits from Alphen Trail as well. Both Kemi and Mimi have made it through there. Kemi's added another minute to that. She's now 8.12 up over Mimi Kotka. So we'll see kind of, you know, what happens there. It might not be that Mimi is fading. It might just be that Kami is getting stronger. Charging yeah. at the front. I don't, We I think we probably have a few more um, men through nursery um, ravine. It looks like adding to that Drew Holman, Jared Hayes and chasing plaque was Danielle Clausen. Um, but he's now 25 minutes back from the lead. So he's losing a little bit of time to the charging one and two men out there right now. So here we go. Mimi Kotka from Sweden, second place in the women's 100 kilometer. And we have the e-bike on her and uh, we have her in our sight. So hopefully going to get some sort of a uh, feedback from how she's feeling what she's looking like out there we said the gap was about eight minutes did we say eight minutes yeah eight just eight, eight twelve as eight of 12. the most recent aid station yeah yeah so eight minutes and 12 seconds as of the last aid station that of course at Alphen trail and uh, Mimi now working towards that next section and that of course will be nursery ravine it's a 4.7 kilometer section Mimi's moving strong um, Obviously, she's, she's run a lot of miles or a lot of Ks by this point, um, leaning over, and but hopefully she can power up this finish, keep on the chase. She's doing really well. She's had a good day. Yeah, the big question over in the chat as well is where is Seb? <laughs> and he has yet to check in yeah. at that Constantia Glen aid station. My my worry is that he's going to get there and, and be dropping out at that location, somewhere that he probably can drop out. He probably doesn't have to go all the way to Alfin Trail in order to do that, but he is not no longer in the top 10. We do know that he was still out on course leaving um, Hope Bay, but right now um, we've got Daniel Clausen, Matt Healy, Rolio, and Makwanda in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, a good South African contingent. And then um, I think we have a Slovenian athlete, Slovakian athlete. It looks like Roman Bach has withdrawn actually, so I'm not sure why that split came through having him in eighth, but we at least have those 
1 through 8 through X, Daniel Glenn. I mean, yeah, looking at Seb as well, we, we're looking at his chip. He hasn't been updated for 40 minutes, so, you know, we, we've got to wait and see. It's, it's a case of hurry up and wait. Uh, we know what a class act he is. We know what a great athlete he is. So uh, let's just hope that everything's going okay yeah, for him. That, wor that worries me that it hasn't been updated in a while, but yeah. he wasn't in a position where I think there's any easy no. drop point between those two no. locations. So he has to get off of Consentia Neck all the way to Consentia Glen. All right, Mimi Kotka from Sweden in the meantime continues to blaze the trails here at Ultra Trail Cape Town in the 100 kilometer, the eighth running of the 100 kilometer and uh, an event that has made the name and, and taken the flag of the Ultra Trail Cape Town not only around the African continent but around the world as well and uh, good to have her back for the second time. Yeah, it'll be exciting to see um, and interview her and see what she thought of the changes to of the new course um yeah so it looks like that seb did withdraw I, d I think he left hope bay but it sounds like he either came back down to the road somewhere but he has hope bay listed as his withdrawal point so seb is no longer in the men's race okay good to know Thanks so, so safely much. off course that's well the important done. thing to good know good job all right, we're going to go to an interview with Mimi Kotka. We did play this early on in the day, but obviously it's quite relevant now that we have her in second place in the women's race in the 100 kilometer. Let's cut across to Sweden's Mimi Kotka and hear what she had to say ahead of the race this week. My name is Mimi Kotka and I'm an ultra trail runner from Sweden, uh, spending most of my time in the Alps. Uh, I run for La Sportiva and I've been doing this for quite a while now. Um, I ran my first ultra trail back in 2015 in France. Um, I usually race distances that are 100k or longer and I've been here before in 2018 and I've done the uh, 100k so it's going to be cool to return. It's a bit of a different course but it will be good. don't have a uh, classical athletic background. I don't come from track and field. Uh, I have an outdoor background. Been skiing, hiking, uh, free diving, doing outdoor stuff. That has been my life, like with a big passion in my life. Uh, but it's never been competition. It's been for like the beauty of moving in nature. And then when I was uh, a science student i worked so much and i lived in a big city and then just need an easy way to get out um, and i uh, signed up for a physical challenge in sweden and it involved running and i started running and fell in love with trail running and from there just the first race i ran was 30k by chance because it was this challenge i decided on and then someone said oh you should do a 50k okay and i did that and then a few years Later, I uh, I decided that I really wanted to see if I could become a good runner, so I gave it more effort. The last time I finished third, uh, and I had a great time here, but I also struggled a lot with it, with the heat and with the race. Um, so I I hope that I will be able to. Uh, to make myself a bit more proud than last time, actually. Uh, and that's what, what we do in this race. UCT, and it is all happening right here. There's a sense of urgency. Throw to Tony. Okay, let's, let's see. Tony is on the ground there at University of Cape Town. Let's see what Tony has to say. So let's hear what you got to see there. What did you see there, Corinne? That was <laughs> fast. But they you know, know it's one of those things where it was like, 
You make that decision coming in. It's like, yep. you're not stopping. I'm not stopping. Okay, let's be quick. They've got to know that the guys are chasing. They are. They know we're getting updates, and the crews are telling them, hey, the guys are right behind you, right on your tails, Drew and Jared. Um, so these guys were in and out, cooling, going, climbing. Um, it's been interesting to see Dima has kind of been in the lead every time we've seen this section. So he's working really hard. <laughs> uh, we always just think, you know, the person in the front is doing a lot of the work. We know that it is more comfortable for some people to be ahead, some people to be behind. So we don't know what that relationship is out there, but it's been super cool to see. And they're just racing. They're racing so strong. I love it. I love <laughs> it so much. You saw you saw them. The crews were super quick. They threw. They pulled bottles out. They threw bottles in. I mean, Miriam, who you yeah. know, like obviously <laughs> Chamber Dima is also helping Hannes by throwing packs in there. But we're gonna throw it back to Cody, um, who's down there in the field. Go. Cool. Uh, Alfin Trail here. I'm here with the third place female. She's just come into the aid station, and I've seen something that I have never seen before. Her crew just went over to the table and grabbed a handful of salt, and she licked it off of his hand. I think she might be cranking. Trying to get electrolytes as fast as she can. There's a, there's a box of food with some chips and a burger in it, it looks like. She is just pounding the calories. Let's see, what is in there? There's some kind of liquid in that jar. Looks like, like noodles I see on the table with her. She's trying to cover herself nice and cool down before she leaves the aid and she is off she's running out she looks a lot stronger than Mimi who was looking really stiff and sore as she ran out but uh, if Mimi if anything happens to Mimi I think she might be able to catch her even though she was uh, I don't know how far behind her but but there, whoa. but there was a bit of a gap um, this is at uh, 75k, so they've got 25k left. All right, here we go back to the racing for the men in the 100 kilometer side by side, shoulder to shoulder, spurring each other on, feeding off each other's energy, chatting. You can see that they're actually working together, and uh, the sense of urgency, Ems, we spoke about it earlier, but coming out of that UCT uh, aid station, there was a sense of urgency for sure. Yeah, we, we, we know the guys got word early on that they were being chased, and we can see now that they've taken that to heart, and they are racing. They were in and out of the university aid station. They're on their way. They're using this <coughs> smooth running section, um, cheering each other on. It's cool to see them communicate and be out there together. Uh, I love the the camaraderie in our sport and this section really shows it they're climbing up those steps they look like they're running really well too like have <laughs> they run 100k well <laughs> almost 100k they have about 10k to go really strong um looking at the times like they're doing really well they're on top of it uh, i don't think that section early on made a huge difference but at the to same throw time, back, but Jim, saved Jim's him. record is 947 right. or 944 into the race. So yeah. right. what what did we say? They've got 11K left, Yep. 10K, right? We yeah. thought it was going to be, oh uh, yeah, 10K left. We thought there's me about 40 minutes slower. Yeah, about right. That's pretty spot on. Yeah, yep. for sure. Cool to see him start that climb. They're hiking up there. We know that we saw uh, Fotis actually run up this. <laughs> so that was, you know, just impressive on how he was moving. He might have the course record for the day going <laughs> yeah. up Blockhouse. That oh was man. incredibly yeah, that was impressive. Cool. Okay, we got a jog up there now. We know that the urgency's on. They're going to race all the way to the end. Watching these guys work together all day has been super cool. See them, you know, join hands pretty much and go up we can see how they work together how they've built up how they yeah they have that driven moment each right other. Where they're yeah. talking they're For probably sure. sharing intel because they For had sure. all their crews around them and they're like okay what did you hear what did you yeah, hear yeah. okay yeah. this is what we know let's go yeah yeah and we know that Dima's been here a while he's definitely done this section before I don't know if Hannes has um, so maybe Dean was sharing info with him or Hannes saying like I know what this is supposed to be or asking for advice who knows <laughs> Let's get back to UCT now. You see them just breaking through that uh, next little section. Tony McCann with uh, one of uh, the athletes or one of the spectators or seconds at oh UCT. <laughs> Ooh. 
We are here at UCT. We are here with Miriam. She has been cr crewing Hannes all day. Tell me, how is he looking? This is the last aid station before the final stretch home. How's he looking? How's he been doing all day? You know, where do you think his head is at as he heads into those last 10 Ks? He looked very locked in, I think, in the zone. He has been working with Dima for what feels like all day, and I think they're going to work together and to the finish line and see what's happening. But he had some issues with his toe, but they have worked out. He didn't need anything, so I think it was a hot day. He asked for ice a lot, so he felt the heat for sure. But now it's getting a bit windier. Maybe that's good for them for the last push, and then we'll see the other runners aren't in there, so they know they, it's just the two of them and we'll see what happens, yeah. Yeah, they, they have worked really well together all day, really pushing each other on a really tough course. Yeah. It's been a really hot day. The weather's now cooled down quite a lot, so I think that's gonna be yeah. really nice to finish in. We're gonna be... Uh, <laughs> yes, this is uh, Miriam, you are the partner of Janos, actually, one of the Adidas Terex uh, teammates of mine. Um, you are the partner of him and you're going to be crewing him tomorrow, I'm yeah. assuming, as he takes on the 35k. <laughs> yeah. um, and now I'm assuming you're going to head to the finish line. Yeah, and we're going to see Hannes. We have helped him today um, and now we'll see. Also help Dima a bit because they're so close together. That worked out really well for us. And now heading to the finish line and celebrate with both of them. It's, it's the Amazing. Three and and we are going to be no. watching as... 100 kilometer, 100 kilometer, 100 kilometer. Apologies. Both seem to be running really strong races as well. Really working their way up nicely in the field, so yeah. I'm assuming we're going to see them coming through yeah, fairly soon. soon. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest yeah, of the the rest too. of the day. I'm yeah, assuming. All it's <laughs> yes, all the action. You've okay, been in coming. there. Here yeah. they come. Alrighty. So we are welcoming Drew Holman into UCT aid station at the moment. Here he comes, moving really nicely into the aid station. Good job, Drew. Nice work. Looking laser focused. There he goes to his crew, straight to his crew. Old bottles out, new bottles in. They are working so efficiently as he's heading out onto the last stretch. Third place man Drew Holman is into the UCT aid station. Crew knows what he's doing. He's still getting ice on his back. The weather has cooled down quite significantly. Looks like he's opted to not have that ice on his back, rather just to put some water down there. Really cooling himself down, but he's moving very well, very, very well indeed. This crew dousing him in water, and he's off. Up the Cody Reed Memorial stairs. Very nice, very nice. And it looks like we might have someone else coming into the aid station fairly soon. No one yet, no one yet. But we're expecting Jason to come through in a, in a few minutes. He wasn't far behind at Cecilia Forest, um, probably two or three minutes, so they are together. Jared Hazen seems to be coming into the UCT aid station. He comes out very well, made up, uh, made up a couple minutes on uh, Drew Holman. Moving super well, and it seems we have a race for third and fourth. To the aid station, eating food, getting ready. He's moving. This is Jared Hazen. Jared Hazen in fourth place. He said. It seems a real race and a pass for the, the third position here. Drew Holman, Jared Hazen, two feet. All right, so here is the map. This is where they're at. They're at UCT, one, two, three, and four. Dimitri and Hannes through, Drew through, Jared in the aid station at the moment. We're going to cut through as soon as we can back to UCT, and uh, we are now up 
on the way to Blockhouse. This is your leaders, Dimitri and Hannes, making their way up towards Blockhouse. Yeah, so what, the, what, what you need to know at home is that these two men have been running shoulder to shoulder for basically the entire race at this point. We saw them leave the 42 AK... 42k a station together and that has not changed since then we saw drew holman and jared hazen make up ground on these men steadily after that point and then suddenly it was time to push a little bit harder at the front and they have opened up that time again uh drew holman got as close as four and a half minutes or so to uh dima and Hannes at the front and then boom it's now eight and a half minutes back to drew as at this aid station those men got the word and they started pushing <laughs> hard the official split back to jared hazen um he's about he's just over 90 seconds back he's like almost two minutes back from drew that's what drew drew's gonna keep charging yeah but now it's a race for that third place yep. position with only 10k to go in this thing. Things can happen. We saw Absolutely. things happen in the 55k yep. yesterday in a big way. But those two men are pushing hard into that final really hard climb of the course going up Blockhouse. We're so excited for this race. I mean, it is a race. <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> like watching a 5k here. <laughs> just on the trails. All these guys are crushing it out there. Um, super cool to see the urgency, see how efficient they're moving. Uh, I'm excited to you know, have this live feed coming out to everyone around the world. You guys are all here watching this race, sending that energy through. It's fun to watch the chat um, and just see everyone um, here watching it, we wa we've seen lots of Americans wake up and join in. <laughs> um, oh yeah, we're excited you're, you're here for the wake now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drew, Everyone's Drew's waking up. Yeah, Drew's yep. coach is in the chat. David and Megan are cheering <laughs> him on with baby Leo at home. All right, news just in as well. Kerry Ann Marshall has gone through Nursery Ravine, 49 minutes behind Hillary Allen. So just an update there for you on Six the women's more minutes hundred back. miler. Close in, <laughs> close and close. Yeah, we don't know if Carrie Ann will have enough space to catch Hillary, but she's dang going to try. Um, it's been an exciting race. She's run super smart. This is her first 100 miler. She's learned a lot, but she's sh uh, showing that methodic way of racing that she always holds. Um, we're on these guys. They're climbing up to the blockhouse. They're getting close. Dima marching with purpose. Yanis right with him so cool to see these guys work together leading this race they know the guys are right behind them yeah i love this camera option i love the fact that our runner is ahead of them now because you get to see the expression you get to see the body language <laughs> it's a new angle for us we've been watching bums all day so it really is cool to get these new camera angles so the camera crew really thinking on their feet out there and uh, giving us some nice angles but again look at the wind the wind is definitely definitely blowing you can see the shadow coming onto the mountain now so no longer under sun and uh, it's going to start getting a bit cold as they go into the late afternoon early evening as we could see by all their supporters in there right lots of jackets lots of sweatshirts in there the wind is cold it's been kind of overcast you're you're shadowed by by the hillside here it's it's chilly it's gonna be a chilly finish line for these guys absolutely yeah. emily what would you do if you were in this situation you've been running with someone all day you guys have formed some sort of alliance what do you do Wh what is your tactics because at some stage one of you's got to go right right well i mean i've been in this situation not at the end of a race but during the middle of a race and like Corinne said earlier there's still a lot that can happen and even between these two they both know like if one of them falls off has a rough spot in those 10k they'll naturally fall back and it's nothing and she is like gone. they're competitive and they're Com competition but there might also be a point where they're like we're even we've pushed so hard we're pushing each other so hard and they'll just stay together and we'll, it's exciting to see how it works out and if one does fall back or one feels an extra boost of energy and can just sprint ahead that'll be fun <laughs> what happens if it's a tie well, what happens if they then we get a tie. Then what it's a tie. If, get they first. <laughs> if they cross the line hand in hand. It's and, and can they decide that? Can they, between the two of them, say, listen, yeah, this yeah. has been Draws an epic happen. day. Let's yep. get out there. It's going to be a draw. Yeah. Uh, total respect to you. Yeah, totally. It happens. Yeah. Right. But it, it's not often because of the competitiveness between these guys and girls. It happens more often yeah, than you would think. <laughs> really, yeah. 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 I mean, it's not it's not all the time, but it do, it does happen. It's not like an incredibly rare sure. occurrence in our sport. Sure. Um, Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, Just I checking. had to tie early this year with a guy, um, and he waited for me, and we raced the race together. We didn't want to. Either of us didn't want to race on our own. We kind of just ran in together. At the end, we were both dying, <laughs> both pushing each other in. <laughs> it was pretty fun. It's kind of a cool ex experience. Super nice to share it. 
Um, they're so close to the blockhouse. Yeah. We know oh. they can see it. They're yeah. taking every step <laughs> they yeah, can at pace. Looking for shortcuts wherever they can. <laughs> so look at that. 23 hours in the 100 miler. That's 10 hours in the 100 kilometer right now. Tony's got someone with us uh, for us. I think we, we're waiting to see if we can get Tony. Um, Sounds like the link might be down. It might be up. We don't know. Come on, link it up, link it up. Tony at UCT, go. One, two. You guys at me? Cool. Cool, we're here at the UCT aid station. We're here with Mark. He was crewing for Jared Hazen, who has just come through the UCT aid station. Tell us, how's he looking? How's he feeling? Where's his headspace at? Um, it's looking a lot fresher than he was at Hot Bay. I think he was struggling with a possibility of, of cramp. Um, chin was up. Um, took in a little bit of nutrition over here, one or two cokes, and he ran up the stairs. So in much better shape than he was a little while back. I think this terrain suits him far better um, than, than previously, and hopefully he can have a strong finish to the end. Awesome. Yeah, he came through here in fourth place, just two minutes behind Drew Holman, who was here. In place. So it looks like we've got a bit of a battle on our hands for the podium position, third place. Um, you know, the front half of the race, like you said, is a little bit more technical. There's a bit more of the climbing in that part. The second half is a bit more runnable. So you think that this suits him a bit, bit, bit better? I think so. I mean, that's what he told me. I mean, I didn't know Jared up until about a week ago. So I don't know. He was looking forward to this part of the, the course. Uh, um, the up to the one last little, little hump. And yeah, I mean, I think it was about seven or eight minutes between him and the leaders. I guess anything can happen. But the two leaders look very, very, very strong. They do indeed. Dima and Hannes were in and out of here like, like this. Yeah. Um, and it seems they're working really well together. So it'll be interesting to see how Jared and Drew, the two Americans in the field, um, work it out when they potentially come head to head. Absolutely. We are going to be uh, heading to the finish line now. It's going to be a super exciting finish line. Um, who do you think is going to... I don't know about the front two, but I'm really hoping Jared pulls through and uh, manages to get under the earth. So, I don't know, two minutes behind, I think you can do it. But you really were in, in much better shape here than, than earlier. Let's see, it's anyone's game. But all of these races have been competitive. It's good to see. Yeah, it's been an incredible weekend of racing, and we've got one more race tomorrow. Um, very exciting weekend. And, yeah, thanks for so much for joining the, the crewing um, for Jared, it's it's really cool to see the community getting involved with the race as well. You know, there's so many people volunteering and getting involved on the route. You know, I think it's a test testament to how great the trail community here. So, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for chatting to me. Thanks, and enjoy the finish line. Absolutely, we'll do. Right, so here we have the two leaders making their way up to Blockhouse. Corrine, these guys are not giving an inch, are they? Not at all. It's not even if it's giving an inch. It's just this, like, <laughs> this, like, it's, they're both clawing their way up there. There it is, Blockhouse. That's what it's all about, the Blockhouse climb. You can see it right ahead of them. That means that they have ticked another box, and, and the relief must be something quite special. So special, it's super cool. <laughs> we are into... <laughs> yeah, take a minute. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> Hi, um, we have no lights in our studio because load shedding has hit our, uh, <laughs> our lights are out. This is great. Sweet! Hey, hey back lights up back lights. on. We, we have it. magic men working here behind the scenes. Let me tell you, we got backups for backups for backups right here <laughs> in, in observatory at the studio. Well done, guys. So we just lost power, but the guys... Um, are not losing power, didn't even notice that the power flicked out on course <laughs> and they're finishing up their climb, they're about to hit the contour trail and make their way round.
before they drop down to Dead Man Street and to the finish. Absolutely, and 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 just that urgency has not dropped. They really no. have put in a good time. I'd like I'd like to see some splits. I think next year we need to ask for a split up to Dead Man's Tree because Dead Man's Tree is is it's such an iconic point on the route, and and you can see how elevated they are right now. It's their last climb of the of the uh, the race, and uh, from here it's quite a long contour. It's it's you can't underestimate this this contour. It's quite long down to Dead Man's Tree, but from there it's literally home sailing. Yeah, there's some f uh, sneaky little steps up and steps down kind of speed humps um, but they all affect the athletes for sure they're still working hard they know that there are two men chasing them Drew Holman and Jared Hazen are on their tails and chasing hard but these guys are not giving up they have raced so strong they were in and out of the university aid station and they're finishing strong. We also have the ladies behind them, Daniel Klaassen behind them. Um, so all across the board, today has been super exciting. This top 10 of field of athletes is yeah, it's amazing. It's watching <laughs> the men right now. They're kind of trading those leads, right? Dima kind of led the climb. Then you have Hannes now lead, leading this downhill section. You know, it's like wh where are they moving most efficiently maybe, kind right. of being able to pull each other along. Update from the course, though, Kemi Brujas, your leading, your leading lady in the women's 100K race, is still in seventh overall. She has come through Nursery Ravine. Uh, she's 107 back from Dima and Hannes. We'll get a split back to um, Mimi when Mimi gets there. My guess is that it's probably going to be, again, that probably 8 to 12 minutes, right? Eight minutes back at the last one, but maybe 10 or 12 when we get through there. It's kind of cool because it looks like the 100 mile ladies that have all come through Alphen 2 are going to be caught by the 100k ladies <laughs> here quickly get, soon. Get some cheers, which <laughs> yep. is really, really important. Yeah, so the timing on these two races has been epic, perfect. <laughs> um, nice clear trails at the finish for both of the front of the packs. Um, super fun to be out there right now, be an athlete, be us seeing all of this <laughs> watching it we've got we've got pulse pictures out there right now again we were talking about pulse earlier you can see how fast they're moving down there on the left hand side that's picking up their current pace they're clipping clipping along right there uh, you can also see their elevation you can go to pulse uh, it's ultra trail pulse TV and you'll be able to actually pick up all the cameras that we've had on course you can go back in time <laughs> see where see what you might have missed from one of our cameras it's really really cool because it's overlaid over the racetrack as well so check it out but we've been getting some really excellent photos from our pulse our pulse uh, yeah. GoPro <laughs> athletes chasing athletes this weekend as well yeah, there's certainly been a whole lot of chasing going on this weekend, let's be very clear. And uh, just uh, incredible effort from the community here in Cape Town. We just uh, can't say enough about uh, what they've done and, and what they've achieved in such a short time with this event. And uh, we really are stoked to be able to be a part of it. Just having a look at the uh, feed now, over a thousand people watching. Good afternoon to any of you tuning in. I know a lot of you are getting quite excited about watching the finish of the 100 kilometer. It is the race that set the Ultra Trail Cape Town alive light not only locally but around the world and uh, we're looking at probably about 35 to 40 minutes and uh, these two will be close to the finish line right it's not going to be long um they've got our heart rates up so it better not be long because we're <laughs> super excited they've got the energy and we're going um they haven't just started it but we're going and keeping them yeah. you know motivated sending energy their way uh this race is so cool. It's always been one of my favorite races. And if I wasn't sitting in here, I'd be out there cheering them on. So excited for all the community that that's at the line and with them. Um, the energy has just brought them through all day. Their crews, their crews giving them a heads up on who's behind them, <laughs> who's ahead, um, what's going on. It's nice to have the interviews in the aid station. Thank you to Tony and Cody out on course um, for giving us updates from out there as we can only tell what you can on these videos um, and through the split timers. 
There's the, a battle going on in the commentary as well. <laughs> Tima versus Hannes. No, I can see that. <laughs> there. Truthfully, I can I'm, definitely I'm, see I'm, that. I'm rooting for everyone out there, but there's definitely, it's really, it's pretty funny. It's like, Hannes, your legs are done. Go <laughs> Tima, and vice versa. So we've got some uh, very, some, some great fans. We're keeping, we're keeping it clean. We're keeping it friendly, but uh, it's really cool to see people out there cheering. We've got lots of cheers for the American boys in uh, uh Drew Holman and Jared Hazen as well, who are charging in third and fourth. We'll see kind of how that shapes up. Their next split is going to be at Dead Man's Tree, mm-hmm. and then we're going to have to wait for them to get to that pre-finish, and we're going to, I think, be losing it the entire time. time. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they have, like, 10 cameras on there so we don't miss a yeah, little second. So <laughs> as things freeze, there's a new camera. Because, yep. like, that is the thing that we're battling with, right? Um, over here we do have this crazy thing, the load shedding kind of, like, basically unloading bits of the power grid so there's enough power power elsewhere um and it's uh just kind of a wild system in which the lights just sometimes go out and we're doing our best to continue to bring you the cleanest clearest <laughs> pictures we possibly can swapping out gopro swapping from our our pack runners to our pulse runners to our e-bike <laughs> athletes uh, there will be an e-bike athlete um waiting to pick up these guys i believe at the turnoff to de- at dead men's tree that will put them three kilometers from the finish at that point but oh my goodness the race is alive and well, and the South African representation in this race as well has been stellar. We've got some great stuff happening in the women's 100-mile race. We've got Daniel uh, da- Daniel Clausen, who's doing great things in the men's 100K. Um, he should be coming through, actually, that... Uh, the UCT here in a little bit as well. He'll be trying to rep that fifth place position once again, but he's probably 15, 20 minutes back from those boys that are charging in third and fourth. Absolutely. Nice to see Matthew Healy moving up just a little bit. So he's moved up into sixth position. at the moment. So Matthew Healy starting a little bit of a late charge here. Let's see what he can pull together in the final moments as he gets into those last sort of 15 Ks of the racing here this afternoon. And Ekaterina, so Vivara and Ekaterina have also come through Alphen Trail. Um, so your official women's splits. We'll do official women's splits there because we've got more updated men's field. So uh, updated women at Alphen Trail. Um, Kami Buras, uh, Mimi Kotka, um, one and two, an eight-minute split there. We're waiting for the Nursery Ravine split. That will be critical to understand what's happening there between Kemi and Mimi. And then Vivara and Ekaterina are currently your third and fourth place women in the women's 100K. They are 21 and 34 minutes back from Kemi. To me, that seems pretty steady for the two of them. Their gap between each other actually hasn't changed really at all, but they've both lost a minute or so to Kemi, who's just charging at the front right now. These two are making it very, very very difficult for Drew and Jared to even think of closing the gap right now. Yeah, m- and then Mimi, Mimi Kotka as well. She has come through Nursery Ravine, so we do have that official split. Kemi is charging. That gap is now 11 minutes. So Kemi opening it up. Wow. We should be ha- like sh- Kemi is going to be on her way to UCT before too long because she will likely be um, right behind the South African duo of. Um, Daniel Clausen and Matt Healy. That's right. So uh, these two really just opening up the gas tanks right now and just emptying it. They are doing absolutely everything they can. And you, you just cannot believe that they've run over 90 kilometers already, <laughs> you know, off road, on trail since six o'clock this morning. And here they are galloping at pace towards the finish line. Galloping. I wish I'd kept a diary of all the good words you two have come up with. <laughs> it's been really fun to go through and um, just share that excitement here, get that energy up, inspire us to come up with new words and different words of describing things. <laughs> so you can see the little yellow dot there coming to you here with Pulse. And we've got Tony McCann hopefully going to come through with something for us shortly. But uh, that shows you exactly where both Hannes and Dima are at the moment as they make their way towards that uh, uh, finish line. They'll drop down onto that forest, that uh, tar road as well. And then from there, they're going to push on to Dead Man's Tree. Yeah, the um, I'm pretty sure the camera person persons, because I think there's two of them here um, right now, deserve medals for chasing these guys up through Blockhouse 
and across this bit of terrain. Not easy, um, not an easy zone to uh, be filming in this weekend. So just looking at the visuals now, as they come around the side of that contour path, if we zoom that mountain a little bit, uh, we'd be able to see the finish line uh, there down in the city bowl. You can see that field on the sort of middle right-hand side of the screen. That is a Gardens Tech Rugby Club. So that is the finish. That shows you just how close they are now. And uh, they'll be able to, to start sensing that. And now, you know, like we spoke to Emily earlier, what happens? What do they do? They've been running like brothers in arms now for quite a considerable amount of time. One has got to win, one has got to lose, and, and how is that going to look? How is that going to play out? Yeah, their coaches are on the chat too and giving us input on their feelings on that side of things. <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be a race to the finish. All right, let's go to Tony McCann at UCT for the 100 miler. I think we might have our first lady coming through. That would, that would be absolutely amazing. So Tony, not yet ready, um, but we'll get uh, a big wave we're going to keep think, with these visuals we'll for sure. And uh, just look at this topography, so extreme, so out there, and uh, really, really cool to see. We're able to move this trajectory around, play with it a little bit, just give you a really good idea of, of what it looks like. And uh, you really are up against the elements for sure. So let's go to UCT, Tony. Daniel. That's Daniel Carson. <laughs> 100K. Oh, very confusing. This is Daniel Klassen, the local legend of the... And uh, let's get across to Tony. This is Daniel Klassen of the 100K race. He's a local legend in Cape Town. He is taking on the 100 kilometer race today. He is a, was fifth last year at the race and he is currently lying again in fifth place just a few minutes behind Jared Hazen and Drew Holman you can see they rubbing his legs down with ice to try and cool him down he's got a cracking a Red Bull open good man good man <laughs> You can see he's grabbing some fuel, got some potatoes, got ready for that nasty little climb up to the blockhouse now. It's really loose soil, really steep, and he's in and out of here really quickly. F1 pit stop oiled machine right here. This crew clearly knows what to do. You can see Kane Riley's just sat down there and is giving him a bit of a pep talk as well. Another local champion in the Cape Town trail running community. Yeah, downing a goo, downing a goo, and off he goes. Ready, he's looking super solid. Got some ice in his pack. Last stretch, hat on, and off he goes. Final kiss for his wife, and out they go. And now we are waiting for Hilary Allen, who is going to be the 100 mile lady coming into UCT. She's predicted to be here within the next four to five minutes. We're waiting for her to come. We're going to take a walk down towards where we might see her to come up. But uh, we've just seen Daniel Carson, the fifth man in the 100 kilometer race. We're waiting here now at UCT for Hilary Allen, who is going to be the leading 100 mile lady. We're very excited to see her come through. Apparently it's becoming quite a race between her and second lady, another local runner, Kerry Ann. Kerry Ann Marshall, she's a mom. She's an incredible athlete. So much pedigree. She's got some comrades marathons under her, uh, under 
her belt. So it's super exciting for us to see her absolutely crushing this race. She started out super conservatively and is now doing an amazing job of catching up to Hillary Allen of the USA. But we are here now at UCT waiting for three, three, four minutes. I think, I think we can. All right, so looking to see what's happening here with Demi and Hannes. Uh, great racing there from Daniel Clausen. 32 minutes off the pace at the moment. The first South African male through UCT. Uh, expecting a lot of action to come through UCT shortly and uh, waiting to see what that is going to look like. But Cami Breas, the French lady just doing such an incredible run here today she's been in a class of her own and she is not far behind hillary in the 100 miler so there is a chance she could get very close to hillary coming into uct which means you could have both the 100 miler leading lady and the 100 kilometer leading lady making their way up towards blockhouse together so that's going to make for some exciting times in the next 15 That'll minutes or so for some fun coverage within the university of cape town aid station i think too both their crews working on them both of them working to get to that finish line 11k left for either one of them to traverse at that point but it's going to be intense right now on our screen right that's Dima out front Hannes just in his rear only a little bit you know there is a little bit of a gap opening up here but it's hard from this angle to actually tell what that looks like right these these images that can be a little bit deceiving as far as what that looks like it's, it's a matter of seconds at most curious to know you know is this the move is, right. is this a move in the making? Like we will see, it's kind of a harder flat section to make that move happen on. There's an, and you can see the camera's kind of bouncing around, but you saw some switchbacks to the right. You can see a trail. That's where they're gonna start their down climb towards UTC. Uh, sorry, the gardens, <laughs> the finish line. <laughs> um, so it's super exciting. Like we are saying, we don't know what the move is, when the move will happen, has it happened, what's going on. Um, it'll be super cool to see this image right now so clear you can see where they're running um hopefully they'll switch to the right just a little there <laughs> those switch back to see now you can see them yes. out, out ahead that is their descent yep. down towards the gardens rugby um center there where the big finish line arch is waiting for both these guys. They've put on quite a show. They've been battling, and then they both <laughs> realized at some point in time the charge had to happen. They were able to open up a little bit more daylight over um, third place currently. Drew Holman representing Nike from the U.S., and then Jared Hazen back and forth, and another American representing Solomon running. So really, really exciting at the front of this race. And we don't know yet know what's going to happen. It's which crazy. <laughs> to me it's is crazy. the best kind and, of race and let's possible. And let's just react to what happened yesterday on the 55K in the ladies with Kim and Lundy and how close that racing was. I mean, that was incredible. And it looks like we might have something like this lining up as well. Right. Um, yeah, Kim had a good lead on Lundy and unfortunately uh, had some cramps, dropped back a little. Lundy caught up to her, put it kind of a gap on her um kimmy fought back super hard we had a sprint finish Crazy. i think lundy won by like five split seconds it was incredible such a cool finish um and we have this going on right now we've had these two men working together for most of the day so exciting <laughs> We asked for a race. We got one. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Dima, uh, Dima is not holding back. You can see he's very, very strong, a very powerful runner. Yep. Um, we must remember that coming off these uh, switchbacks, it's going to come down to leg speed because there's that flat section of asphalt as they make their way down to the uh, dead man's tree. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure you know these athletes better than I do, but uh, I, it certainly looks to me like Dima is doing what he can right now to get as far ahead as he can going into those switchbacks. Definitely watching them climb up to the blockhouse. It looked like uh, Yanis was having a little bit of a harder time. I mean, obviously right now he's in second. 
behind Dima, but they've been working together all day. We don't know if they've been switching back and forth on purpose, um, trying to, you know, lighten the load and work together. Um, but it does look like Dima is super strong right now, running strong um, to that turning point to start to switch backs down. Uh, yes, leg speed will count here, but also just their ability to move through those rocky sections. Um, it's downhill. Who can run down fast? Um, stay on your feet and have that little <coughs> dash to the finish too. Um, they're so close. They're both incredibly um, accomplished athletes, have a lot of experience. They know how to race and they're showing us that beautifully here. These trails are just so well groomed and looked after. They can look back and see um, Lion's Head and Signal Hill. They ran around those points this morning. Now they've made the full loop and we're hopping back. There we go. <laughs> Hillary Allen, um, ask and we'll deliver. So <laughs> those of you who are in the chat saying, where are 100K women? Where are our 100 mile women? We've actually had really incredible footage of our 100 mile, mile women for a lot of the day. We've had excellent shots of Hillary. We've had excellent shots of Ragna yep. and Naomi. Um, we actually haven't seen much of Carrie Ann because she didn't move into second until <laughs> Late in the day, yeah. truthfully, she's moving up all day. But um, we've had a lot of signal issues throughout the day. Really, the, we try to put as much live coverage on air as possible. If there's no live co coverage, um, if one of our cameras are down, we can't do anything about it. But right now, one of our pulse runners is following the current um, the current lead in the women's 100-mile race. Hillary has been leading um, from all the day today. She took over the lead er in the early hours this morning um, as she broke away from Ragna and um, Naomi Brandt at that point in time. Um, very solidly out in front, but Carrie, uh, Carrie Ann Marshall is trying to make her way higher, uh, closer. I mean, she's currently in second, but closer to Hilly, if at all possible. I think that, that lead, Hilly's lead was down to about 49 or so minutes, just under the 50-minute mark, and we'll have to kind of see what that looks like at this next aid station as Hilly makes her way to the University of Cape Town, followed by uh, the local the local, um, one of the local favorites, one of the local darlings, um, Carrie Ann and her debut 100 mile race. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Hillary's right at the at the university campus. She has a little run through the campus. I know they keep them high now. We used to have to do a thousand steps before we got to the aid station, um, but it's kind of smooth here, and it we'll get her into the aid station within a few minutes. Um, I'm hoping we get a little update from her crew on how she's feeling. It's hard to tell on the video how well she's moving, um, but it's exciting to see her here. This is obviously a big point to get to. She has one last refueling break, and then she can go. We're back on our leaders in the 100 mile, <coughs> uh, sorry, 100K race. <laughs> and they're about to hop down and start their switchbacks before hitting the road. Oh, there we go. First right hand back. turn, down to the switchbacks. It's a little rocky, some uh, big rocky steps. Both of them moving really well. They're right together. Yeah, they're back right together. together. There's no, no they're there's back no together. Any Hannes, need that existed was Hannes yeah. has been like, yeah, is come imaginary. back <laughs> here. I want you. You're not getting ahead of me. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know if you guys are watching this. And again, it's all about dot watching. We know that Mimi was 11 minutes behind Kami at the nursery ravine. But looking at the dot watching right now, it looks to me like Mimi might have found a second win because they are quite close together. Yes, there's a difference in their times and their latest readings, but certainly Mimi is working really hard on the way to UCT. So there's a chance that both of them will get to UCT pretty close together is, is what I'm reading into it at the moment. Not sure if I'm going to be wrong, but certainly that's what it looks like on the dot watching at the moment. So maybe you girls are, are better at that than I am. Go and have a look at it. But that is certainly what it looks like right now. Back to the racing here and look at these two. Mimi and Hannes just at it. Hammer and thong just letting loose putting everything out there right now there's just no hesitation <laughs> whatsoever these guys are all in they are 100 percent committed right now they've done over 90 kilometers you just cannot believe that they are running at this pace yeah they're kind of running scared um it's nice that they actually haven't had an update about where the guys are behind them because they've kept their um, foot on the pedal for the whole time, just kind of running a little nervous that someone's behind them. 
Um, they've both been pushing each other really well, <coughs> and it's super cool to see them run this way all the way to the finish. It was cool because that Constantia, Constantia Glenn, they took a little extra time over they both what did. O yeah. Over both what Drew, Drew and Jared. Jared. They yeah. blasted through there. Right. Um, and we were a little nervous, like maybe they were tired, maybe you know, they'd pushed it a little hard, but they've come back. They took the time they needed and it paid off. Um, they're running so strong. <laughs> it's so cool to see. Hilary Ellen, our leading lady in the 100 mile, are going to be not too far away now from UCT. Just looking at the numbers yeah, and looking where she is. Yeah, she's coming into civilization, civilization. in a big way. That's going to draw get her to the in. Street. She's going to start hearing people. Remember, it's a little downhill as she makes her way to the bottom of the steps and the aid station. So there she is now, and uh, there is civilization. And uh, doing 10 minutes per kilometer she's definitely slowing down a little bit but that's okay she knows what she's got to do now and uh, she really has a substantial lead so great graphics past Madiba Circle now into the UCT precinct and uh, she'll then get up into that aid station proper from there she'll make sure look at the speed oh my word <laughs> I'd love to I'd love to see what if we had pulse on this we would see the th the speed that these guys are doing I mean they are moving right yeah they are <laughs> we know they are yeah this this is an e-bike I'm pretty sure at their side wow and they're chatting look at them yep and we'll try to as as our first as our first woman in the 100 mile race who's going to be at the at present Hillary Allen um, representing Brooks from the US we will probably try to go to a split screen as she comes into the University of Cape Town campus but right now on your screen again is Dima on the right hand side Hannes on the left hand side they have been at the front of the race all day long no, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, to see this sort of footage after 90-odd kilometers is, is spectacular. You can see the e-bike just on the inside right of the picture here, getting ahead at the moment. You can see the runner at the back. We are making sure we're going to try and get you these visuals as often as possible as they make their way towards the finish line. These guys have been fully working together. I'm pretty sure they've picked each other up when they've had lows. You know, the people who've had... Whichever one of them has had a high has carried the other one through in sections. So cool to see this um, teammate type effort working together through this race. It's a it's a tough race. A lot of vert, a lot of change, a lot of different terrain. These guys have been working together the whole way. So cool to see this. And look at our TV runners matching them step for step <laughs> with those backpacks on. I think we've actually got a backup for a backup on the TV runner there. You can see the guy in the blue shorts as well. So, uh, yeah, this is massive. And uh, these are the leading men. Dead Man's Tree not too far away now. And uh, they're on what we call the Tafelberg Road. They'll turn off that to the right-hand side as they get to the big old tree. And from there, exactly three kilometers to go. So let's head across to UCT quickly. Hillary Allen, our leading lady, is going up the steps into the uh, aid station. This is great. Max is there at her side saying, what do you need? What do, what do we have to do at this aid station? Let's do this. He's giving her intel to make sure that she knows what's going on in the field. But I think we've got Tony on the ground. We're going to get to Tony as soon as we can. We have. UCT aid station with her crew. She's jogging it in. Look super good. You can see she got very and There she is. She's having a look at the grabbing some watermelon, having a look at what looks good here. Grabbing some coke, her crew are really. There she is having some, looks like porridge or mashed potato. I would actually assume that's more like mashed potato. Got some coke, getting some fluid in her. She's looking super focused. Hillary's looking. But she's grabbing what she needs and she wants to get in and out of here as soon as possible. Nothing looks like it's going down super easy, but she's 
moving well. She's heading up the stairs, power hiking up here two at a time. She, you can see she's she grabbed a bunch of things at the aid station that she wanted to carry into this final 10k section as she heads into the last stretch towards the finish line at Gardens Tech Rugby Club. 10k is left of the 166 kilometers. What an incredible day she's had. She goes to the blockhouse climb. The final climb of the day. Her crew leading her out there. She looks really focused. Here we go. Corinne, what is happening? What are you seeing? These guys are bolting down this section. Yeah, no, Dima is definitely trying to, to give it what he's got right here. You know, and I think it's like use use what you're good at. Use what's working for you. Use what's rolling. I don't think it's going to be necessarily easy to drop on us right here. Th this is the rockier section of that downhill, but really, really solid. They are making their way all the way down to the finish line. I keep laughing because they keep saying 100 meter men in my ear. <laughs> this is the leaders of the 100 kilometer men with Dima right there, Hannes on his side. Is this gonna be just bridging up to his shoulder? Is this a move by Hannes? They're chatting. They're chatting. <laughs> They're having a great time. Is, is, is it's a long what run. What is going on? Is, is it tactical? This is what we've got to ask ourselves. I mean, we spoke about it earlier, but there seems like a bit of tactics going. Dima definitely opening up. Is it, hey, give me a bit of space. You know, let's not knock each other out on the way down. Yeah, it's just like, it's it's you want to run what's most comfortable for you. There's no reason to there's no reason to lock it up on a downhill if yeah. running, if letting the brakes off feels better. And that's kind of naturally what's going on there. As soon as it flattened out, Han is kind of bridged right back up to him. And then back up at the Ultra Trail, or at the, uh, the University <laughs> of Cape Town <laughs> campus, we saw um, Hillary Allen of the U.S. coming in, um, making her way through that 11K A station really, really quickly. I think she probably knows that Car that um, that Carrie Ann Marshall is moving really well behind her, and they're like, you know what? 30 minute miles faster than a zero minute mile you're taking this snack on the road let's get up these stairs let's get up blockhouse you're on your way home so really really good to see hillary not not waste any time there take her snacks on the road and get and get going so that was really cool to see back at the university of cape town campus now our cameras are going to try their best to stay with dima and hannes as they make their way down to the finish line as they freeze we'll probably jump to other cameras we'll probably jump back on the course we're going to be waiting for kami bruyos to make her way to the university of cape town campus as the leading lady in the women's 100 kilometer race and then we'll be able to follow these women all the way down to the finish line as well so it really is coming alive here. Good afternoon and welcome to the live broadcast for the Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town. You can see the shuffle here of Hilary Allen as she makes her way out of UCT and up towards the blockhouse. You can see the shadow over the mountain now, which means uh, the sun not in their favor. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Uh, what is that wind doing? How hard is it blowing? Is it going to, uh, you know, you don't, the last thing you want is to get cold and get those legs to freeze up. So very, very exciting times and, and the race is now going to change quite a lot for these athletes as they come into this last 11 kilometers she seems to be moving really well she's got the wind at her back which is a good sign but here we go back to the race at the front end these boys are charging they are moving very very fast we're waiting to get those images maybe they're outrunning the signal maybe they're running so fast yeah. <laughs> that they're outrunning the signal but uh, you can see just that little shuffle coming through it's something she's done many many times before and uh, she really is looking good the day's been pretty good i mean the weather right now is perfect <laughs> it might look a little chilly but we are in africa so it's warm air um this is perfect for the guys and for hillary coming in such a fun race we have daniel Claassen between the two at the front and hillary 
We have Drew Holman right behind these guys, and ooh, and Jared Hazen right behind him. <laughs> it's kind of a race. We see Drew; he's at least uh, he's on the last three k run too yeah. down from Dead Man. Yeah. So the race is on. <laughs> For sure. No, he's past Dead Man's tree now, which is exciting. But uh, and trust us, we don't want you to see us either right no. now. Yeah, we no. want live <laughs> images on the screen, but everything is frozen right yeah. now. As soon as we have a live a live image for you, that is what's going on the screen. We promise. Okay? We promise. There we nice. go. There we go. Just give us what you've got, guys. You're doing an incredible job. Keep it going. We into the broadcast now. The crew is working wow. madly behind the scenes here, trying to bring you any form of live shot. This we I don't think I've seen this section yet. We we this saw it from clip. the other angle. Okay. As it, this is what's called the old roads memorial. Unfortunately, about 18 months ago, there was a fire. There was a restaurant up here, a significant place. Go there for afternoon tea. Beautiful place to meet for trail runs. But unfortunately, burnt down about 18 months ago. So that oh, is the awful. Rhodes Memorial, named after Cecil John Rhodes. But uh, you can see now she's moving really slowly, but she's moving forward, and that's what counts right now, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. And uh, we did see just earlier Drew come through Dead Man's Tree. He's closed his gap from eight and a half minutes to six minutes back from those guys. He so is he is fighting, fighting so hard. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying, so trying. just losing it at home right now <laughs> on the <laughs> couch. Just absolute stress monstering. That moment where I thought that Jared had passed him somehow. Yeah, yeah. I think I about gave his coach <laughs> a heart <laughs> attack. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't give coaches a heart attack. No, but as no. soon as we get live images, they are going to you as fast as possible. And we do have good steady images thus far at the finish line so at the very least we will make sure that we hit that finish ramp all the way through um the like the like the village essentially Absolutely. that's set up down and there and our problem is is that Dimi and Hannes are just going so fast right now you right know, you well, gotta understand that well camera's Drew's moving up and down faster and, 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 <laughs> like, and yeah, Drew's going faster <laughs> and, and we're trying to get these images you know it's easy yeah. when they're going a little bit slowly because we can keep up but if they're out running our camera crew well then we've got to send camera crew up from the bottom now right. to catch them from the front right so yeah. that's what's happening at the moment we're hearing it in the back end and uh, we're hoping that uh, our team are ready and waiting <laughs> on the finish line and I can tell you they have been briefed and they have been told and they have been uh, measured and they have been counted and they are ready. They really did a great like job. I'm of not the stressed. You're stressed. The <laughs> yeah, little stressed. Here we go. So the e-bike has gone down. Oh. So this is the Pulse. The Pulse runner has got a GoPro on his head. That's that app that we keep pulling up. He is following Drew Holman. And now the e-bike with that steadier image has come down to catch Drew. He has gone sendy Scooting. over this rocky, yeah. chundery bit Sandy. of road. <laughs> it's, it's a whole bunch of chunder down there. I call those death cookies. <laughs> death cookies. Drew's moving really well. I mean, right in sync, off. if not faster. Breaks are off. Yep, with Dima, Yanis. It's been amazing to see these guys move over this terrain. Um, yeah. So cool. Let's finish this last 3K. I'm not sure if Ultra Trail Cape Town has had a finish like this before. This tight? I this don't deep, know this the tight. Well, well, not for this deep. I think deep, you're right. I well, remember right. they had a tight finish yesterday, exactly. right? But this has been deep. This and has and been for a long time. it's one of those time. things, too, where you have one person off the front. Yes. Not as exciting. This is what's exciting. Yeah. Three, four people, right? Like, duking here. it out all <laughs> yeah. day long. That is what we want. That's what the audience wants. Yeah. So here we see Hillary at the foot of Blockhouse Climb. Now she gets into Blockhouse proper. This is where we see that, uh, what is that walking style called again? It's called the hands on knees shuffle. The hands on knees shuffle. Crouch tiger cutting dragon shuffle. Power That's hiking. That's what I said. Power <laughs> hiking. That's exactly Did what you I said. A power <laughs> shuffle? Not, I thought it was the crouching tiger cutting oh, so dragon. I'm sending you back to mountain bike, yeah. Max. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. Well, at least they're not scooting. That's the main thing. All right. So here we go now. You can see they're choosing a tiger line as they make their way down this uh, sort of eroded, corrugated path uh, down to the bottom. Uh, they'll make their way onto the boardwalk shortly. I'm guessing those are not too far away now. Um, We've had the first two guys come through that pre-finish so okay. we're really close we're almost on that finish line brilliant news so both Dimi uh, and Hannes are on the pre-finish which is uh, very very exciting indeed I'm just moving across to that now they went through the pre-finish in that space um, at 43 so they went through there 30 seconds ago what that means is that they are less than 
probably two and a half minutes, three minutes from the two and a half minutes from the finish line. Are you losing it? I feel like I'm losing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's been, there's been a lot going on. There's been a lot going on. Let's be clear. Thank goodness for colours. All I can say is thank goodness for colours today. Thank <laughs> for colours. What is our prediction? All right. We need to get to the finish line. We need to pick up the final images here of this men's race in the 100 kilometre. It's going to be a dash for the finish. There's no doubt about that. Dimitri and Hannes one and two at the moment. They're going hammer and thong against each other. No one giving or taking an inch. It's going to get well exciting as we get them together and get them onto the finish line. They're going to be moving quite quickly now. They'll go down over those boardwalks. They'll come out of the boardwalks onto the asphalt, out of the park, and then across. Here we go. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. We called it. Oh, yeah. it's we called it. Oh, we called it. <laughs> Yes, there we go. Crossing the line oh, together, hands in the air. The it's not a race to the finish. These guys are both oh, champions. Yeah. It's Jack and Neil. Hannes fell over. Dimitri waited for him. Nice. And for the next 50 sure. Ks, these guys have stayed together. So they well have done. chosen to Your cross the finish line together. Hannes and Dimitri. <laughs> In a Go joint oh, course record. Guys, oh, Look at that party. Oh, Finishing my together. goodness. Well done, gentlemen. 10.44.59. Wow. Officially Amazing. on the clock. Congratulations, oh, so cool. Dima. Congratulations, Hannes. Best in second. You don't see that top. Day. Day. Beers in the down. background for these boys. <laughs> Proper comrades in arms. Right. Well done, guys. Uh, Everyone's going to so lose it in the chat because it's so one-sided. Look at the respect. I mean, look at the respect between these two athletes. Unbelievable. The race well done, directed. Ah, Give them accolades. Oh. <laughs> Taking oh. a tie first. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Well, there we go. Dimitri gives you his thanks. And they take their lap of honor. Hannes and Dimitri, <laughs> your RMB UTCT 2022 100 kilometer champions. There they go, getting those high fives, getting those cheers, talking to their fans. What an amazing achievement. Well done, guys. And that incredible camaraderie, they both look so happy, and so they should be. And just six minutes behind. Remember, we still have one position up for grabs. Still third place in the 100K for the men's up for grabs. And at the moment, Looks like it's going to be Drew Holman from the United States celebrating his Thanksgiving in style. So stick around, he'll be here in just over four minutes' time as we enjoy watching these two celebrate their win, their victory. We have, we have the 100-mile uh, one, two, and three men home, and now we have first and second who are now tie first in the 100Ks, safely back at home base. And there they are, our winners. Give them a big round of applause. Awesome work, guys. What a moment watching you come in together. RMB UTCT 100 kilometer. What a fantastic achievement here today. Drew is so close. All right, here we go. We're going to get Corinne to take us through this. Where are we? Uh, so close well, to the we're finish trying. line. We're trying to follow. We're trying to follow Drew into the finish line. There, Drew Holman is making his way to the finish line. Currently in third place. He is going to have less than a kilometer to go at this point. What a race by Drew well, Holman. He was patient early. He and Jared so actually well. ran a lot of the early race together. They were both patient early. They brought a bunch of time back. He's scared. I think he put the fear of God into Dima <laughs> and Hannes. They pushed a little bit harder. He pushed back. Yeah. Ultimately, is going to finish third here on the day. Up above him is Jared Hazen, still chasing on the dirt section of the course. He is charging hard, but it's not going to be enough today. 
to reel in Drew Holman today. We also are going to keep our eyes on the University of Cape Town so that we do not mix Miss Kemi Brios coming through there with Tony as well. So we're going to be doing a lot of crazy things here. That being said, we will get to follow Kemi basically all the way to the finish line. So we promise you we'll be bringing lots of, lots of footage from the lead of our women's 100 kilometer race as well. Currently, Hillary Allen making her way up the climb as the uh, the lower cameras on the guys have frozen. Oh, this is so steep. I'm so sorry, Hilly. It's just like going up Bear Peak. <laughs> you got this. Now we're back with Drew Holman on the tarmac on his way, making, making it into the finish line. What a great day for Drew Holman. Very smart day. His like parents he went out. Here. Yeah. He oh, has yeah, good luck when his parents day. are yeah. there. They've gotten to see him do a bunch of cool races. So happy. They're going to be actually, they're going to hang out in Cape Town for another couple of weeks. They're going, they're going to tour around a bit. So congratulations, Drew. You can rest easy <laughs> on this great third place finish here today. Up through the gate. He's going to look so happy all the way to the finish you're line, Drew. Yeah. And he's been close. He hasn't let yeah. this gap just no. expand, knowing those two to working together. He's chased the whole yeah, way. He, he could have let off way. the gas, yeah. right? He could right. have yeah. safely run for yeah. third. Yep. But instead, he pushed really hard all the way. And I hope he soaks <coughs> up this finish, right? Yep. It's his opportunity <laughs> to kind of let the sh let it shine on him a little bit. It's been a great first experience for him at the uh, Ultra Trail Cape Town. You can see the tablecloth coming over the mountain. We'll get some of those graphics for you. But uh, coming onto the field now, you can see maybe oh, teammates, friends, family course. getting ready to welcome Bloody him home. There's a whole lot of stoke, and uh, he's been rapid. He's, uh, he's been a bit of a weapon today, and uh, he can be very proud of this performance. Well done, Drew. Yes, Drew. Ring those bells. Make great, some noise. Great. Third place. <laughs> what a legend. Just behind first Congratulations, and on the Drew. 10, 50, 41, finishing, you know, just about five minutes back from the lead. He pushed hard all the way to the line to make that happen. Drew's got beer in hand. I'm kind of concerned to have him <laughs> run a victory line holding a beer quite like that. I think he's looking for Jared. <laughs> I think he's going to start shaking it is my, my, my game. Oh, hand. there's Sasha. Congratulations, Drew. Nice work, team. What an incredible run. So we've got Tate and Prince on the finish line with Ryan Scott Sibs there as well. The Welcoming them home, bringing the vibe, bringing the hype, and uh, just uh, letting him enjoy the moment. Hug. It's such a big moment when you come home to an incredible there run. And uh, he can be well proud of himself here today. Time. Congratulations and Five well done, Drew Holman. Time. Let's give him a big round of applause, a big cheer as he returns back to this finish arch. There we go. Congratulations, Drew Holman. So what's really interesting for me now as well is we've got second and third in the 100 kilometer and second and third in the 100 miler for the women, all of within about Drew five minutes of each other going into UCT. Jared Hazen so those America last 11 kilometers are going to be a, a, a cat and mouse game. It's going to be exciting. Daniel Clarkson. Yeah, we Hillary didn't levels, hang out at that aid station at all. I think she just really she wanted knew. to run. Yeah, she knew. We got to finish this thing. Oh, look at the three guys there. I love it so much. They're going to be running Hannes running Dimitri right and Drew, right well done, gentlemen. Morning, Congratulations. They're saying, man, we knew you were Very coming for us. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we were nervous. <laughs> you made us work really <laughs> hard. <laughs> Incredible challenges, these amazing races. Two nights running through. Yeah, they're saying, we were having a nice <laughs> run. <laughs> <laughs> you messed it up for us. Drew looks well, like he's one of the fans that's come through the finish line to say Super well done fast. to the winners. You know? Yeah, no, he, just he's like, okay, what's the up? happiest. You know what I'm loving the most is the Giving a big hug to Mars the there at the finish line. Really showing us what the trail running community because is Because parents about. are there at the finish. That should be me. I think, that's, I think that's Drew's mom maybe at the finish line there. Yeah, mom and dad at the finish line. The whole Holman family. You, looks like Drew's older brother. <laughs> <laughs> he would love to hear that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's buying beers for the rest of the weekend. So there is Jack Davis. Jack Davis seconding him, uh, a local here in South Africa. Jack Davis, a uh, big, big pillar in the community of trail running. And uh, let's not forget this brazen effort from Jared Hazen. He too has put in a solid performance today. Yeah, he's run really, really hard. He didn't let off the gas. He tried. There we go. One, two, and three. Well, one, one, and three. As oh, the one, case one, and three. And now today, Dimitri and Hannes first, and Drew Holman in third place. 
and I think the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to be going back up to University of Cape Town to find Kami Racing. Brios, who should be our leading lady there. Okay, we're actually going to cross the line together. That was so cool to see. I don't think Matt Healy's made it there yet. He's going to be close. He's going to be just ahead of Kemi by the there looks of it. Thank you um, to you, Hannes. So they're not, yeah, they're not quite there yet, but that is who we are waiting on at University of Cape Town. And obviously, local favorite Daniel Klaassen, not far behind Jared Hazen. He's probably about 20 minutes back. So we're going to be able to hustle quite nicely in these closing sort of one and a half to two hours here of the broadcast this evening. So I think yep. that's going to be pretty cool. Timing's been so cool. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of planning in that from the local organizers. You know, yep. The guys here at UTCT really have put in a lot of time. They've had to change the schedule around considerably with the inclusion of the 100 miler For and sure. I think they've done a great job I think having that extra day of racing on the Friday has made a massive difference yeah I think the timing has been perfect too because running that 100k on that last uh, 10k from uh, the university like we saw yesterday in the 55k it can be a lot of chase and pass oh. like getting around slower athletes all of that and today, it, both our 100-mile athletes and our 100K athletes have not had clear to do run. that at all. Clear run. Yeah, yeah. they've had totally clear yeah. openings, as opposed to our 55K leaders yesterday had to make their way through the 23 3K field. Right, and that helps so much, um, you know, letting the races 100%. just happen and no one feeling bad about, like, oh, i got to get by. i got to try and get by without. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to be rude. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah it just lets them race. and. So great. This is perfect. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> so Jared now is just smashing these final few kilometers down towards the uh, start finish. You can see the wind is blowing down there at the start finish, getting some visuals here from our crew. And uh, we're waiting for feedback. We see that Matthew Healy, uh, another South African in the 100 kilometer behind Daniel Klaus. I think he's in sixth at the moment, making his way down towards UCT now. Uh, Kemi Brias right there from France with Mimi Kota, they are second and third, uh, or first and second, should I say, in the in the 100 uh, kilometer. And then, of course, we've got um, the two ladies, the two incredible women that have been fighting it out all day today. And haven't they been incredible? Uh, look, nice to see how they're doing. But Naomi Brand and Kerry Ann Marshall, we haven't had feedback from their tracking devices for quite some time, but we do know that they are close to UCT. So possibly going to get an interview maybe uh, with one of the athletes on the finish line. Uh, we'll wait and see if we can or can't. That'll be Hannes and Dimi, hopefully. But uh, she continues to stagger on getting up Blockhouse. This Blockhouse is difficult at the best of times. And you can see she really is having to dig deep right here. Yeah, for sure. It's a big climb, but it's her last climb of the two days, <laughs> the day, the whole day. 24 hour day she's doing great just has to keep powering up like she's been doing all day she's moving really strong just continuing to take one step at a time really excited to see Jared come in here um, and get with those boys Sorry. Then on you were together. What happened and how serious was your fall? Was it an injury or a technical uh, thing that made you fall? Yeah, um, from uh, I would say K K5, I had really big problems with my toe. It was an injury from UTMB this year and it came back. But then, uh, yeah, the pain was always the same level. Um, I couldn't hold the speed. Dimitri passed me. He was super strong in the uphill i couldn't follow him um in the flat part we moved together in the downhill maybe sometimes i was a little bit faster and then we worked perfect together it was a, a perfect match um and then we've had always a big fight between us and at the last 10k we decided yeah, yeah let's work together um enjoy the day together and finish together that's fantastic. So in the last 10 kilometers, you struck up a deal. How was your experience out there, Dimitri? You uh, know, you've been here for two weeks. You've checked out the course a lot. How did it actually work out on the day? Yes, uh, today was a very beautiful day. Uh, but from the start, I had problem with my muscle. 
Uh, I had the cramps from first uh, downhill uh, after 10 kilometers. My muscle uh, was uh, very hypertonous. Uh, I don't know, maybe my taper is not good for this race. Uh, a lot of jumping all time. Uh, I wanted to stop it, but uh, after 20 kilometers, I think I need try. Uh, after first uh, long uh, lap hill. Uh, was better and after I ran faster and faster after 32 kilometers uh, I think maybe all distance uh, we ran together with Hannes it was a fantastic day I am very happy uh, ran with Hannes for me it's a very good experience yes we ran together we finished it together this is trail running this is friendly sport this is good for our sport I love I love this sport, I love mountains, I'm very happy. Well, it's fantastic to get the analysis from the coach and uh, to see that you're normally competitors and then the you decided to finish together today. It was fantastic to see. Thank you so much for your time and energy on the mountain. We'll see you next year. Yes, thank you so much. Cape Town is a very beautiful place. This race is very wonderful, very good organization. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's a race what you have to do if you're a trail runner. One of the best races on the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so while we kind of listen in a little bit to Dima and uh, and the Hannes at the finish line there, we are waiting for Jared Hazen to make his way into the finish line, but our cameras right now are actually up at the um, the University of, of Cape Town campus. We're kind of splitting between trying to get Cami Bruros as she comes through there and Jared Hazen as he gets to the finish line. So ultimately, we're hoping that we're going to go to a split shot here with uh, with our leading ladies Alrighty, coming so the, in the 100-kilometer women's okay. race um, up at the University of Cape Town so we don't miss them there and Jared the Hazen at the finish line. Finish a strong fourth in the area. men's 100 km race today. Yeah, Jared, we'll, be able to, we'll be able to move over to our better camera here in just a second. Jared moving in strong. He's raced just as hot as the three guys ahead of him. It's been a day for them all. So exciting for us watching, for co you know, commentating. Um, it's just been fire. Here we go. Jared's on his finish. <laughs> you know, I, I think I think it's not the And there that he, he hoped comes. For. He the hard, crowds are cheering. Jared Hazen. In June. He is coming around is into the arena. You guys give him, get those cowbells going, so get them shaking. For like over a decade at this point. He was Only 10 minutes separating him. So good and Jude Holman. Kind of coming, and he's coming, coming back around into that I think final what's going to be a really good 2023. Jared Hazen. Congratulations on an incredibly hard fought yeah, fourth go. place finish here today and a great field. What a brilliant, field. brilliant run from Jared today. Welcome home. Getting a hug from his teammate Drew Holman. Yep, I love that little that little kind of shoulder pat high yeah. five from Drew. They <laughs> shared so hours, many miles 59. together out there earlier today. Right, we really Jared. lucked out today seeing those athletes work together, you know, kind of in pairs. We had the two at the front, Yanis and uh, Dimitri, and then we had Jared and uh, yeah, Drew <laughs> right behind them. Um, then they were yeah, pushing each going. other like we, we haven't another had Thanksgiving it. We wouldn't have had an epic Celebrations day like can be, if begin they the guys been holding out for a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, 100, nice put in 100%. I think hard days you know, work. Seb was the only thing that kind that of was missing in that puzzle. He was kind of the, the clock guy in the middle. Over to <laughs> the mid zone, hours. right? Like he right. was the so one off, off the front duo ahead of that chasing duo. Race. Um, unfortunately, had to withdraw from the race. Maybe that would have been an interesting that factor. Yeah, his day had got a little bit more to plan. We don't know why he withdrew, if it was injury or overheating. We did see a lot of really warm athletes out there today. I think Cody Reed's in there to give him a hug. Cody Reed, Jared Hayden's personal hype man. Here we go. Our highlight reel of the men's 100K finishes. Really cool. I think we were all wondering, was someone going to make that final serve? So Hillary was Ellen is make that still final attack? Front. But I think we all In knew. Well, it was interesting hearing, you know, how they actually linked up. It sounds like they were running together. 
uh, Giannis took a really hard fall and actually couldn't keep up with Dima. And Dima held back for him and they got connected and then worked together all day. And we kind of had that idea. Um, a lot of that has come out, you know, as we've experienced like COVID and things happening where people can't race, you know, all around the world. It's been, we, we love community and seeing these two work together like that today. I think they both needed it. They both wanted it and they made it happen. It's going to be cool to chat with them a little further. Yeah, and you're, you're allowed out. to be competitive and yep. still have that community aspect, and I think that's that perfect merger there. But I think we're, yes, we are with Cami Bruas up at UCT, and we should have audio from Tony on the ground. Yeah. 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 Yeah, she should be 155, the series are completed. But, but what I'm saying, the, the, the person after that guy can't take a long time to get it. That person after you. But now there was a second speed. Yeah, this is Kemi Brios waiting to get, if we have audio from Tony on the ground. She's moving so well, moving so smoothly. Up and out of the aid station, she was here in and out within two minutes and up towards the final climb of the race, up towards Devil's Peak. The wind is pumping up there, so I hope she's ready for that final climb out of the UCT aid station towards the last 10Ks home. Getting here. You do not get a better escort than Kane Riley. Cami is going to be safe all the way. You can see Kane Riley onto the camera pack now for that final 11 kilometers, and she is in really good company, isn't she? Yeah, she truly is. She's probably got one of the fastest trail cameramen with her of, of the weekend though to be fair i've been surprised i think yeah. all of our camera cameramen and women we had a, a 14 year old following hillary with one of the pulse cameras earlier today it was quite amazing with that gopro um i can't wait to ask her about that later but yeah kemi bruas right now Great. is your leading lady in the women's 100 kilometer race we will be waiting to get a split back to mimi to see kind of what that gap looks like it's kind of been extending a little bit over the last 40K, but it's, it's not it's not growing exponentially anymore. I feel like they're kind of in this solid position. Kemi at last check, I think was about 11 minutes up on Mimi. And then the next question is, I, Kelly Wolf seemed to be struggling, but maybe is like trying to fight her way back a little bit, but we're looking for Vavara in a Katarina in those three and four positions, I think, with Kelly Wolf trying to keep herself in that mix. Super interesting on the tracking. I can't see Vavara's point. Um, on there, so currently it's showing uh, Katarina in third. Um, not sure the details on that. We might just be missing a checkpoint, um, but interesting to watch there. All right, back to studio. We saw Hillary there on the cliff path, on the contour. She's made her way through Blockhouse and now making her way across the contour path down to Dead Man's Tree. So she too has reached another massive milestone on the route. We know how big Blockhouse is. We know what a big mind game Blockhouse is. And she's going to be in a good space right now. Yeah, so here's the pulse runner behind um, Kane as he runs behind <laughs> Kemi Brios. I just double checked our withdrawal list to see yeah. if there was a, a reason why we might be missing Vara Vara on the live tracker and, and she is not listed as a withdraw as far as I can tell. She's not in that withdrawn cool. list. There's one more thing that I can check for us but uh, I'm wondering if that just like those GPS units we trust them only so much I yeah. think. <laughs> um, so it'll be interesting to see if we can re-pull her up Yeah, I 
believe she's still in okay. third position. Oh no, Kane, we just told you how good you are. Come on, bud. <laughs> Pull it together. Keep it rubber side down. We've had enough injured cameramen this weekend. <laughs> so it's the coordinator's fault that we had a crash. <laughs> Don't ever blame the cameraman. All right, so here are the visuals <laughs> of Hillary, and uh, we have uh, seen this visual of her in many different places today, but this has got to be one of the nicest feelings for an athlete. They are into that final five, six kilometers. They're just ticking it over. You can see she's got a new spring in her step. She really is getting that leg speed up. Elbows are nice and high, and uh, she's looking down over the big bowl here in the city of Cape Town, and uh, I'm sure she would have run this before. Uh, I know she hasn't been here before, but this is probably a section she would have run in the lead up to the event, possibly. Yeah, I'm not sure I, I yeah. didn't follow the time here. Uh, Hillary? Hillary yeah. was in Ma Madeira for the week before this, had to be there for a Brooks photo shoot, but I said, that's actually pretty pretty handy because that got you on the right European time, basically. Correct. You know, only had to move Correct. another time hour, bit of time hour, time zone <laughs> to get to to get to Cape Town more or less maybe two um, but I, I think that she was able to get out on bits of the course I don't know if she was able to run this final section I think she actually ran some of the more f like far out sections of the course because um, um, she only had a couple runs to do once she once she arrived here because I think she got in Saturday mm. um, or Sunday so only about a week ahead of the event um, remembering that the 100 mile, mile athlete actually started at 5 p.m. last night Friday evening and they will be running, they'll be athletes out there for 45 hours, finishing at 2 p.m. tomorrow, Sunday. Excited for golden hour, that final hour of welcoming the runners into the finish line. And right now we're waiting for that split All to right. Mimi Kotka at... UCT. So what might be quite nice as well is Daniel Clarsen, the South African, fifth place in the 100 km. He was fifth year last year and first South African. Looks like he's going to go back to back in that space, but he is now making his way down to Dead Man's Tree. So Daniel Clarsen on the Tafelberg Road. We're going to have a massive roar for him as he makes his way into the finish area at Gardens Tech Rugby Club. But Daniel Clarsen making his way down toward Dead Man's Tree now and hopefully we can catch him at the finish a little bit later. Yeah, I am also still seeing Vara's tracker. Oh, I just lost it. Hold on. I could see her name on the side. I just can't see her dot. I thought I just had it. Oh, nice. I know everyone's excited to have Daniel come in. Off, you know, first South African. The, 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 yeah, her, her, she sh shows up on the side, but her, her position hasn't been updated for an hour. Okay. So that's the question. And it has, and I think it was at, it was at Nursery Ravine that it last, okay, it last ting. So we'll get an Sweet. update at that next aid station. Um, it'll either be she's there, right, or she's not. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> So if this is UCT, we're hearing that there will be coming visuals there at some stage, and, and we're guessing that that is going to be second and third placed women. That should be Kerry Ann Marshall, Naomi Brand. They will be the next two into the UCT transition. So looking forward to seeing them get there. And Mimi Kotka, too, should be pretty close She's going to be that group. in between that group. I 100% agree with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> So the ladies podium in both the 100 mile and 100 kilometer, I'm guessing we should have in place and across the finish line by probably a quarter to seven, seven o'clock this evening. Looking at what we're seeing out there and looking at the time frames that the athletes are taking, uh, which means the broadcast will probably go through to just after seven o'clock this evening for those of you watching and those of you wondering. Yeah, and people are wondering kind of what is going on in the women's race for the 100 mile as well. And let me tell you, we will know as soon as you know <laughs> a little bit because the last checkpoint that we had that we had them going through is the 148 kilometer mark. Um, the other two women chasing, chasing Hilly, the two South African women chasing Hilly have not yet gone through UCT. So as of Nursery Ravine, again, that's the 182 kilometer mark. Um, at that point in time, Carrie Ann had clawed back a little bit of time on Hillary, but it was still about a 49 minute lead for Hillary Allen, followed by Carrie Ann Marshall, 49 minutes back, and then 55 minutes back from Hillary Allen was Naomi Brand. So we're waiting for an updated split at UCT, which um, Hillary left there. It looks like 
about 45 minutes ago. And so we should be getting a split on um, Carrie Ann Marshall and Naomi Brandon in the next, you know, five to 15 minutes or so. We Kelly's got to stay on this path. We just had a little bit of a lean off to the right hand side. Those stabilizer muscles are getting really, really tired. But it is impressive that she is trying to run steps of this climb right here, this kind of climbing traverse section of trail. Yeah, unbelievable. Having a look at both Kerry Ann and Naomi, we haven't had feedback from their trackers for close on an hour, so they they are definitely going to be close to UCT. They can't be far away. We haven't seen them on the withdrawal list either, but uh, if you look at both of their trackers, over an hour since their last update. Yeah, so the GPS, I think, is just having is having problems, right, where we've had load shedding this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Those GPS trackers have to signal to something sure, to signal sure. to us, so it wouldn't be surprising to have issues, I think, with those, with those trackers out there a little little bit but that is what we are waiting to see come on Hillary come on come on come on you've got this you're doing so well it's been an absolute honor to follow you today and we've got such incredible visuals of you on your journey I cannot wait uh, for you to be able to sit down in the next week or so and watch this footage because I think you're going to be blown away of where you've gone and the places you've seen oh it sounds like Carrie Ann Marshall might be coming into UCT right now we're going to see if we can get a live picture yep we're going to uct yes this is carrie ann yes well done girl look at her go unbelievable her first attempt at a hundred miler and she has absolutely nailed it tony mccann right next to her waiting to get us up but we can see sean robson still there in his flip-flops he's been in his flip-flops for 48 hours <laughs> i think at this point he was there yesterday <laughs> looking just like that unbelievable well this done, Carrie Ann Marshall, 100 miler. She is the second lady in the 100 miles race today. Just coming in behind Hilary Allen. She is all smiles as she comes in to greet her family. Her two kids are here. Her husband is here to greet her. Her daughter's handing her some sour cream and chive onions. Mom, why don't you want some sour cream and chive onions, I uh, Pringles? This is Carrie Ann. She's absolutely looking so good. All smiles. She's filling up her water bottles. She's replacing those with fresh ones for this final 10Ks as she heads out onto the contour path after Blockhouse. She's looking good. She's refueling. She's sticking some potatoes in her pockets. Her daughter is trying to give her some Pringles. Loving the Pringles there. It's so great to see the whole family getting involved here. She's got her two children and her husband here to greet her. She's got fresh bottles. She's got some potatoes handed to her. She's all smiles as she's here coming into the aid station. It looks like we've got some We've got, it sounds like we've got the, the second lady in the 100 kilometer race coming into the UCT aid station now as well. So all the things are happening here. What an incredible race. Carrie Ann is uh, curiously looking. so that is you have been asking for her i think she is she looking i think she just <laughs> saw mimi. mimi she was worried yeah, it was yeah. naomi oh my goodness she saw a woman <laughs> coming into the aid station and she said <laughs> <gasps> okay carrie ann i Always think fan smiling. favorite local favorite debut 100 miler get a Me? kiss okay let's go oh go you gotta go up the stairs <laughs> this is the second in the hundred mile race carrie ann marshall oh she forgot a snack gotta take it on the road with you she is 42 minutes now back from from hilly so she took another seven minutes off there yeah. but i don't i don't know that that's going to be enough over the next 10k of the race but congratulations carrie ann marshall you are charging through this field what a day carrie ann is consistently strong like this she has a very methodical way of racing. This is her first 100 miler. She's executed it beautifully. It's going to be fun to watch her finish up this last 10K. Um, she's just going to continue chasing. 
Hillary's continuing <laughs> to race, and there's quite the community of ladies out there on the trail right now. So we're watching Carrie and Marshall leave right now, but I'm wondering if Mimi, uh, if Mimi Kota, if Co Co Kotka, Kotka, Kotka <laughs> is still in that A station or not. It looks like she came through with 11.18 on the clock. The, that gap from Kemi has opened up a little bit more. It's now at 13.18. So Kemi is running <laughs> further away with it, but Mimi's not giving up and she's fighting yeah. hard. She's gonna try to end up one place higher on the podium than she was last time she was here four years ago in 2018. So cool watching Carrie Ann run out of here. She's done this climb a few times before. She knows what Hello, she's in for. Playing. She's still running strong, 100 miles. Um, in her first one, she's moving as quick as if she was just running 100 miles. Uh, Mimi right behind her. Wow. Yeah, so that's what you're seeing on your screen. That was that, was that moment of panic <laughs> on Carrie yeah. Ann Marshall's face. It was like, oh my goodness, Lost someone yeah. is coming for me and that woman is not in her race. No. It is a 100K athlete, yeah. Mimi. They are both second place in their respective races. This will actually kind and of be interesting to see this interaction. Yeah. Well, it's kind of cool because this was the interaction that happened when Mimi got third and Carrie Ann got second and in 2018. But in the 100K. But in the 100K, yeah, Aww. Carrie Ann caught oh, Mimi no, on panic. this section. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 <Deja> vu. Right. <laughs> Except opposite. <laughs> and different races, so it's okay. <laughs> oh. But super fun. Come on. What a champion. Got Let's Hillary go, still Hillary. moving strong. Wow. Looking a little painful there moving, but she's still moving forward. That's what counts. Um, Got the ladies all on the mountain, continuing on their journey. You can hear the ambient noise on the cameras, which is quite yeah. nice. Yeah, that wind. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. And uh, you can just see how windy it is up there right now. Hilly is continuing to fight her way at the front of the 100 mile race right now. This is not a flat section. This is not a downhill section. She is mm -hmm. running every step that she physically can right now because she knows she has to. And it's not yeah. in part because like a 42 minute lead is gonna dissolve just if they are both running. Right. It's the, I've gotta keep running as much as I can because if something happens, I need the biggest cushion possible, right? You never sure. know when you're gonna have to crawl. I definitely have run <laughs> a couple 100 mile races where I thought to myself, I just don't, I just want my legs to keep working. I don't care what happens as long as my <laughs> legs keep working. And I think that's that sensation you get out there where you're just like, you don't know, right? You, right. you hope it's going to keep working, but things can change in an instant out there. Yeah, 100 miles is a long way. Anything can happen. Um, so cool to see these ladies continuing to power forward with everything they've got left. Yeah, Hilly wants to never see another rock ever again in her entire <laughs> life, but I think she's happy that she's no longer on sand. Um, it sounded like uh, she gave quite the interview to Cody Reed earlier today, um, back at the back at the what though I think it was like the 140k aid station or so, where she she uh, was very pro like profuse in her dislike of yeah. uh, her maybe her contempt <laughs> for sand and stones. Yeah, <laughs> and we do think, and we've been hearing from the course, from Tony and Cody, the second half of the race is a little less rocky than that first half. Um, so hopefully that's made her feel a little a little better. Hopefully she's found some nice moments out yeah. there as well. As long as she doesn't take a tipsy off the side of this trail, I think I will, I'm very, I, I, I'll continue to be very happy for her, <laughs> but she is being, she's being pursued by a strong group of South wow. African ladies. Um, I think kind of race favorite Ragna de Bots was the only like big withdrawal from this race. Yep. She dropped out early this morning. Look how windy. She's it's almost getting so blown windy. over in this section. Wow. She's holding her hat on yep. her head. Don't forget Bruce Ornette in the men's race as well. Yeah, big, so big, big, big drop in that top 10 group. What's well, exciting for me as well is to see how strong the women are. Uh, all three of the top three women are inside the top ten in both races. Um, obviously, Hillary sitting in the top four overall, which is absolutely incredible. But a great showcase from the women and, and, and a master class of trail running here for sure over the last 24 hours in the 100 miler and the last 12 hours in the 100 kilometer. 
Yeah, what a, what a hard fought battle. Remember, these athletes have been out there for over 24 hours. The initial predicted time for the women's win here was 23.45, but no, like having looked at the course, having spent some time on some of the train, we were really worried that it doesn't take a lot, a lot longer than that. But right now, it looks like we're still waiting for a split, I believe, from Naomi Brand at UCT. She should be there shortly, but Carrie Ann Marshall, I think, really extended her lead over Naomi Brand on that last section of the course. We'll be getting that update to you for third in the women's 100-mile race just as soon as we can All right, as we wait for that third in the 100K race yeah. at UCT as well. We're hoping as well to get down to the finish line shortly because Daniel Clarsen of South Africa will be the first South African male home in the 100 kilometer. So let's not miss that. He's going to get down to the finish line shortly, just having a look at the moving images. And uh, he really has gone well. So he should be down at the, short, uh, at the finish line. He's going to go through that prelim timing mat uh, very, very soon. Hillary, what are you what are you exclaiming at? She can see where she's going. <laughs> I hope that's excitement. I hope that's I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> I hope that's the, we're going there. Like I finally know where we are. We have made our way around this thing. I can see the light essentially. Yeah. So I think it has. I think she looks like she's moving a little quicker. Yeah, well <laughs> you know, you can you can you finally think you're getting somewhere, I think is what it yeah. is, right? Yeah. True. It's that whole effect of doing intervals. Yep. It's like interval of say you're doing f five intervals. Yeah. Interval three is really, really hard. Yeah. And also you don't really see like down there until you pass just the corner she came around where she exclaimed could actually see yeah you see that you see platter clip you kind of see a little more and so that's definitely possible that she's like okay i'm getting close i can see my turn i can see the switchbacks going down now yeah like you said it's within reach <laughs> i have to keep moving um yeah these trails are beautiful we've said all day the work that's been done of them <coughs> done on them has made it so nice for the runners out there. Um, they've cleared them so well. The timing between the two races. Oh, there's da Daniel coming yes, in. Yes, we got him, to Daniel. His fifth place finish in the 100K distance here today. Fifth place. He <laughs> held his position from last year. Daniel, Fantastic local. Run. Fantastic. <laughs> Great end to the season. Another fifth for him. After a season of dealing with. You know, a, a lot of ups and downs, it oh, sounds like, good. just not being able to get to certain start lines due to injury. Yep. So to, to have another fifth place here in a strong international field so on his hometown trails has to feel good. Absolutely. So African 11 home. hours, 26 minutes, uh, to and about 20 seconds for Daniel Carson. And for quite again, some time a great now, really showcase hard. of ultra of trail of running and just uh, flying the South African flag very high. Well to be done. Patient with. And it's paid its dividends today on the hardest possible conditions there he is Daniel Carson our first South African home most certainly time to put up those feet for uh, that beer I can tell you what, he deserves it. Daniel, end of season race for you. Let us know how much training you put in for this, how much focus you had on this race, this 100K as we just reached first South African and fifth place overall. Thanks so much everyone for the support. Um, it's really a special one to race at home. Um, it's been a bit of a tough season, so really glad to have finished it off at home. I need to give a shout out to the mountain men. I forgot to give them a shout out yesterday. And just thanks to the crew and all the support out there. It's been really a special day. Fantastic. You know these conditions well. This is your backyard. You train on it all year round. Well, it's when you're not in Chamonix. And uh, how did it actually pan out today compared to a normal day's training? Uh, yeah, today was, was slightly challenging. 
I started cramping about 40 k's into the race, so I had to adjust the strategy a little bit. So, yeah, it is what it is. I'm really chuffed with the result. Um, it's my first race in like eight months, so it's really special to finish it off at home. What a legend. Love seeing you do your thing out there today. Go and look at the highlights reels. I'm sure we'll see a lot of footage, and we'll see you here tomorrow for some partying and celebration. Well done, Daniel. Cla Daniel Clarkson, first South African home in the 100Ks. So remember, we still got six women podiums up for grabs this very day, this very evening and afternoon. And that is the 100 miler women, one, two, three, and the 100K women's one, two, and three. Already through UCT and heading toward Dead Man's Creek, we have the... This is Bavara. She is the Salomon athlete. She's taken over from Kelly Wolf, who was running in third place for most of the day, to now she is in third place in the 100 kilometer race. She's moving very well into here. Her crew ready for her. They've got some water. They're going to wash her down a bit. This is Bavara. Incredible athlete, she's had an amazing run today. Started slowly, started a bit more conservatively and has been making her way up through the field. Passing Kelly Wolf and looking so strong. I heard there was some cramps involved, so it sounds like she's maybe struggled with some cramps at some stage, but she looks, she looks like she's managing to take on some food, washing her face, clearing herself a little bit. This is the... Sounds like there are... Th this. It sounds like the th fourth lady is 13 minutes behind her. So we've got a fourth place, a third place lady here with fourth place coming in 13 minutes behind her. You see her crew massaging her legs, trying to work out any any kinks, just making sure that everything is nice and nice and warm there. They're offering her gels, they're offering her fruit. At this stage, it's about getting in whatever you can get in. This far into the race, there are 90 k's in. She's up and she's moving. She's looking good. She's looking focused and ready for the final 10Ks. And she's off. She's off out of this out of this aid station here at UCT. The power hike up out of the, the aid station here. So there we have our third lady coming out of UCT and that of course in the 100k. Vivara Shikanova and uh, she's got 11k's to go. She looks okay. She's come through. She's definitely passed Naomi Brand. Naomi Brand obviously on the 100 miler. She's third in the 100 miler. So um, going to be interesting to see this last sort of hour to hour and a half of racing for the woman. Yeah, we have second chasing second, third chasing yeah. third yeah. in a way, and I don't know if you caught that last, oh, but that Tony on. was saying it sounded like um, from talking to them in Keep the bang. tent there, it sounds like uh, Vavara was having some issues with cramping out on course, but she's running really smoothly right here. So hopefully she can keep that up. Hopefully she can keep the cramps at bay as she makes it up and over Blockhouse. It's kind of that big that big thing coming up ahead of her, looming ahead of her, so to speak. 100%. What you got there, Ems? Have you seen anything that we haven't? No, I mean, just like 12 minutes behind Mimi, um, which we saw yesterday. You know, it doesn't really mean much if something goes wrong up ahead. 
So she, if she can keep moving, she can keep chasing. And that's what makes trail running fun is the race is only over at the finish line. And seeing these ladies move, so impressive, such a cool day. And um, the focus is here. We're, we're here for it. We're here to watch these ladies and bring them across the line. What a day. It's been so cool across the board. We speak about, uh, you know, the athletes and, and what they have to overcome, you know, physically, mentally, but the, the elements are really getting thrown at them. You can see how the wind is really starting to pick up now, and that's going to become a factor later on today yeah. for sure. So the wind is massive. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hillary now getting off that, so she's going to get out of it. But well, no, it sounds like the winds on the road down here are at gale force winds. Oh, at the back end. So yeah. it's on this side. Yeah. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. it's on this side of the mountain. Interesting. All right, so that's going to be interesting to see. But uh, she really is uh, just shuffling her way through. I just cannot believe the tenacity of this human. She really is doing incredibly well. But like we said, a lot of the focus now getting across to the ladies racing. The men have had their turn. Now it's time for the ladies to dance as we go into the next hour to hour and a half of the broadcast, second and third and first in the 100 miler and 100 kilometer are going to get ready to come dancing and mm -hmm. across the finish line. Yeah, and as I said earlier, we don't want you to see us either. We want to show you live images, Correct. but the wind <laughs> is going absolutely bananas out mm -hmm. there. You can see here we've been told that down low on the road that she will cross before she takes that right hand turn at Dead Man's Tree is gale force winds. Gusting. It's gusty. It's going to be hard to, for our e-bike to stay upright. It's going to be hard for our runners to stay upright. It's going to be hard for um, our cameras to get that signal out. So we'll be doing the very best we can to bring you as much live imagery. I think we've survived the load shedding for today. <laughs> Knock on Come whatever on. this table's made Give out of. Give us something else. Just yeah. throw it yeah, at Yeah, the us. load shedding's done, so we'll We're take the scared. gale force winds <laughs> Bring it on. I'm sure Hillary's like, really? <laughs> like, you couldn't wait until I was done? I've been right. through enough already. But I'm curious to know what kind of animals, real or otherwise, she saw out there overnight. She's been out there for tw just over 24 and a half hours right now as she makes her way down to, you know, into the final four Crazy. or five kilometers of this race. Crazy. And inside the top four, unbelievable. She's on those switchbacks as she makes her way down to that Tafelberg Road. And uh, that is where we're hearing that the wind is a proper, proper issue. <laughs> so let's have a look and see how this goes. Obviously, when the conditions get bad, the signal also gets interrupted. So mm -hmm. we're doing our very, very best to bring you those images. But let's have a look and see what that looks like. Waiting to hear from Naomi Brand. Where is she? Why have we not seen her at UCT yet? She should have been through there by now. She must also be battling at the moment. Something has gone wrong with her in the section leading to UCT for sure. She's lost a lot of time to carry on. So listening in the background, I can hear some cowbells. Those obviously, I think, are they at the finish line, do you think? I don't know. Or is I'm that trying going to figure up? it out because where are the f leaders of the 100K as well, the woman? They should be ahead of Hillary, right? You would think so. You would think Cammy. so. Hil Hillary, Hillary made it through that aid station just ahead of Cammy. Of Cammy, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we don't know if Cammy's caught up. We do not know if okay. Cammy's caught Hillary. Yeah. It has not shown on our any of our feeds right. yet. This runner has collected a stick. <laughs> Um, at this point, this is one of the runners that we were following uh, yeah, early. Through, <laughs> through the vineyard. Yeah, he has now collected a stick. And he hasn't stopped at all. He just blasted He's straight through yeah. UCT. Hesitation, devastation. <laughs> he wants to get this party over, and uh, he can see the weather's going to become a problem. But just grabbing hold of a stick to give him just that extra bit of help as he makes his way up now towards the top of Blockhouse. Right. <laughs> Sounds like we may Naomi have... Naomi Brand might yeah. be making her way into UCT here. That would be great if that is the case. So let's wait and see what we can. We've got uh, Tony down at UCT. Let's wait and hear what she's got to say. We're going to hand over now and uh, pick her up as soon as we can hear or see anything. Just waiting. All right. Here we Hilly go. on, on the Tafelberg. road. Yep. That is Tafelberg oh, for sure. Oh, great clear images there. Wow. Yeah. So waiting for stuff from Tony, but right now ha having a look at Hillary Allen on the Tafelberg Road. Here we go, Tony. This is Naomi Brandt. The incredible 
Naomi Brandt back on her home ground with her coach running her into this final eight so session. So it is Naomi Brandt. She's looking very emotional. Making her way into sore, UCT. We so know much she's been grit, battling so with chafing ever since she got down to Comic early this morning. To get this thing absolute done. Absolute warrior. Her coach Aaron Van Eysen of Flat Rock Endurance helping her through this, this section here. You can see them moving smoothly through here. They are. Katarina's there too. Oh. Katarina. All right, we've got to Corinne. Corinne, take it away. We're going to yeah, go to so our voice here. In this A station, we have both Ekaterina, who is fourth in the uh, the women's 100K race, as well as Naomi uh, Brand there, who is third in the 100 mile race. So we've got, we said we had, you know, two ta two chasing two, one chasing one, two chasing two, <laughs> yeah. three chasing three. Now we have four and three in there together. So really, really interesting to see how this plays out. Hillary's moving really well. She's got to be excited to get down this hill. I think she's like, you know what? I don't have anything to save my quads for anymore. <laughs> Might as well let her rip. All in. All in. All no breaks. In. Open it up. Let it go. And uh, she is going to be well excited to get to that finish line today. Make no mistake. She's hopping down that road. She's making it look easy. It is quite quite the road. Here comes uh fourth place in that 100 miler, uh, 100 kilometer, sorry, my apologies. So fourth place in the 100 kilometer in the ladies, uh, Ekaterina Mityeva, I think it is. And uh, she now moving up the uh, Cody Reed steps and getting out onto the course. So we had we had chatter in the in the chat earlier about a huge fire over by the Hut Bay Aid Station. It sounds like that runners the runners that have made it there who the cutoff time there was 4:30, so runners shouldn't be allowed to be permitted to go past that point anyway. Um, so I'm not sure if they're being held there due to the fire held there due to the cutoff, but it sounds like there is a fire over on the Hut Bay side of the mountain. So you can see here Naomi Brand, she is really, really battling, um, but we just know how tough she is. She knows she's got 11 k's to go. If anyone has got a strong head game, it is Naomi Brand from South Africa, and uh, she is in third place in the women's race in the 100 miler. Let's have a look and see how she's doing. And uh, again, oh, just 10 k's to go. She's got this. We know that uh, she is mentally, mentally tough. Nothing is going to stop her from getting through to that finish line. It's going to be a grind. It's going to be tough. But this is Naomi Brand, and she is going to do it no problem. You know her. You've raced against her. Um, I think in 2018 she was in, in the field, was she? I'm not too sure. I know she started UTMB this year um, with me on the start line. Uh, didn't have the best race, or oh, the race she wanted. She had to yeah. pull out. Um, she's had some big travel. She's been working big hours. She's a vet. Yeah. Um, she made the trip over here. She got the opportunity to come home, and now she gets to run home yeah. <laughs> and get welcomed home by her community. That That's what's going to carry her through this section. She's had a big day. And it's so exciting to see her moving, running. Yeah, absolutely. And to see her on the podium would uh, certainly bring a lot of tears to a lot of people because she will most definitely deserve that. Here we go, moving at speed now. Hilary Allen, a front view of her now as the sun starts to just drop over the back of the beautiful Table Mountain. You can see the e-bike behind her, our cameraman running in front of her. So just backing up visuals wherever we can to make sure that we can get you these visuals here towards the finish. She's got three camera crew on her and uh, we're going to do the very best we can to make sure that she gets a hero's welcome as she makes her way down towards the finish line yeah she's picked she's picked up a few people it looks like on the way down kind of the escort service that oftentimes <laughs> follows <laughs> these athletes on their way into town it's always pretty cool to see who's come out to give them a good cheer yeah get get off the rough stuff hill get on the flatter <laughs> stuff oh. You can, oh, you, I think her. it looks like her feet Sore. hurts and it looks like her Ma quads hurt absolutely a lot. Right. Come on, Hilly. How tough is oh, she? Oh, I know. I know. It's all, The rocks are almost over, Hill. You got this. You just she got better be listening to Lizzo in those headphones <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know it's painful. You know it's going to be sore. You know you're doing damage. But what what is driving you? What is what is it that's getting you to that finish line right now? Yeah, I mean, maybe you're doing damage, but not really. She's running well. She's running, you know, in her... 
She's not compensating anywhere. She's moving really smoothly, even weight on both feet. Um, so it's just, you know, you got tired legs. She's going to love the off season, putting her feet up now. It's going to be Christmas time coming up. She's going to be excited. Yeah. It's a sweet Super way for everyone to end the season. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. She has been an absolute workhorse today just moving forward all the time i think we've we've maybe seen her walk a couple of times on, on a couple of those the those second climbs. and third 100 mile yeah we've got all 300 mile females now through absolutely. into the, the last no, no. 10k of the wow. race yeah. that's amazing and the 100 second. kilometer as yeah, well everyone yeah, absolutely that's great we and love that yeah. we love that for them we love that for us <laughs> <laughs> we're a little bit selfish we've yeah. been in studio possibly since 4.30 this morning, um, live with you all since 5.30 this morning. We'll be on air through the top three women in both the 100K and 100-mile race tonight. And then you guys get some golden hour coverage tomorrow as the racers lucky, finish at the 2 p.m. final lucky, cutoff lucky. in the 100-mile race. 100% right. So we will be doing a live stream from venue of the prize giving and the golden hour. It won't be part of this broadcast space, but it certainly will be a live stream on the UTCT uh, YouTube page. Don't miss that prize giving between 12 and one o'clock tomorrow afternoon and the golden hour for the finish of the 100 miler cutoff between one and two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Make sure you get to Gardens Tech Rugby Club and help us celebrate these incredible athletes and this incredible festival and week of running here at the RMB Ultra Trail Cape Town 2020. Don't forget as well, me and Mr. Green, live band for you coming in just after 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. And that'll take us through to the end of this big, big weekend at 6 o'clock. Remember, 5 o'clock, the cutoff for the 35 kilometer tomorrow afternoon. Having a look at the coverage, over a thousand people still with us. So cool to see the fans joining in. Don't forget to send us some messages, uh, check what's going on. But uh, these rocks are too much. I see there's a little message coming through here. There's oh, lots and lots and lots That's of rocks. That's someone who knows too. They're like, those rocks, they're just, they're too much. No, right yeah. <laughs> if they could sell rocks here in South Africa, we'd be a very, very wealthy <laughs> country. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, Haley though, she's making good work of wow. this loose rock section. Yeah. She she's has to be so over it she's right free now. falling man she's just but literally she's got her small no headlamp on wow. she was like we got to get this in before the sun goes down yeah. nice. she's good to go man there will be some 100k ladies who are probably expecting and or hoping to finish before the sun goes yep. down based on previous editions For of this sure. race yep. again almost 12 hours on the clock um in the 100k almost 25 hours on the clock and the 100 mile it is gonna get dark on these athletes out there Potentially. I think that was her last section of the technical rocks. Am I right? She's now Rocky onto this side. contour. From yep. this contour, she's going to push into the park and drop down onto that boardwalk. So right. yep. the technical running and the hard running mm -hmm. and, the, and the stuff that's just pounding those quads is now done. Right. Yep. And then she gets a little bit of pavement. We can see what's left in her quads. Just make sure we suck it all out before she climbs up onto the field and just uses finish line energy that, to get across the line. That's when the lights really cramp. It's trying to get up that little <laughs> like, brick steep section before you hit that grass. Oh and then man. it's like, oh, cool. Now both my legs have seized up and I'm going to crawl my way around this little, this little grass track. That would be right. absolutely awful <laughs> but i've totally been there yeah. i haven't had to crawl but i've definitely been like oh there's 200 meters to go and yeah. now my quad is completely seized up so here she comes <laughs> chasing down towards the finish line i'm very interested to see what's happening with mimi and carrie ann although they're running two different races uh, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see if they take up that yeah, friendship from 2018 at similar paces yeah though. yeah 100 percent right, 100% right. So starting to get onto our computers now mm -hmm. and uh, chasing down the different races, waiting to see what's happening at the pre-finish. We're looking for the name that says Hillary Allen, United States of America, Billy Goat legend. <laughs> and when that pops up, we're going to be excited. Billy Goat? Yeah, the Billy Goat. <laughs> Her nickname's the Hilly Goat. Well, Hilly Billy. <laughs> Eh, I think yeah. the OG is a little bit better. Yeah. He's just the standalone okay, I'll, I'll hilly give it goat. To you. I'll, I'll leave it with you. I'll leave it with you. <laughs> Although hilly goat looked like she was about to take topple <laughs> off that trail at one point in time, and we did yeah. not want to see that happen. No, not so, at all. Kept her rubber side down. It seems she's not. There's some other athletes with some blood on them, but it looked like hilly. All of her skin seemed to be intact at this point as she barreled down that final bit of rock. So, seem seemingly kept it upright. 
And through Dead Man's Trash Tree, Trash. through really Dead Man's good. Tree, what eight minutes ago? So uh, three k's to go from Dead Man's Tree. Probably going to run it around what four, four and a half minutes a k in these last three the k's. The longest three k's of your wow. life. Wow, it's got to be hard, man. It's got to be hard. <laughs> Can't wait to get back to those visuals. We know we're going to have those visuals because yep. we've got the finish line lined up and ready. And um, I think certainly it's uh, going to be up to one of you two to bring her home because uh, she has really done an incredible job today. So really excited to see what that looks like. And then of course to get back to the racing see what's happening in the women's 100 cami brias of france is uh, really working hard and uh, she'll be pretty much i would guess at the top by the blockhouse by now do you think she's up at the blockhouse Emily? um i can look right now not yet. We're picking up some <laughs> extra footage up from the University of Cape Town aid station because I think all of our other footage is currently having a little bit of an issue freezing up. So we'll be trying to pick up Hilly as she uh, hits that final kilometer or so, you know, that, that pre-finish line um, timing map that's out yep. there on her way into the finish line. And then you know, you know you're going to make there it at that home. point. At least you hope you know you're going to make it at that point. Although I think at times it feels a little bit more desperate than that. So packs are down. We're just hearing from the guys, that obviously the battery packs. You know, we were expecting the broadcast to to go through probably to five or six o'clock. It's going to be extended at least by an hour, hour and a half, which means, you know, some of these pack batteries will be in trouble. So uh, we're doing everything that we can to get you the footage. We know that very shortly that uh, uh, our leading lady in the 100 miler is going to get through to the final stages of her race. Such a cool field here, all these ladies racing each other. Um, just a fun final 10K. Yeah, and we should be getting Cammy on her way to Dead Man's. Yeah. yeah. I imagine soon as well. It yeah. looks like she's over the top of the climb and okay. starting down the other side. She's not yet to Dead Man. She's got a little ways to go yet, but it looks like she's over the top okay. of that blockhouse climb based on the Come tracker. on, Kemi. You're having a great race. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, she's just off that turn before she does the switchbacks down to the road section. Yep. Yep. All right, so here's just some of the action from earlier on. Let's yeah. check it out. Yeah, let's make sure that everyone knows this is a replay from earlier in the day. If you were just joining us, this was as um, uh, Dmi Dmitry Mitiev and Hannes Naumberger were one, two, one, two all day long. It sounds like uh, they knew their truce existed before we knew their truce existed. It sounds like Hannes <laughs> took a tumble um, and it ended up finding a way to kind of latch on and work with Dima over the course of the day and they ended up you know just kind of tra trading turns this is actually this is this is way earlier in the day this is that this is that um descent Carpe. off of all off right of, um, but now Southern what we Peak. need to do is we need to get right. to the finish mm -hmm. line because hillary has gone through the pre-finish so hillary allen has gone through the pre-finish pre less than a kilometer to go we, so we need to find a camera down at the finish line to pick up the hilly goat allen as she makes her way into the finish line for a win here wow. at the inaugural utct 100 mile race that's so cool. That's got to feel good. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have day. a great podcast about this. It's yeah. going to be amazing. Wow. <laughs> so just watching these visuals from earlier where these two teamed up, as we said, they teamed up deep into the race. It's not like they said, okay, let's do the last 5Ks together. These guys have been pretty much running together over the top of Clip. I think some sort of alliance was formed as they came down Table Mountain and into Heart Bay, and they've run together the whole day. So to see them come across the line together, pretty, pretty cool in first place. Looking for the finish line now, and we're going to push into that ASAP Leading lady now through the pre-finish, so she will be pretty much close to getting up onto the dance floor at the Garden Tech rugby fields. And yep, she's uh, going to be coming along that tarmac before she takes that hard left-hand turn, so we're going to be trying to flip two, two cameras at the start-finish there. Us first. Go <laughs> there we bye. go. Okay, this Hi is what we're going to be waiting with bated breath for Hillary Allen as she makes her way in for the win here at the UTCT 100 mile race. It looks windy and blustery. Right. 
Yeah. It's Ooh. quite a wild <laughs> finish There's line no right there. To see us. I would rather <laughs> see an empty finish line. Straight to yeah. finish yeah. line. Show yeah. us that empty yeah, finishing we want, we want shoot. We know she's line. there. Yeah. So Let's they already there. She should be very, very close. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those two trying to hold on to the banner. You can yeah. see the wind just really blowing, right? <laughs> All right. So let's get to the start of the finish venue. This is where she left yesterday at 5 p.m. She's been running for almost 25 hours, 24, 53, 59. Wow. We know she's gone through that pre-finish tracker that pre-finish tracker is what just, just over a kilometer from the yep. finish line she went through race. there Price. let me pull up she's going to be any second we've got a visual yes, yes, we've got a visual yes, yes, let's yes. go bring her home corinne bring her oh home oh my goodness Ms. 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 Allen, you they fought through a really here hard finish comes. at utmb the cameras are out there she's got your first hundred mile finish there you wanted a little bit more practice i said this is a pretty good practice run at a hundred mile race you will be the first ever champion she's running her last bend i want to hear those cowbells ringing as we welcome her home Absolute elation, put it on together, well done, Hilary Allen. Look at that smile, the woman is absolutely ecstatic. Well done, Hilary. American yeah. champion, Racha, first lady home and fourth place overall. Happy Thanksgiving to Hilary Allen. What a champion, taking the inaugural r &B. UTCT as well as Red Bull kite surfing there, a little bit of kite surfing. Well done, Harry. What a champion you are. What an unbelievable run. That's it. She is acknowledging the crowds here. Thanking them for their support. Hillary Allen, the champion, the winner. What an incredible run you've had. Finishing in under 25 hours, amazing feats, a whole day out there and night on the mountain. And fourth overall, that is a hell of achievement to be in the top five of a race like this, a field so stacked. Hilary Allen can feel none other than super stoked right now. Hello, we all do a live interview just now, but uh, let us know how you're feeling now as the First Lady's Champion. I'm kind of speechless. I, um, I didn't know what to expect. It's my first time in South Africa, and I think the naivety of coming out on the trails, I've never seen so many rocks and sand. So uh, I'm happy to be done, but it was it, one of the most beautiful races I've ever done. And so hard. <laughs> Super technical. You're looking absolutely ecstatic. And uh, as you say, a hard night out there. What was it like uh, reaching the morning? And when did you decide you had this first place within your sights and fourth place overall? I know. I was trying to catch the men's podium, but they're too far ahead. <laughs> um, but yeah, the sunrise is one of my favorite times of day. But I was really trying to enjoy just every moment in the night because um, you, I mean, I never get to do it. So it's really cool to run throughout the night. And here it was the, the fog rolling in. It was spectacular. We call it a black southeaster. That means you get the wind and a bit of rain. And next year, 2023, backing you for a men's podium. So can't wait to have you back. Well, well done on today's effort. Absolutely brilliant. We've been tracking all the way on the system. I'm sure you're going to enjoy watching a few highlights later on that as well. So well done, Henry. See you next year. Yeah, thank you so much. I can't. Well, give me a minute, and then I'll probably decide to come back. <laughs> we'll try to lock her in right there, but she's too wily for us. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. We'll see you, Larry. One more round of applause in those car balls. Hilary Allen, our champion for 2022, 100 miles. And there she gets her medal. Yes. <laughs> I 
All right, this is just great to see. Emily, take us through this. This is our leader in the women's 100K making her way down to Des Moines Street. Yeah, Cami really wanted to come back to this race. She raced in 2018, the 65K, where she won. She has been dreaming of coming back, and now she is about to hit Des Moines Street, her last 3K down to the finish. Um, she's had a rocking race all day. Um, she's cruising, and she's going to bring us home bring the win. Um, I c I'm sure she's so excited. She knows this step for step all the way into the finish. So excited to see her here. She's had an amazing season. Um, seeing her finish it up here is just going to be so cool. I can't wait to see her smile. Um, she's powering through. She's moving so strong right now. <laughs> yeah, and to kind of follow up what just happened at the finish line, Hillary Allen came in to the, for the win at the 100-mile race. Remember, there are two races going on. Hannes and Dima and Drew Holman, they are in the 100K race. Fotis and Alexi and Elof, they were the top three in the 100-mile race. Hillary has now won the 100-mile women's race. And Kami, on your screen right now, is currently the leader, will likely be the winner of the 100-kilometer race here this weekend. So two different races going on. There's a lot to handle. There's a lot to take in. But that is what is happening before your eyes right now. Absolutely right. And this is, of course, a dead man's tree. You can see it up there. And uh, dead man's tree synonymous with the event here at the Ultra Trail Cape Town. You can see just... Uh so dead man's tree, if you have a look at it, it's called a very... Yes, if you make contact with it, with your with it's eyes, poisonous. it's considerable destruction, yep. with your mouth rash, swelling, peeling yep. a skin. Don't go near it. Don't no. touch it. Don't no. smell it. Don't eat it. Dead man's don't tree. Don't burn it in your firewood don't burn it for your, your fireplace. fireplace or yeah. your barbecue, as you would say. Yeah. Correct. No Correct. more dead man's tree for no you. More <laughs> <dead man's tree laughs> that is where you take a turn, a very important turn in this race, because that means you are 3K from the finish line. All right. Absolutely right. Look at that. And... Um, just, I've got to say again, Ems, we spoke about it earlier, but, you know, the turnaround of the events, you know, before we, we started racing really early on the Saturday morning, right. you know, and, and we finished sort of three, four o'clock on the Sunday afternoon. Now we've got a plethora of races. We've got five different races over the weekend. And, and I think the team at UTC have absolutely nailed the timing. To be able to, you know, you, one thing from a broadcast point of view is you want to have action. You want to have stuff happening all the time. You don't want to have big gaps. Right. And what's been really cool in this last sort of two hours is that we've had everyone that's coming on the podium, finishing on the podium. We've been able to give each one of those athletes that special bit of time. And I think that's really cool. And I think whether it's luck or not, either way, it's damn good planning. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we had to beg the back to, like, play an interview or something so we could eat some lunch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's been go, go, go for the past countless hours. Um, so exciting. The timing has been perfect. Twelve and a half hours. Yeah, wow. twelve we, and a half. We've been half. talking, we've been talking for twelve and a half hours. And we oh, still are awesome. saying semi-coherent words. So Yeah, that coffee is great. <laughs> Maybe too much coffee down there, but it's, things are going well. <laughs> yeah, super cool. The timing's been perfect. Such a nice way to, to for this race to run. I think it um, how the timing's worked out the hot sections of the day, have, you've kind of been closer to the water. And I don't know if that makes a big difference. Um, it has been a cooler day all around compared to past years, um, except last year it was raining and super windy. Um, but on a regular, normal day, it's totally. been a little cooler. But I will say, though, the athletes looked really rough at Hout Bay. Yeah. Wow. So clearly Souther, Souther Peak was hot. Yeah. Still and warm. they looked pretty rough coming into Constantin Glen as well. So clearly that section was, I think, just long probably without yeah. without probably running out of fluids, but also like clearly kind of a warm experience out For there sure. too. But you're For right, sure. not definitely not as hot looking as the 2018 finish yeah. line Absolutely. by any means. And they get to run down right now kind of super nice. This cloud is coming in there in the shadow of Table yeah. Mountain. Getting blown off the trail, maybe not yeah, a highlight. Maybe Maybe not a highlight. Yeah. <laughs> that Glen is definitely a standout for me today. You know, I think it's one of the only yep. places where they're running through the valley, which means they're probably not getting as much wind through there. Here's some of the replays of what's been going if on. If you haven't been with us for 12 and a half hours, <laughs> if you missed it, this is Fotis of Greece making his way to the finish line. That's Fotis Zisimopoulos. I think that's basically how Nailed you say it. his name. <laughs> I'm hoping his fans have tuned out by now. But um, exceptionally good race, led from the lead wire to wire 
Meyer took the win here, set the established the first course record for it, 20, 47, 43. I think that's a pretty solid time for this course. No, I mean, he was just phenomenal, wasn't he? You literally had that, the stars aligned. He had that golden day. He made very few mistakes. We know he had a trouble with his stomach during the night. We saw him coming into Komiki. He wasn't looking great, but he managed to keep on turning it over. And then, of course, Aleski Dostenko. I mean, what more can we say about this guy? He is a silent assassin. <laughs> The so smooth. <laughs> yeah, Alexei looked smooth all day. He and Ilov went back and forth. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Obviously, there were highs and lows out there, but he looked consistent. He looked in control. He was happy to get to the finish line. He was welcomed there by his teammates. Really, really cool to see that finish. A great run for him as well. <laughs> taking a bow and that is so well deserved to to a course like this in these conditions Aww, over that team. distance <laughs> you know i think uh, the athletes and the team uh, team uh, adidas terex can be very very proud of those achievements and then there's this guy and uh, um, again incredible olaf he was definitely going to be one of the favorites Okay, okay. Anyways, we'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Test one, two. We have images. If you do this and our hands are moving, we live. Hi, everybody. No, it's super delayed, though. I would yeah. pause yeah, I it on your screen so it doesn't take energy. Big now we are. Now we are. Now we are online. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but because of the delay, I always just pause it because you'll notice that delay in it if you keep yeah. it on the whole time. For sure, yeah. We are back on. I don't think we have... It sounds like we're back on. They can hear us. We have yeah. audio to the YouTube stream, it sounds like. They can. There's utter panic going on in the studio, y'all. We're going to make it happen. Don't worry. Just hang in there if you can hear us. But, okay, what? for, for those of you that are listening to us, we are recording everything at the finish line. We know that Cami has come in or is coming in, and we will play it back for you as the studio reboots everything rapidly as possible. We've been on load shedding today. We tripped everything at the studio just then. So we'll be getting a playback from the finish line for you. 
right here as we get things up and running again. So bear with us while we work through this technical glitch. It happens. It looks like Cammy's not there yet. She's not through the pre-finish yet, so no. I'm, I'm yeah. trying to check. Yeah. So we I have haven't seen it. her through. goodness <laughs> this is great Hey everybody, we are back and uh, this year a pulse shot. We've got Cami coming through. Cami Brias of France leading the women's 100 kilometer. Uh, we're hoping that you guys are seeing this back home. Unfortunately, a power failure here, total blackout. And uh, we've got our team working behind the scenes, uh, getting everything back online. So hopefully you are getting this. And uh, yeah, Cami's just had a great race today, hasn't she? Yeah, absolutely phenomenal race going on right now. Um, for those of you wondering, too, in that 100-mile race, there's wor worry about who's the overall top South mm -hmm. African. Is it going, who is it going to be? I believe that Carrie Ann Marshall will be the first South African, not just the first South African woman across the Correct. finish line, but the first South African Correct. across the finish line. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The October, November, December beer festival. So Kemi has gone through the pre-finish. Yep. And um, hopefully we're going to be able to get those images too. We will try and record those images if we need to play them back for you afterwards. So stand by with us and uh, keep following us through the website and through the YouTube. We'll get that back to you straight on. on. Here we go. we got some visuals. So here she is now. She's gone across the gap. She's on the road now and uh, moving quite nicely to be honest as she makes her way down you can see the shadows now fully into Cape Town as the sun starts to drop over the back of the iconic Table Mountain one of the seven wonders of the world the e-bike right next to Cami right now and um, you'll see she'll sort of drop a little right hander she'll drop down this hill a uh, car coming so on the go left hand side I think it is and uh, she'll basically take a left at the bottom here She's going to come right onto the field, last little 10 Nathan steps up, up and then Nathan's she'll be in the finish Cowboys shoot. There's a big crowd out at the gardens right Your now, ready to cheer her in. Number one trophy of the day. Last bit of sunshine. So Bring her home in style, people. Oh, yeah, so here she comes. She's making that turn through the gate. She's got to go up this little brick pathway that we joked that we'd all be cramping on for <laughs> sure. She's going to make her way. She'll take a right hand bend and then she's going to run her way through the finish line area, the finish line stadium, the, the finish line village. Technically, <laughs> they started here this morning at 6 a.m. Cami Bruas, Bruas will be your women's champion in the UTCT 100 kilometer event for 2022. The Pulse Runner is going to be one of our best finish line shots right now to get her all the way into the finish line. Cami Bruas, congratulations. Oh, a fist bump. Keep going, Pulse. She's right. also in seventh overall. She's had a super strong day. She's been say. in the top ten overall. Two days ago and now I don't think he day. has any connection to us. Oh. 
No. There we go. Security guard stopped the pulse. Security guard. Give, that, give the applause. Well, come on, Camille. First place in the ladies' 100k. Here we go. All right, so here she Fantastic comes. Start. Congratulations, Kemi. Well Over deserved. Wow. Of the ladies' 100 Ks. And of course, she finished seventh place mm -hmm. overall. High fiving, Stu. What a performance out there. She confirms, yes, it was a hard race. Going in there for the beer handoff. <laughs> Gonna take her medal from Nicholas Rapunga, one of our legends in the game. Tribune. Wow, there we go, an ice cold devil speak out. Hundred miler, what do you think? Yeah, I'm sure she'll put it on. A little bit of sunshine. I think she's only the <laughs> second person to do that. As Camille, the 65k and 100. Yeah, well, you got a second in the 65. I got a second. Ah. From her uh, she won up to you. Oh, she yeah, just, yeah. she just won up to you. Right. Oh. What the heck? I still think you're better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cam Max. Cammy is pretty <laughs> she, nice. Yeah, she's a Quartar rock star. And Fr French, French she athlete, Nova, Solomon athlete. Just Colorado one Templier, another, another. It's an 80, 80k amazing. race in France and about a, a, a month recently. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just amazing. Such a nice person. I just love the the humans we have in this race today. We've got to celebrate them and kind of highlight them today out here. I think that's my favorite thing about sitting in the studio is just gonna say all the good things about everyone <laughs> racing out there. <laughs> And you can see the director of the Iran Merchant Bank, Ultra Capital, Stu McConaughey there, congratulating her. And then uh, you also see the founder of the uh, Iran Merchant Bank, Ultra Capital, Nick Bornman, coming through and congratulating her as well. Well done. We're going to try and get an interview here. Cool. I have a question for you. I'm assuming the prize money will be split with uh, for, for Dima and Hannes. But what about those beautiful trophies? Chainsaw. Uh, those sculptures. Those beautiful sculptures. <laughs> I think the sculpture will remain the same, they might just change the plot. So Kemi on the finish line, um, hoping you're going to be hearing our voices right now. We've uh, bleeded out the mic on the finish line. Look at the wind, gusting. Holy smoke. So trying to get her across to the podium uh, with the backdrop. Perhaps we can get an interview with her. I know possibly either Tatum or Ryan will be there. Flo is trying to wrangle her. It's hard to wrangle anyone after a 100k race. Yeah. So Flo grabbing her there, the athlete manager, and uh, hoping she's asking for something to drink, um, and uh, hopefully getting her across to the stage where we can get an interview with her and uh, find out a little bit more about how her day has gone out on the mountain. Fantastic, and the conditions were quite uh, stringent, are they quite technical? How did you find uh, your preparation for the, for the event? Did it work out the way you wanted to? My preparation was not the, 
Sorry, man. I, I got the studio All right. in my ear, and they were using my camera and my audio. That's, that's, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's cool. Yeah, because the studio is telling me they're on your camera. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go talk to him if you need me to. All right, so. We it's quiet here. <laughs> There's a lot less yelling going on yeah. in our general vicinity <laughs> right now. Crazy, man. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. So I think we are back to studio. I'm guessing that you guys are hearing us. Uh, just had a chat with the girls here. We know that uh, Mimi and Vivara in the 100 kilometer are both past the um, blockhouse making their way down to dead man's tree and uh, they're sitting in second and third katarina sitting in fourth at the moment he has a replay of the finish kemi just soaking it up you can see the sunshine dropping in and uh, making the moment memorable the wind doing a great job as well mimi's through dead man's <laughs> So Mimi Kota is through Dead Man's Tree. That is official, which means Vivara will be close by in the third spot. Katarina waiting to see how she's doing. We saw how strong she was coming out of uh, UCT. And in the 100 kilometer, Kerry Ann Marshall, very close to Dead Man's Tree. So my guess is we're going to see them come through uh, in that order. Um, going to be very interesting to see what happens. But Mimi will come through first in the 100K. My guess from there is that we'll see Kerry Ann Marshall. After that, we will see... Vivara in the 100k and then from there we will have Naomi Brand in the 100 miler that will round out both of our women's podiums here today at the Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town for the 100 kilometer and 100 miler quite confusing I know think of colors red and purple <laughs> and, and we'll that mess that up for sure but we're gonna try we're not gonna to. we're gonna do our best because we haven't been commentating for 29 hours <laughs> <laughs> totally we're, we're doing totally we're doing fine we're, we're doing gonna be great definitely fine no but problem. i will say i think at this point too we, we spent a lot of time with these ladies over the course of i mean starting at 5 p.m last night for our 100 mile runners since 5 30 this morning for our 100k runners i think we'll be able to identify them pretty darn quickly as they make their way um, to the finish line here. Hopefully we'll be picking some of them up at Dead Man's. We do know that most of them are on their way over. They've come over the top of Blockhouse and they're making their way down those switchbacks, those big, beautiful switchbacks, that moment of awe that Hillary had when she realized where she was headed, those exact switchbacks. Down there, they'll hit the road, they'll take a left hand, left hand turn onto the road. It's nuking wind out there and then they're going to take That's a right mad. hand turn at Dead Man's Tree and then 3k to the finish from there no. right? Nothing. absolutely <laughs> mad and they all packed up really nicely for us Yeah. <laughs> time Super check cool. for you Thanks, 23 <laughs> minutes past 6 in the evening as we go wow. into probably what I'm guessing is going to be close to the last hour of broadcast here this afternoon and um, going into the early evening. Uh, those of you tuning in, those of you watching, a very good evening and welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. We apologize for some of the technical glitches in the broadcast that, of course, due to load shedding, which is totally out of our control. Mm -hmm. But I've got to tell you, the day has been nothing short of fantastic. And uh, we're very excited to try and bring you some more images now as we look for second and third in the women's 100 kilometers and second and third in the women's 100 miler. They will all be across the line within the next 45 to 50 minutes. Yes, yeah, so we're going to try to put together some highlight reels for you for things that you might have missed earlier if you're just tuning in with us now. Maybe you had to step away. Maybe you had family commitments. Maybe you were asleep because you're watching from the U.S. <laughs> um, it, is, it is well into Saturday. Maybe you had to step away to go for your long run in the U.S. and you're rejoining us here. Yeah. So try to package it all up for you give you guys some highlights here in just a little bit for anything you might have missed throughout the day nice so kerry ann marshall now also through dead man's tree so mimi and kerry ann are through dead man's tree at the moment <laughs> okay. race time go for it carry on just under four minutes behind mimi they're in different races but as we mentioned earlier 
they had a passing moment in 2018. Uh, Carrie Ann got second, and Mimi was third. And now they've had a passing uh, situation today. Uh, Mimi's overtaken Carrie Ann, and I'm hoping they've had a friendly hi and good job. <laughs> uh, 100K, 100 miler. These small ladies difference. know each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. small difference. Someone's there. been awake for a little bit longer. Little Let's longer, call it yeah. 12 hours or so more right. running in the legs. But at that point, like you, we saw that image, right? We saw the, the look on Carrie Ann's face when she saw Mimi coming up behind her. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take you through some highlights today. And uh, Kareen, I'm going to go straight to you, or I'm not going to go straight to you. I'm going to go straight to me. Uh, me. This is what <laughs> it looked like. And incredible scenes. Hannah Zinnemberger, Dmitry Mityev taking first place in the RMB Ultra Trail Cape Town men's 100 kilometer race. A time of 10 hours, 45 minutes and 35 seconds. These two had been through the trenches together. They really had dug deep. They really had a plan. You, we saw them getting into it, going up Platter Clip after um, Kloof Corner and uh, obviously getting to the top of um, Table Mountain. We never knew what would happen on the new section. We didn't know how long it would take. Turned out it took at least 35 to 40 minutes longer but when they came down into Hart Bay they were brothers in arms and they did not move they were like Bostick they stuck together all the way and you could see they were having a lot of fun yeah for sure we we hear that Dima uh, lent a hand to Hannes and then they kind of stayed together all day they both pulled each other through the low spots through the highs and <laughs> they raced so hard and kept up with each other they decided that the finish together was like the only Good way it could go. Absolutely. Um, we here now with Carrie Ann Marshall, uh, a local here. Not <laughs> this is not a new section for her. She's done this before. Um, this is her first hundred mile though. She's coming in strong. She's had such a good day. She played it so smart from the start. Uh, was behind the leading pack of ladies uh, just smartly moving down moving through and is currently in second with yeah. less than 3k to go to the finish um, she's going to be so happy her kids are going to be over the moon nick her husband has been with her all day um, crewing her and this is her home this is her home trails and um, she does what carrie ann does and she's leading us home to the finish yeah. so exciting to watch her here she seemed <laughs> right to have now. a plan right i mean we saw her coming to komaki she was in fourth place coming down into komaki she looked very controlled and and that's pretty much where she started making a move she got onto the the beach just after komaki onto nurtuk beach what we call long beach yep. and uh, from there we just saw that she started eating away at the time eating away at the time she got in she got past um uh, nicola Krifune, who we haven't heard much of we not sure where she is haven't seen her on the pullout list yet uh -huh. but we know that she's had some troubles then she got up to Naomi Brand got past Naomi Brand going into the Glen uh, section Constancia Glen section and all of a sudden it was game on they were less than five minutes <laughs> apart out of that and uh, she just continues to impress doesn't she yeah just amazing such an inspiration such a great human as we've said all the humans out here today have been really cool to share stories about and highlight um, it's just so fun to get to know I each of them a little better and their crews it's been amazing absolutely right and not long now from what i'm guessing uh, also through dead man's tree is mimi kota mimi kota in the 100 kilometer she's sitting in second place and i think she's actually ahead of Kerry ann so we are following Kerry ann in the 100 miler in second place but we do need to be aware that mimi kotka in the 100 kilometer second place is ahead of her and she'll be making her way down to the pre-finish shortly so you can see the shadows over the path now, the wind blowing, starting to get a little bit cold. You can see that uh, she's timed it near perfectly. She's going to want to get down to the finish line as quickly as possible and get warm and celebrate with her family. <laughs> it's a little windy out there right now, um, but it's perfect. They're in the shadow of Table Mountain. <laughs> she's been running for one day one hour and 29 minutes ridiculous uh, so 25 hours 25 and a half hours such uh, a long time such and a long time uh, a distance pr for her as well i think that that's like once again i think we talked very briefly about it saying you only make that jump once yeah right you know i remember making my first jump my first jump to 100k and then my first jump to 100 miler i went from 50k to 100k 100k big to 100 miler those jump. jumps are Huge. scary and exciting dogs on trail there <laughs> but you know that like that is it, this is such a 
you you only get to do that once. It's your it's your first hundred. That is, I hope that she's soaking it all up. We got to see some sweet moments with her and her family at the University That's of right. Cape Town yeah. campus. That yeah. was cool. That was really really sweet. Yeah. Absolutely. Mom, take my Pringles, please. Have my <laughs> sour cream and chives Pringles, please. No. <laughs> very, very cool. Shame. And again, awesome. people keep wondering, is she the first South African home? Yes. Yes, she will be the first South African home in the 100-mile race. Again, she will be fifth overall in her first ever 100-mile in the inaugural 100-mile here at Ultra Trail Cape Town. That's a pretty impressive 100-mile oh yeah. debut. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That is very, very impressive. Kudos. Kudos to her indeed. So waiting for the pre-finish. We're hoping that it is going to be Mimi Carter on the 100 kilometer. She should be coming down to that pre-finish shortly. Judging by what we know, she is ahead of Kerry Ann on the track, although they're both doing the two different races. So just going to keep with these visuals now. We've got a solid picture for you. And uh, just checking that out. A big shout out. And thank you. Lots of... Uh, Lots of things coming through here. Lots People of messages coming through. People are stoked for Carrie. They are stoked. cheering her yeah, home absolutely. in the YouTube chat right now. We feel that. I think Carrie feels that too. She is going to get a warm welcome. Naomi Brand is going to get a warm welcome. Mimi is going to get a warm welcome. Vavara and Ekaterina are going to get warm welcomes. We are here cheering them all on. The excitement has not ended. <laughs> And rightfully so. I mean, these are just stellar performances. And, uh, you know, 100 miles, that is significant when it comes to distance. It really is a proper, proper run. <laughs> Carrie Ann moving so smoothly again. Did she run 100 miles? <laughs> All right, we need to move to the finish line now, so guys. Well, so we well. need to get to the finish. Mimi Kotka of Sweden. Your second place lady is about to come into the finish line. Yep, waiting for Mimi at the finish line. Yep, the our second place in the women's 100 kilometer race, Mimi Kotka should coat I am going to eventually, <laughs> I say her name all the time and this week on air just can't do it, <laughs> will be your second place finisher here at the UTCT 100K for 2022. This, this is her bumping one step up on the podium. That has to feel pretty good. It's definitely not been an easy day. We've seen blood on her. We saw her lose an early lead. We yep. saw her take a tumble. We replayed that tumble in slow-mo because that's the kind of broadcast <laughs> we are today. Really, really impressive running. We have not yet got eyes on her. Don't worry, Max. Max just ran back into the studio sweating, <laughs> I think, a little bit. But we are waiting for Mimi, Mimi Kota to come to the finish line in second place. So Mimi here for the second time. She's gone one place better. She was third here in 2018. Let's have a look and see what goes on. Yeah, we're kind of we're, we're flip flopping back and forth right now yes. on the show. And right now on your screen is the second place woman in the 100 mile race, Carrie Ann Marshall, running around the corner there. She's being chased down the trail. <laughs> I don't know, but she got out of the way for them. I think that was Vara Vara. Oh, was Va that Vara Vara? Va 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 yes, yeah. okay, Va so what we have right now, we have Mimi on her way to the finish line. We have Vavara on her way to the finish line. That is who just came flying by Carrie Ann Marshall. So we need a camera at the finish line because we are waiting for not only our second place female the 100K, but we are also waiting for our third place female in the 100K who just came by Carrie Ann Marshall there. I thought that that was just some random person out Man. for a really aggressive <laughs> run. This makes no, way more Vara. sense. <laughs> she is absolutely flying. Here comes the pass now. And remember, it is a pass between yep. 100 yep, kilometer Vavara. and 100 miler. So yes. they yep. are not racing each other right now. Yeah, they're not <laughs> racing each other. She's just trying to get to that finish line as well. But she knows Mimi's up there somewhere, right? Yeah. Like she's yeah. chasing someone. Right. And just great of Kerry to be aware of that, to let her through, uh, to know that it's not a race that she's up against. And uh, that was really good to see. Mm. Yeah, if we can get our cameras over to the finish line, we are trying to get footage on our 100k women Mimi's going to be coming into shot shortly absolutely this is Mimi. This, this is our second oh. place 
female in the 100K race. Mimi Kotka, you have put together one wow. heck of a run today. Tough, tough, tough. So Mimi just going through the motions here. She's onto the dance floor at the Gardens Tech Rugby Club. This is the 2022 Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town 100 kilometer in the women's race. It's been a, a incredible day of racing a tenacious day a gritty day and you can see the smile she is absolutely stoked she's going to get across the line in second place ladies and gentlemen mimi kotka take a bow we are incredibly proud of you well done and vivar is only going to be three minutes back i think at the finish line so Mimi wow. was looking over her shoulder, waiting for close the next racing, person to come man. in, but getting a hug from Stu, pretty good. Close, close I racing. she's dirt all over her side there, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. And, uh... Oh, a hug from Cammy. So, for those of you who might not know, Mimi we and Cammy were, were teammates yeah. um, at Solomon before Mimi moved over to La Sportiva. So they, they've known each other for a long time. They both uh, live in France. They spend a lot of time around each other. Back Now our camera is back again with the second place woman in the 100 mile race. This is the first South African athlete to finish in the 100 mile race. She'll be finishing fifth overall, wow. second in the women's field. And Vivara Shikanova is uh, on to the pre-finish mats now, which means that she is now less than a kilometer from the finish. She'll be ahead of Kerry Ann, and we'll be able to see her shortly. So looking forward to that. Yeah, I think yep, she's going to come around the corner for Vivara pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, Vivara's going to be at the finish line yeah. before we know it. So let's keep our cameras down here. And she was moving at pace earlier so as well. So yeah. we and still and one she place she up for grabs in the 100 k and, and that's Vivara. We heard it. Yeah, yeah. The university is she said that she'd been struggling with some cramping in that last section. So, so she really has yeah, recovered. Yeah, you're the third 100-kilometer woman, Vivara. She is going to be making place her way to the finish line. She should be there any moment now. Not being challenged for a podium. But imminently arriving. And then, of course, Kerry Ann as well. Kerry Ann Marshall also about to arrive in second position for the 100 miles. Kerry Ann Marshall, <laughs> unbelievable. It yeah, we kind of need to get to that finish line because Favara's imminently be there. there now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we need we need that finish line shot, finish line cameras. We need to pick up Favara on her way into the finish line for third. And they are there. Got an ear there. They are aware of the fact that Favara will be coming in ahead of Kerry Ann. Picking up some of the ambient noise now coming from the start finish venue at Gardens Tech Rugby Club. Uh, Kerry Ann going down this little uh, incline now, and then she'll turn left and uh, take on that last sort of 200 meters of asphalt before she makes her way to the field. Vivara, though, must be on the field by now. Yeah. Vivara Shikanova must be. There she is. There Let's bring go. her home, Ems. Vivara. A solid performance all day. She's right on the finish. She's got Kane Riley right behind go. her. She now has Vavara all the energy at the Gardens Third Rugby place. Club, bringing her home. Um, she had such a strong finish. We heard she had some cramps uh, going into the Third last 10K, and here kilometers. she goes. She, she ran through that, that, and she's had such today. a strong finish In here. RMB UT 100K. <laughs> 12 hours 35. Wow. Put those cowbells shaking. What a day. In. Put your hands oh together. Finishing out our podium. That's a huge performance. Congratulations. She has to be happy with that. Fantastic run. She is over the moon. Well, well done. <laughs> and so she should be. And uh, Kerry Ann Marshall will pretty much be on the field shortly as well. So I can hear the cameras wanting to get back to that. There she is. Let's bring her uh -huh. home for South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Kerry Ann Marshall. And yeah, she has Kerry got a, such an incredible track record at the Ultra Trail also Cape Town. She is shoot, just a together. pocket a rocket in every single way. Case. We've Maybe spoken I'll about assassins, but she's got to get onto that list today for sure. She just quietly gets Kerry the business Marshall. done, doesn't say much, and just lets those legs speak for themselves. Look at the smile. <laughs> she is going to be so stuck. She's going to come second chance, in the very first Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town 100 miler. Congratulations and, and well done. <laughs> Smiling as only Kerry Ann Marshall can. What a beautiful wow. soul, a beautiful person. Cool. We are just yep. over Ems. the moon. So amazing. She's going to be South over the moon, African her first 100 miler. Like Corinne said, you only make that jump once, you only get one first 100 She's miler. Got her <laughs> She's so her happy. <laughs> yeah, so 
So Thank once again, we just had our top three 100K women finish, our top 200 mile women finish. Again, so Hilly, <laughs> now Carrie Ann Marshall, oh, Carrie Ann with her daughter the there. Uh, again, Carrie Ann Marshall next. finishing fifth Absolutely overall in the women's awesome the 100 mile, finish, line. finish second and in the women's race, and first South they African they home. Is, is unbelievable, unbelievable. Well done, Kirian. We are immensely proud of you. You can see on the right-hand side just how hectic the wind is there. They've taken down mm -hmm. some of that fencing just for safety reasons. But uh, the weather absolutely just blasting through the um, rugby, uh, uh, tech rugby uh, gardens uh, at the moment. So the venue ready now and uh, well done. Absolutely amazing. Just one more athlete to bring across the line now, and that will be third place. Well done, Barbara in third. Just Bola. complete Bola your ladies. Counts, and we've got Camille in first. South African Naomi and Mimi Kotsa, second place. Well mm -hmm. done. First, second, third. Ladies, 100 kilometers. RMB UTCT 2022. <laughs> so Vavara actually closed the gap to be two minutes behind Mimi at the end. Wow. That's, that was <laughs> wow. a lot of ground to make up. Wow. Right. She was pushing that entire time. Incredible. And Ekaterina, I think, I mean, there was some word, too, that Ekaterina might, might, might have been trying to close that gap as yep. well. So Favara was not only trying to catch second, but she was trying to run away from fourth <laughs> there, too. Exactly. That's a good motivator, right, to fight for yeah. that podium spot, to try to make sure it's secure. And after that distance, you know, you're getting into, you're getting into UCT, you're sitting on... Uh, you're sitting on 89 kilometers yep. off of 98 on the day. I mean, oh yeah, racing. I mean, racing really? in the last kilometer really? of 100k or 100 miles, pretty mean. It happens. <laughs> We've seen sprints in the final 300 meters of Western states before. It's, it's not that fun. No, it's wild. It's fun for us. It's not fun when it's happening to you though. <laughs> Just some recap Cammy images Bruce here there on the screen. With the women's win. Yeah. And uh, we've seen some incredible performances. I think it's going to take a while for it all to sink in. But uh, certainly it's lived up to expectation and more, hasn't it? Yep. Yeah, 12, 12, 15, 21 on the clock for Cami Bruas. Well, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. We got the three the ladies. First, the Shaw first the new record McMahon, on the, and they the are new dancing here. The new 100K it, course, absolutely. We'll see what happens yeah. next year, right? Yeah, 100% I mean, right. And, and, and that, unfortunately, is the dynamic of trail running. It's not a road well, race. You know, it changes. And, and that could be due to harvesting. Right that could be due to but, absolutely. But we don't generally, we don't actually generally create new course records for minor changes no, that happen year in and year out. It takes major changes to the Proper. course for, for us to say, hey, we're scr like that. That is the course record for a course that no longer exists. Okay. This is the new course record moving forward. We 100%. don't do that year in and year out. No. It's for when it's it's kind of that designation when like truly like a new a new trail is added. And it's also part of the evolution of the event. You know, the events do grow, and uh, when they grow significantly and they need to breathe, then uh, this is what happens. But look at this, do Mimi Kotka, really incredible it's result for a like second it. here no, today in the Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town, 100 yes, you. kilometer. You taking that step up the podium from 28. You know I'm hoping guy. to hear that she hydrated better this time around. <laughs> she has a lot of dirt on her. I don't know how much dirt she had on her when she finished in 2018, but she definitely took a few tumbles. Here is Mavara's finish. She pushed hard all the way to the line to close down to just a two-minute gap from Mimi by the finish. And all these ladies, uh, all in the top ten, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Amazing. Super cool. And, and to point out, too, she had – she was – Actually, she just she doesn't have a dead man split, so that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it didn't come through. But at, but at UCT, for example, she was so we're gonna do 12 the minutes back from Mimi and closed it from there in 10K. She took two. down 10 minutes. Very it's amazing. Uh, this is your first time in the 100 miler because it's the first time 100 miler. How do you feel about <laughs> podiuming in second place? Um, no, I'm, I'm very happy. Um, I think, yeah, I know it's, it was a beautiful race, very hard. Um, and I didn't really know what to expect. It was my first 100 miler. So I started slow, very conservative. The wind was, was really wild up there through the night. So I just kind of kept it steady. And um, once, and then actually I just kept it steady the whole day because there was a lot of running and a lot of rocks. So, so good. Your first 100 miler, and I saw when you crossed the line, you pointed straight to race director Stu McConaughey, and he pointed back at you. What was that all about? No, Stu. I don't know. Stu and I have a, a good relationship when it comes to these ultras. Um, 
I think a few years back when I did my first 100k, I was doing a comrade's long run with Stu. And, um, and he mentioned his race and I was like, oh, it sounds so good. And that's how I got into doing these ultras. And yeah, so yeah, Stu knows, yeah, so we've just got a good relationship. And actually I went for a run a few weeks ago with Stu just to get some, some 100 miler tips. The Stu ran Western States and UTMB, so he's got, he's got good experience. He certainly has, and uh, champion in the 100Ks, and our second place for the 100 miler, the first one. We look forward to seeing you back again. Well done. Absolutely brilliant performance. No, thank you, and thank you for all the cheers and the shout-outs out there, and yeah, for just an amazing event, so thank you. Well done again. Well done, Jerry. That's good. And so Kerry and Marshall on the finish line, just incredible. You know, you can see the shine in her eyes. There's just a couple, you know, there's humans out there where you just, they just get life. And, and she certainly does. And she just embraces it. Here we go back to the highlights from the men's 100 miler. And uh, this was a absolute showcase for sure. Let's uh, see how that went. Fotis Zizimopoulos of Greece, just clinical ticking boxes all day long, getting that flag as he comes across the line. He led from start to finish, he never looked back. He knows um, he's put together a sound race today. 20 hours, I think 47 minutes, and uh, having some problems coming out of the evening as he got down to Komiki, but really just taking it all in, getting to the end of Newark Beach, feeling much better, and then just opened up an incredible, incredible gap. What a great race from him, and uh, the time just, yeah, amazing. I don't know what else to say. Alexei Tolstenko racing for the Adidas Terex team and uh, also you know going back and forth quite a bit with Ilif Olsen in sort of the middle to end stages but pretty much out of UCT he was on his own good to go and uh, super consistent uh, you guys know him better than I do uh, a great 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 guy yeah uh, super consistent I mean the video we have of him coming into the finish you probably could have switched it with the video we had of him at the start running out the first few Ks and I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference um, just amazing and I love seeing the team all with him at the finish line uh, that's so big he, he loves the team it's so cool to have him a part of the team um, just a great day out there for him I know he'll be stoked here's Elof coming in um, <laughs> the third man to cross that finish line in the 100 mile race I know he really wanted to have a good 100 mile day he had to come through some tough stuff out there um, he had some highs some lows and this finish line was definitely a high for him um, as he gets his second finish here in Cape Town, South Africa. And super stoked to be part of the inaugural very, very first um, 100 miler. Right. <laughs> So exciting scenes there from the men's 100 miler and uh, Ilof just taking it all in. We know that he's really going to enjoy the celebrations here this evening and uh, into tomorrow. There they are, one, two and three. Uh, congratulations guys, Fotis, Alexi and Ilof, well done and uh, thank you for entertaining us over the past uh, 14 hours. Yeah, and right now we are waiting for our third place woman in the 100 mile discipline. It's going to be Naomi Brand the South African athlete, the athlete who, uh, she lives in New Zealand right now. She made the, the trip back over here. She's so happy to be back in South Africa. She's gotten some major cheers from both the audience on the YouTube channel and the audience out there. It looks like she is just cresting that climb before she starts the descent, you know, towards the switchbacks and then Absolutely. Over so dead man street. Not too far from the finish. About, fi about 5k from the finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so looking forward to bringing it home. This year was the men's 100 kilometer finish. These two went deep all day and they spent a lot of time together. Congratulations to both they spent, Hannes Namburger and Dimitri Matthias. Every single Matthew. step of this race together, <laughs> yep. basically. They, they ran, you know, wire to wire, shoulder to shoulder. They're, I mean, they're both insanely talented, insanely strong athletes, and you try to break the other person, and they just don't break, and you both have a good day. You know, Tie this is line. what happens and in a chaotic world. This was a pretty pleasant way for this and, finish and, to play out. And just out. look at that respect. Unbelievable. You know, 
Uh, congratulations, guys. Just looking at that time, 10.45.35 on the new course. And, um, you know, just so good to see them having so much fun on the roof, but just feeding off each other, feeding off each other's energy all day. And, um, and we saw that specifically as they came out of UCT. They're like, listen, we know we're getting chased down. We're getting chased down by this guy from America. His name is Drew Holman. He's <laughs> a weapon. He is go. dangerous. This finish line, I'm not sure if we're going to see their interactions, but it is so, <laughs> so funny. We watched that conversation play out. It was, it was comical. <laughs> and Drew, uh, yeah, I mean, what will can we say such a nice guy uh, had a chat to him at the question and answer session on Thursday evening with uh, the athletes over from America here with his family with his girlfriend I think it is as well and um yeah, I mean, yeah, got hugs from his parents, got hugs from result. Sasha at the finish yeah. line there. They're out there well, crewing him all day. Jack actually is out there crewing him as well, South African local, that's helping right, his Jack family Davis. get around the course. But this this is what it's all about. Yeah, and we're not sure that that is his dad. We think it might just be his older brother. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, either way, I mean, great to get hugs uh, from loved ones on the finish yeah, line. This, this was funny, though, and they had this moment of just like, hey, man, you put the hurt on us. <laughs> and they put really pushed each other to be the best they could be out there today. All three of them, uh, all four of them, Jared, Hazen, two, really stepped up and pushed yes. the three ahead of him. Okay, oh, at Katarina. Katarina coming into the finish. We just watched her husband on that fourth replay finish. Place. She was finishing fourth place today. At Katarina Mitieva of Adidas Terex, fourth place. Fourth place, 100% right. And a great here. run from her. You know, a really good run from her. Yeah. I think she struggled early with some of that heat, but she bounced back strong. Awesome work. Yeah, what a day. She's well been done. chasing hard. She had a hard, she's, uh, she's had an up and down season. Yep. Um, she had a drop out of Ultra Pyrenees in Spain earlier this fall. So glad to see her from the start line to the finish line here with teammates all around her. Dima there, her husband, and that neon yellow Macy, <laughs> who was fourth in the 55K yesterday there, giving her a big hug. Dima and Ekaterina coach him. They're all super tight. Wow, that's a great result for both her and Demo, isn't it? And Kimmy, second place yesterday as well in the, the 55K. <laughs> it's been a good weekend. Well done, guys. So absolutely delighted with that. Big smiles all around. Congratulations. Well done. 12 hours 51.17. Poor. Team, team, team. <laughs> so Oh, Holly's there too. Holly won the 23K yesterday. <laughs> so welcome home, Katarina. We couldn't give her a real welcome because they were busy with interviews inside. Here's that replay of Katarina's finish. She's looking in such a good a form. A hundred kilometers we're waiting down for and dash Naomi for her Brand to finish the 100 mile race. She'll be third there. But here is Ekaterina Mitieva finishing once again, giving us that nice replay of her coming towards the finish the line after being out for a long 100K very, very well effort here medal. today in South Africa. Well done. I'd like to say we all got our money's worth. <laughs> No kidding. <laughs> it's been a wild few hours getting everyone to this finish. Such an amazing day for both the men and the women out here today. So cool. <laughs> Even in this wind, there's still people out there celebrating. It's the best to see the crews celebrate at the finish. Everyone's had a big day. We said all day it takes big a village. <laughs> it takes a village, it takes a team. Yep. Truly. We've seen that with all the helpers out there all day, right? Yeah. All the all all everyone's crews really this Right, is so we're gonna do the post 
race interview with Barbara. It was so good to watch you run out all day. Beautiful evening light. Did you think you were going to go one, two, or three? Talking about light, we on to seven o'clock. We've probably got about. 30 minutes of light left, 30 to 35 maybe. It's going to get dark on our last lady coming in, but we yeah. are here, We're here to bring We're her into the finish the line. line. No matter what. We'll talk rest. sideways and backwards and make things you up. You deserve we rest. You deserve holidays. Into the what finish was your line. experience like out I think she'll be sixth in the 100-mile race. Overall. Overall. Overall yeah. Third in the women's race, Absolutely. second South African home in the 100-mile. This so is replays from last night from the 100-mile yeah, race. Highlights, absolutely right. So some of the highlights coming through over the past 24 hours or so. The start of the race at 5 o'clock yesterday evening, last night. And uh, these um, shots here of our 100-kilometer winner. It is uh, Fotis Zizimopoulos of Greece. And uh, this through the incredible Pulse app. And uh, you can see that Armand actually following uh, Fotis right here. And uh, you can see the reflective tape, you can see the markings coming through and uh, just giving you an idea of how different it is running at night compared to running during the day. So have a look at these visuals. You'll see the Pulse app on the right hand side, those you watching for the first time. Bottom right hand side, you can scan that QR code. It'll take you straight to the Pulse Live.tv site. From there, you can go and watch any of the visuals and any of the sections that we filmed during the course of this 2022 Rand Merchant Bank Alter Trail Cape Town. That yellow dot that you see there, that is where the cameraman is filming photos and that on the earth's surface as it were and you can see them on that contour line on that ridge line on table mountain Try as they make their way through terribly lost in this downhill like here we and, are right here and just crazy through man. the bush look, look at this drop he yeah, sort of comes off here label on and he just now. drops down right it's, it's just mad yeah it is it is mad Maybe it's better to run in the dark because then you just don't see what's out there around you. And this is when, uh, I think this is, they had a porcupine. <laughs> yeah, I think Armand ran into a porcupine uh, out here. One of the guys, yeah, <laughs> yesterday, this absolutely section. right. I think, I think Fotis took a fall and Armand ran into a porcupine. <laughs> I've been told by people in the chat that the porcupines are, are big and scary and they sneak up on you, which are three qualities that I do not look for in critters in the woods. And their quills bang against each other and rattle like this. It's like a... <laughs> uh, it's nope, crazy. No, no, thank crazy. you. Crazy. Yeah, they're bigger <laughs> no, than you think. thank you. <laughs> that and panthers and snakes. Not on my bucket panthers. list. Panthers. <laughs> None of those in Africa. Nut. <laughs> no, I guess you're right. Yeah. He loves all a, a lynx, though, right? Well, like they a small cat? They call it a servet cat, yeah. It's yeah. like a wild cat, which you see a lot of. I think we do also get... Um, you know, smaller versions of, of cats here on the mountain, very seldom seen. Um, well, if they see you, you don't see them. That's the whole point of it. Correct. <laughs> we don't want to see them. Right? They're supposed that's to be like, nocturnal, like right? right. Where you, I, cougars have seen me, but I have not seen them. Look at that. They're going down rungs, like no, ladder rungs on this right here. But also remember, a special permission granted to the race to be on the mountain You're right. at night. They had wanted, in the original course, they had wanted to go down this. And they couldn't. They did not have permission exactly. to do it, so they yep. weren't able to. And then I think when they added the 100 miler, the park was like, hey, let's let's make this happen. And they're like, wait, I want this for the 100K yeah. course. Mm -hmm. yeah. So new addition this year. I think, I'm hoping to hear from the athletes that it was a great new addition because we do have a bunch of athletes yeah. that ran have run on the old course and now have run on this course. Yeah. And I really hope that the that we get rave reviews from all of them out there. Yeah, I'm really keen to catch up over the next, you know, sort of 20 hours or so as we get into tomorrow. I mean, after we sleep, After right? we've had a really good <laughs> sleep and a, and a good feast, I'm guessing. But uh, let's talk quickly about tomorrow because that is important while we continue watching some of these highlights. We're hoping to uh, get hold of Naomi Brand. If we do get Naomi, we're going to switch to her. But tomorrow, don't forget the Kitty Shred event. That, of course, at Gardens uh, Rugby Club tomorrow morning, under 3, under 7, under 11. Bring the kids along and let them come and have some fun. The prize giving will be from 12 until 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. That will be live streamed for those of you that can't catch it, get it on the uh, Alter Trail Cape Town YouTube channel. And then at 1 until 2 o'clock, we will do the golden hour of the Rand Merchant Bank Alter Trail Cape Town 100 miler. That's mm -hmm. the last hour until cutoff, hour 44 to 45 of that race. And then straight after that, we go to me and Mr. Green. We go to a party. We're going to have a lot of fun, and we're going to wait for the rest of those 35-kilometer runners to come home before we end off what has been an, so an incredible So we get to party weekend. until what, like the noise ordinance kicks in? Is that the rule? Well, yeah. 
but maybe technically. longer. Technically. <laughs> technically. Wink, wink, nod, nod. We have yeah, a plan. Yeah, I'm on board. We yeah. <laughs> Some uh, highlights here for those of you that haven't been uh, on tap all day with us on the broadcast and uh, just showing you some of the visuals from this morning on that 100 miler as they came through Komiki. This was, uh, this was that moment this morning where we were like, Fotis looks a little rough. Wow, we thought was Elav, yeah. Elav was running yeah. in second at this point. Elav yeah. looked a little bit spry. So Fotis still good. had his jacket on. Yeah. Clearly cold. Cold enough that his jacket was on under his pack, you know, taking the time knowing that he was going to keep it on yeah. for a while. We were a little bit worried about how that might pan out, but sure enough, the sun came up, he got into Found the his mojo. Mojo right. seemed mm. to come back, stomach seemed to settle down, yeah. and no one no one got within striking distance no. of him. No. I think the closest they got was 23 minutes. Masterclass. Yeah. Absolute masterclass. He was very, Amazing. very impressive. So, yeah, what what a phenomenal run. And again, the prediction was 2035, and we thought that, that was a little bit fast. He ended up running 2047, so I think like... Uh. I think that that's probably uh, pretty spot on for this course. I think that was a really, really solid run on it. Yeah, I think we've. I think. I think over the new courses. Remember, the only courses that exist with the time are the 35 and the 100. But the 100 courses <laughs> changed. So right. I think every time that has been set here today is a proper time, and I think it's going to take some very special athletes to beat it going forward. Yeah, one 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 hundred percent. It's always it's always interesting because it's like, you know, days play out as days plays play yeah. out. But I think being that close to the prediction, right? I think. What did, what did Hilly come in at? Right around, just under 25 hours? Yeah, she was 23... No, 24. 24, 15. 24, 45. Yeah, 24, 49. Under the 25. Definitely under the 25 24, hour 55. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and so I think in our prediction there was 23, I think, 45. Right. So we thought that was fast. Naomi Brand. <gasps> we Naomi. have eyes on Naomi Brand. Come we are on, Naomi. Mm. She's so coming back home. live. This is the switchbacks. Just coming down yep. on the switchbacks. She's going to get onto Tafelberg Road pretty shortly. So she's actually been moving okay. Yeah, you know? and, and she's looked she's looked sore for the back half of the day. Yep. The day. I Absolutely. don't blame her. No. She's yeah. looked <laughs> chafe for the back half of the day. I don't blame her. Yep. But she's got that jacket on to protect herself from the wind, and she's making her way down to the finish line right now to take third place in the women's 100-mile race, to take sixth place overall in the 100 mile race and second South African home. So, so interesting, she holds the record for both men and women over the 13 Peaks Challenge, which is a very popular challenge here in Cape Town where you run all 13 Peaks. And in the women's race, I think the record, her record time was 17.45, if I'm hearing correctly in my ear, because wow. I don't know it off the bat. But it is for the women only, if I'm correct. I've just been corrected on that. But she does hold the record for the 13 Peaks. It's something that Ryan Sands put together a couple of years ago. Yeah, I've and heard it's just about it. It's become super popular. I mean, the guys are really enjoying it. And what's nice about it is you don't have to tick it off all in one day. You can do one peak at a time. You can do two or three back yeah, to back. That's kind of choose your own adventure in that cool. sense. It's super cool, and it's just pretty much like get out there, have fun, get outdoors. Outside is free, and I think that's really cool from Hedgie and the team. So well done, boy. It was kind of nice that we yeah. saw Ryan out on the course today. Actually, cheering Hillary. Yeah, we saw that. That was great, Hillary. Uh, yep, some local legends here. Some <laughs> true local in legends. South Africa. <laughs> um, everyone comes out and is a part of Ultra Trail Cape Town. I say other other big thank yous, other big legends that were took part of this weekend were all of our insane athletes chasing the athletes, all yep. of our cameramen mm -hmm. uh, on the e-bikes out running, and then the 14-year-old that got to follow Hillary with the with the Pulse GoPro for a while as well. Absolutely insane. They all deserve medals, right? They do. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're probably getting, you know, beer. Well, not the 14-year-old. Yeah, Everyone yeah. else is probably getting <laughs> plenty of beer at the finish line. They'll have a good time at the party tomorrow. But they've been great. I mean, they've been. They, they, and the people back here. I feel like we do. We talk. Our, uh, you know, we have to stay awake. We have to stay semi-coherent. We gotta sit. We have to sit. <laughs> Honestly, the hardest part is probably sitting. I'm like rocking in yeah. my chair right now. <laughs> Emily brought a pillow with her from our hotel because the chair wasn't soft enough for her. <laughs> but. But I will say, oh my goodness, we've been following him earlier. Bib number 174, we saw him one local runner. Up the shoulders. Nice work, Makwana. Well done, buddy, looking strong. Great finish. Well done, my friend. That finish line finish is just Going so straight thrilling through. for he every wants athlete. To get out of those conditions. It is so fun to see. Well, I mean, they've been, they've been out on a journey. Yep. You know, they they did a big old loop and got back here. 
So Naomi now coming down the final switchback. You can see hobbling just a little bit, and uh, she's going to come down onto Tafelberg Road, where she'll get to stretch her legs just a little bit. And um, wow, <laughs> just I just cannot believe the spirit of some of these athletes. You know, sometimes you see someone and you think they're down, and they just have this incredible ability to just lift themselves up time after time after time. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, amazing seeing these professionals in the sport just clicking it out. One mile at a time. Oh, we've all felt One this way, right? One at a time, yeah. Oh. The relief getting of getting the, the shoes, shoes off. off. <laughs> <laughs> getting the shoes off and nice. the calf sleeves off. <laughs> Man. It's the hardest part of the day at this point, I think, trying to get those things off. Absolutely. We're going to get ready to cut back to Naomi Brand. She'll be on that Tafelberg Road. And uh, we should be able to get good visuals. Here we go. Good visuals. Uh, better light. You know, we're able to work the light a little bit better. More space to move for the cameraman and get those better light angles for us. And uh, you can see that uh, she's just gritting her teeth now. And uh, she knows that it's all over by the shouting. She's got to just keep ticking those legs over. Oli Morris entering the house. Getting formed on the GoPro with his buddy. Ninth place overall, top tening it. Oli Morris in top ten. Oli Morris and well done. South African. Look at that, local boy Oli Morris, top ten, killing it out there. He's gonna walk his way over, savor the moment. Well done, Oli Morris. Local serving and boy, smashing it, getting a ninth place, earning his Jack Black. There Come we on, go. Jess, this is who we want to see. We want to follow Naomi Brand on her way to the finish line. She's had a, she's had a day. She's had a little bit more than a day, actually, at this point. She's had 26 hours and 5 minutes and 33 seconds of running. That is no easy task. Naomi Brand, is, she's making her way across the road here. Big exhale, kind of big, you know, that horse noise that you sometimes make when you're, like, a little bit frustrated and you're just, like, got to shake it off. Just made one of those. It's not quite a sigh. Just got to kind of get the jitters <laughs> out a little bit. That is Naomi Brand making her way across the section of the road before she takes that turn off of it at Dead Man's Tree. That will put her three kilometers from the finish. It doesn't look quite as windy through here as it did earlier. That might be a relief. It's definitely a relief because our camera is upright and she's not being blown off the road, but she's going to take this right-hand turn up here, and then she'll be three kilometers from home. I know her heart is just so full right now, looking over at home. She's been away. She was so excited to get this opportunity to come back to Cape Town um, and race Ultra Trail Cape Town to be a part of this inaugural event. Now to finish on the podium, just amazing. And I hope it sends shivers over everyone listening. Um, just that opportunity of being home and filled with that love of the community and what a tour of home she right? just took Absolutely. i think excited yeah. that Stu yeah. found a way to too run good. every <laughs> single trail <laughs> in town i mean kind of establish some of them on yeah. the south end too it seems yeah. like or at least clean, clean them up a bit yeah. um you know kind of really branching out to make that happen yeah mm -hmm. I feel like there, there's, there's a guy they call the mayor down there and he's responsible for that that section of trail and he's taking a lot of pride yeah. in in maintaining that section of trail and, and he's kind of the person out there on that bit of course too during the race to make sure if anything goes wrong this week, last night, today, tonight, it's it's the mayor's job. His job. It's the quote unquote mayor's and job mayor's to make sure that happens. And it's also so fitting, you know, it's fitting that it is Naomi that is the last focus athlete of the day. You know, yeah. the broadcast obviously will close down after you know, in, in the next 20 minutes or so. But, you know, we talk about athletes, and, and this is someone who, I mean, she's she's a, a qualified vet. Yep. She's got a heart bigger than you'll ever know. She'll take <laughs> the clothes off her back to give them to you. She's she's such a, a champion for pangolins, you know, yep. around the world and the protection of pangolins, and, and she's vocal about that. You know, she's an advocate for that. And, um, you know, her and Gabriel just doing such incredible things. And, and, and so nice to see her here down Dead Man's Tree now. This is it. Three Ks to go. She, she, she can sniff it. She knows that this next 800 meters or so is going to be tough, going to be a bit slippery, um, and, and the light is, is going to be there, and we're going to be able to get her across the finish line. So I'm, I'm super excited. Only three Ks to go. Just three. Look at After 163 kilometers.
<laughs> she is just gritting her teeth and just shuffling along her. Just a little later this time last night, they were climbing up into that cloud, um, getting onto the top of Table Mountain up that Eclipse Gorge. One of the unique parts of this course and probably the most unique part, <laughs> a big climb of a course around the world. Um, and now she's coming down into the finish. Less than 3k to go. What amazing views. We got some really cool pictures. I think there's going to be a lot of cool pictures shared uh, yeah. uh, from last night, from this morning. We've had athletes on every part of the course at every time of the day. The social media has been absolutely amazing, not only <laughs> yeah. the stories and the reels, but the posts as well. Yep. And, uh, you know, we're going to be getting photos coming in from our incredible photogs out on the course over the next couple of days as well. And, 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 and the team here at RMB UCTC are very good about putting that together, cataloging it, and making sure that it's available. And they use it very, very well in the promotion of the event going forward for the next year. So super excited uh, to just you know, be a part of what's happened. Let's look back at what it's been like over the last couple of days. We got here, uh, a lot of the athletes coming through on the Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, the Tuesday, we had Tuesday trails. The Wednesday, we had the President's Run where we ran down from Gardens Tech down to the President Hotel, which is the partner here for the uh, Ultra Trail Cape Town. Pizza and beer provided by Jack Black and Sunto. Uh, we went into Thursday. Thursday, we had the, uh, along with the registration, of course, but the athlete Q&A, Kareen, uh, having a chat to the elite women. I had a chat to some of the elite men across the 100 miler, 55K and 100K. And then Friday morning, the early start with the brand new table mounted, uh, the Travis of, of 55Ks. Uh, that started early the Peninsula Travis it was called and uh, that was a huge success some stunning results there the women's race was just on fire all the way through just we thought Kimmy insane. had it in the bag I mean should we go through that can you remember that backwards you know who they were it was Sine it was Kimmy and it was That's the backwards order uh, yeah. yeah yeah Landy I mean, Grayling yeah yeah Landy yeah, but I mean, I mean we, had, we had Kimmy come through uh, the University of Cape Town campus for the 17 minute lead we said wow that's a pretty good lead yeah. she's yeah. got 10k to go right that's not that bad right major cramping crept up on her all of a sudden we got word that Lon landy had overtaken kimmy we we're like no way that can't be possible <laughs> yeah. turns out totally was possible <laughs> kimmy then fought back she got passed by not one woman but two women fought back we actually had her just ahead of landy and then they came around the final sprint and landy was able to take her at the line ended up taking the win by five seconds over kimmy schreiber it was quite the event it was it was wild robbie Phenomenal. simpson ran away with the men's field Yep. Phenomenal. And then, of course, a point-to-point -point race, uh, the only two point-to-point -point races, both of them on the Friday. The first one, the 55K, the second one starting at 9 o'clock. That, of course, starting up at the hotel, um, uh, Alphen Hotel, uh, at 23K. Uh, that going through as well, taking us through into, into Friday afternoon. And then, of course, Friday afternoon, 5 o'clock, it's the big show, the very, very first uh, RMB Ultra Trail Cape Town 100 miler, starting at 5 o'clock. And uh, that's when we, we got onto another broadcast. We just been on an eight and a half hour broadcast, right. had a two hour break, came into another three and a half hour broadcast, taking the athletes, you know, from the gardens through to Signal Hill, around Lion's Head, up through Kloof Neck, into Kloof Corner, around and up Platter Club Gorge before ending off the broadcast. And uh, then obviously everyone waiting in anticipation, following the dots through the night as we then came into the start this morning, 5.30 we were in the studio, six o'clock start for the Ultra Trail Cape Town 100 kilometer. That went off hard and fast. And then literally we've been on our, our on, on on the broadcast for the last 15 hours, bringing you images from both the 100 miler and the 100 kilometer. I mean, yeah, and while and while amazing. we're and while we're gonna go eat and go to bed after we welcome Naomi Brand home across the finish line, there are still athletes out there on course. The first cutoff came through at Hop Bay at earlier today. I think at uh, was it 4:30 maybe? Yeah, I'll spare a thought for them. Are you looking at the cutoffs? Yeah, for the 100K, the cutoff there was, was 4.30 this afternoon out at Hep Bay. Uh, for Alphen Trail, uh, their cutoff is not yet upon us. At Alphen Trail, the cutoff is at 10.50 this evening, so runners have time to make it through there. Again, that's the 76-kilometer mark. They have a they have a 24-hour cutoff, so they can be going all the way up until the wee hours in the morning tomorrow, the 100-mile race again. There will be many athletes going through their second night, and that second night yeah. means yeah. they'll be finishing between 1 and 2 p.m. tomorrow oh. at the latest, 2 p.m. being that 45-hour cutoff. Yeah, Last absolutely year was incredible. the first year they added in the 24-hour cutoff for um, the 100K. 
and we had a lot of athletes that were coming in in that last oh, hour. Right. Super early, exciting. early tomorrow yeah. morning. Getting the most cool. for their yeah. money. Getting the right. most for the entry yeah. fee. That's yep. what it's all about. Taking <laughs> every cent count. That's what I say. <laughs> Make it count. Get your money's worth <laughs> for sure. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it really, it really has been great. And and there's just so much, you know, if you look at an event and, and and just how every year it listens, it's listening not only to the runners, it's listening to the people. And and that's one thing that I love about this event. They listen and they they make sure that their clients, who are the runners, are put first at every possible opportunity. And I think that is super important. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the runners make the race. Wow! Look yeah, the run, the runners the runners make the race by giving us the passion. But once again, right there's the the race director, the race organization, the race founder, the race manager, the volunteers. Right? How many volunteers are out there for two days? Yeah, well, we know three days. It's like going through Sunday. Eighty percent of the people working this weekend are volunteers, and just amazing. And a huge thank you out to every single one of them. Making this happen. Making this happen. Feeding Even our runners. More. <laughs> Feeding our runners, yeah. providing them with as many snacks as their heart desires. Because yeah. that, <laughs> my friend, is a big deal. Because when sometimes you come into those aid stations, eyes glazed over, yeah. having no idea what you're looking for, and someone at the aid station is going to hand you something, and it's it's going to work, and they're going to push you out the door. They're yep. not going to let you sit down and stop <laughs> there. I think that is really the true the true sign of the incredible volunteers that you will meet in the trail and ultra community right now on your screen as we gab away about our, <laughs> our last 36 hours is Naomi Brand, South African, third right now in the women's 100 mile race here the inaugural women's 100 mile race at utct she'll end up being the second south african home in this event and sixth overall because the women are going to go four five six in the 100 mile and what did they go in the the 100k seven eight nine seven eight nine wow <laughs> The so women cool. showing up in the top 10 overall of both these races. Really, really cool to see. <laughs> wow, look at that. People view. are so excited for Naomi oh. and Carrie Ann. That's awesome. Going to go back to the live tracker, see if there's anything else that we're missing here. <laughs> it's amazing to watch her run down. It's got quite the view. Yeah, quite the view coming down here around sunset. She see she saw sunset last night on her run. Yep. She saw sun <laughs> the sunrise this morning. She's seeing one more sunset, and then Naomi Brand's gonna get to go home, get plopped in a bathtub. I hope. Yeah. Try to sleep because we uh, we all know that's hard. Yeah. Lots She's of rest and recovery in her future. 1.8k to go. What a burly <laughs> race. <laughs> yep. Right, we've seen a little bit of everything. This rocky little trail, some smooth stuff, the Tr road. Yeah, all the terrain you could possibly imagine. <laughs> it's all out there. It's all there. Some real climbs that you got to use your hands, your body. Yeah, really, really impressive right now. Naomi Brand picking her way down this. This is the last bit of technical stuff that she has to get through. And then she's going to be on smooth sailing terrain for that final, you know, 1.6K or so into the finish line. But, yeah, there she goes. She's through, I think, that last bit of rockiness. That has to be a sigh of relief because she knows exactly where she is right now. Yeah, she does. She knows probably how many steps it's going to take her to get down Sometimes there. that's a blessing and sometimes yeah. that's a curse because trail-stretching trolls exist out there and they just make that little bit that you know feel like it goes for forever. forever. Yeah. But here she goes. She's working her way to the finish line, Naomi Brand. She's been out there for over 26 hours. But she is going to be through that uh, that pre-finisher checkpoint before we know it, and we'll get to be screaming her name <laughs> as she rounds the corner into the green the Greens Rugby Arena Stadium Center Field, whatever we're calling <laughs> it these days. I know it involves rugby. Into that just really amazing kind of athlete village, race village that they've set up around the start finish line for this weekend. Yeah, amazing. She's gonna feel so loved coming in. Everyone's been cheering her on all day, all night, all day. <laughs> Truly, all day and all night. Yep. I wish we could put a little, you know, 
with him a, in her a little ear headphone so we could just talk to yeah, her all the way into the finish line. Find out what she was thinking about. <laughs> yeah, there are lots and lots of fans in the YouTube audience cheering on their girl, Naomi Brand, their gal, their South African. She's going to come home in third in the women's race, sixth overall, second South African in the 100-mile race. Really, the women here, the w South African women putting the South African <laughs> men to shame in this race. Naomi and Carrie Ann, super strong performances from both of these gals. So back we go for the final stages of the broadcast here at the 2022 Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town. Naomi Brand will be the last athlete that we managed to bring across the line as part of the broadcast. And uh, she is not very far from the finish. And uh, really excited to make sure that we do bring her across the line. We've got the e-bike with her that will hopefully we'll be able to get up onto the field and follow her all the way through to the finish line. Yeah. It's no security stop in this one. Well, I've been uh, speaking to people. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. The people who are who, who need to know know. <laughs> wow. Oh, Jacket coming off. Warm. Yeah. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. We like that. Yeah. I mean, she's moving so well. It is kind of amazing how your body can suddenly figure out how to how to run again after so many low points over the course of a 24-hour day or a 100-mile event. Yeah. But to see her working her way towards the finish, our, our, our images are probably going to go in and out. In this section, they've gone in and out all day. Yeah. In this section, where they might pit, they might be able to come back on that, that tarmac section mm -hmm. that she'll hit before she kind of rounds that corner, goes to the gate, et cetera, on her way into the stadium. Yeah, I mean, so waiting for Naomi now, I mean... What an athlete and what a competitor. You know, she's super competitive. She's always going to be up there. She may not come across that she's super competitive, but she is. You know, she wants to get she out is. there and uh, <laughs> she wants to put herself to the test. She's really big at breaking barriers and setting goals. And I think that's one of the things that makes her so special. Yeah, for sure. And that is why we race is because we want to test limits. We want to run against, you know, community and really be pushed to be our best selves out there. Um, and this is all happening for Naomi right now. She's running down into Cape Town. She's running home. She's going to be welcomed home with all the love in the world from wow. Cape Town. Um, what a day. I mean, what a finish to a few... I'm, like, trying to think how many days it's been. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. You're trying to think how many days. I don't know about you. Yeah, I'm just trying doing, to think. We're not doing math at this point. There's no more math. No more no. mathematics, please. I was looking to see some, tracking back to some of those other South Africans in that 100-mile race. Yeah. It does seem that Nicolette um, dropped out oh, at okay. um, Constancia Glen. I do think Lodea is still out there, though. We're on the boardwalk there. That's a great sign. That means she is almost there to the finish line. Oh. She could walk this in, but I'm so stoked to see her running after yep. such a big day. Just amazing. Yeah, and she's she's well ahead of the, the chase pack of South African men um, that will round out the top ten overall. It should be Gabriel Creel, Chris um, Naga, Justin Olofsson. We've seen him a bit today, and um, Robbie P uh, Rorich right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Robbie Rorich made a big move. Robbie Rorich, he's going to hopefully round out the top ten. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good South African finish and there. And this is also his first 100 miler, if I'm correct. On Robbie's side, I think it is his first okay. hundred miler. Yeah, yeah. So really good for him, and 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 uh, he'll be stoked to be a part of the very first one. I'm sure he's a he's a proud Cape Town boy. <laughs> I've been corrected. Not only does she have friends cheering her on. This is a hundred k. This is a hundred k runner that's going to yeah. come by her. That's okay. <laughs> yep, it's a it's a hundred k runner that's going to come by Naomi Brand right here. So he's going to find find a little space. There perfect. We go. And that's perfectly okay. No problem at all. No, well Nyan done. has friends everywhere. She, I just got told she's got lots of friends in Norway cheering her on as well. So not just yeah. South Africa, not just New Zealand. Yeah. Norway is also cheering on Naomi Brand right now. Awesome. All right. So picking up a bit of leg speed there. Come on, let's keep it going. We're just mm -hmm. praying. It's like when you're in a car, right? Mm -hmm. And you see the light come on on the petrol tank, and you're like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I still got I still got 60 k's. 
I can make it. I could be <laughs> se- maybe 70. I'm sure. And, and you know what? Once it gets to 70, I've probably still got five more, right? Probably. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the car starts going. <laughs> this is where we're at right now. We are hoping that that little battery pack is, is going to be our saving grace here today. The, uh, the broadcast going on for over an hour and a half more than expected, but we really do want to bring across all three of the elite women in the 100 miler. Come on, Naomi. Come on, Naomi. We're going to do our best to pick you back up. So yeah, we're to go, we'll try to go to finish line shots is my guess. They should be able to get one down that stretch. It sounds like we might be losing losing signal a little bit down there at the finish line, but we'll get things sorted out. She still has to kind of hit that little bit of, of tarmac yeah. before she makes it in. So yeah. we, we still we have, a, a we have a kilometer or so to figure <laughs> it out. Do not we're going to make it happen. We, I'm guessing five minutes, five and a half, six minutes until the finish line. So that's where we're at. So as soon as we see that pre-finish, we know she's within that sort of four-minute mark. Yep. So that pre-finish. Yeah, we don't have that pre-finish split for her yet, so we have oh, a little bit of time. Do. Oh, we do. We just got, got it. Oh, it just came Thank through. You. Pre-finish I is up, everybody. It so hasn't even loaded on my Naomi eyes. at the pre-finish. She's just gone through now, and that means that she's in the final kilometer. All right, come on, let's get this done. <laughs> Whoo! Yeah, so we'll have to we'll have to get those uh those uh start finish line sh- cameras turned around so that we can have her come through there. All right, so back to the visuals as soon as we can. We promise we don't. Uh, we're going to even give it to you pixelated if we have to. So we're yeah. going to give you whatever we need to, uh, just so that you guys can see something except our beautiful faces in the studio. So we've got nothing at the moment. We're at studio. This is probably a good time to yeah. say thanks. Thanks to everybody for joining us. I mean, yeah, we'll we'll do a formal we'll do a formal shout out once we get Naomi yeah. Brand to the finish line. We're not going to ghost her right no, at the end, guys. Never, never, never. Not who us. would do that? <laughs> come on, Naomi, you got this, girl. We want to watch her come in too. What a day! <laughs> what a day! That is a phenomenal run. Ah, oh, but before her, we have another men's competitor. Cool. Matthias. Yep, All right, yep, so yep. we so do have the finish. Here, runners runners finish while we wait for our 100-mile athlete to come in. Position 12, finishing in 13 hours, 26 minutes. So 26 well done, across the line. Uh, trying to find out exactly who that is. And what a strong he's not going to have a live tracker because we only you're gave right. us 10 he's people. He's not. It's on the 100. Damn, you're right. Well done, no, he's in the 100K, yes. but we only gave exactly. and we and only gave 15 gave 10 trackers. 100K yeah. runners Naomi trackers. Brown, so she enters into our arena. Third place <laughs> lady. Well done. For the 100 well done. today. Yeah, so we'll be panning back to those initial entryway shots for the start finish area for you to pick up Naomi Brand on that on that kind of steady cam. Wow. He really needed that beer. He was thirsty. He was thirsty. Well well worth that hundred K run to get there, I'm sure. All right, you can see the tents have been taken down on the right hand side of the race village and the left and that of course. Yep, so we want our cameras to go back out to yeah, no, it's been absolutely crazy with the wind. Back to the finish line. Let's wait for Naomi. She's going to be coming onto the field shortly, and uh, we'll be able it to pick so up. It is so windy down there. So keep your eyes on the back corner, and welcome home, Naomi Brunt. Mere meters away. Just rattling. That's not her. Here's another 100K. That's the guy that ran by her. Yep, That's so, right. So, 100% so right. Naomi's going to be right behind him. Yep. There she is. No, that's the I think. I think that's the no. Absolutely. Before Naomi, it looks like we've yeah, got to try Paris to keep the cameras in. tracking well back 100. to this zone to continue to pick up our 100 mile finish. Well done, Thomas. Yeah. Thomas Paris finishing strong in the 100 kilometer day. He is flying down that finishing line. <laughs> Congratulations. Waiting for Naomi Brand. Things are blowing out. There she is. Oh, and she's and charging to we the finish line. Naomi Brand, you're almost home. home. She oh. is charging <laughs> around the track, around the final Tony corner. Her cheers Naomi there. Brunt. Yes, she comes. Your third lady Stunt. making up a sixth <laughs> yep. position today. Your third lady in the inaugural 100 yeah, mile right here at the Red Virgin Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town. None other than South African Naomi, Naomi Brand. Brand. And she is sixth over. It, you have done wow. it. Well done. Absolutely amazing. Arrived. Congratulations, Welcome Naomi. Back. What a hard fought battle. Sixth <laughs> place overall. A superhuman in effort indeed. Race. 
and uh, sixth overall. I mean, wow. Yep, our women went four, wow. five, and six overall in the 100 mile race. Second South African helmet as well. Two hours, 28 minutes. That is remarkable. And she's I have absolutely uh, nothing spent. but respect for these athletes. And she <laughs> is stuck. And rightly well, so. What, what a day future. out. 26, 28, and change. So Tatum, Prince saying congratulations to her on the finish line. Tatum and Ryan and Sibs have been bringing the vibe all day, even in these crazy weather conditions. And uh, celebrations on the finish line for our third placed woman in the 100 miler. Naomi Brand. Third Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so Naomi much for joining Brands us. It's been in an incredible day. I've got to tell you that I've totally position, enjoyed working with both of you. So to both of you, ladies, Corinne line. and to Ems, thank you so, so much. Um, I hope to have you <laughs> both back next year where we, we're going to have a whole lot of new ideas for this broadcast. Have you enjoyed your day? And oh. what, are you, what is your quick review on what you've seen? I've just been so impressed with this place. I've been impressed with Cape Town. I've been impressed with Ultra Trail Cape Town. I'm sold. Hook, line, and sinker. I'm in love. The magic's real. Come join us in 2023. Thank <laughs> you very much. Ems, yourself? I mean, I come back every year I have since I came here in 2018. And... Cape Town, you didn't disappoint, you never do. I love this community. It's so good to be back with the crew, with the team, to be here in studio and get to see just amazing performances out there today. So cool. Absolutely. <laughs> and congratulations not only to all the athletes and the athletes that will finish over the next 24 hours, but also to their families and uh, everyone who's been a part of this magic show that is the Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town. Until 2023, remember, book a date in your calendar. End of November, no matter where you are, no matter what you do, if you're interested in trail running and you want to feel the vibe of the Rand Merchant Bank Ultra Trail Cape Town, be here. We look forward to seeing you then. Get your entries in early. They sell out very, very fast. Thanks for joining us. Let's cut to a highlights reel for you. Thank you so much. Cheers, everybody. See you next year. Bye-bye.